Good morning. As, as Vice Chair of the Commission, I call this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission to order at 9.03 a.m. This Zoom webinar is being live streamed on YouTube on the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission YouTube channel. For anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform than they are currently using, please visit our social media at Redistricting MI. Our live stream today includes closed captioning, closed captioning, ASL interpretation, and Spanish, Arabic, and Bengali translation services will be provided for effective participation in this meeting. Email us at redistricting at michigan.gov for additional viewing options or details on accessing language translation services for this meeting. People with disabilities needing other specific accommodations should also contact redistricting at michigan.gov. This meeting is being recorded and will be available at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC for viewing at a later date. This meeting is also being transcribed and those closed caption transcripts will be made available and posted on the michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website along with written public comment submissions. There is also a public comment portal that may be accessed by visiting michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. This portal can be utilized to post maps and comments, which can be viewed by both the commission and the public. Members of the media who may have questions before, during, or after the meeting should direct those questions to Edward Woods III, Communications and Outreach Director for the Commission at woodse3 at michigan.gov or 517-331-6309. For the purposes of the public watching and the public record, I will turn to Department of State staff to take note of the commissioners present. Good morning, commissioners. Please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please announce during roll call that you are attending remotely and disclose your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. Present. Juanita Curry. Present and attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. Present, remotely attending from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Brittany Callum. Wanda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Eaton County, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. Eleven commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. As a reminder to the public watching, you can view the agenda at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. I would now entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda. Oh. Motion made by Commissioner Lett. Is there a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Weiss. And I heard you, Commissioner Witches. <laughs> is there any discussion or debate on the motion? And then say aye. All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Without objection, we will now begin the public comment pertaining to agenda topics portion of our meeting. Hearing no objection, we will now proceed with public comment pertaining to agenda topics. Individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide in-person public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. Please step to the nearest microphone when I call your name. You will have one minute to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment is Sarah Howard. Sarah Howard here on behalf of the Fair Maps Project. Your current maps are still unconstitutional. You drew a Senate map yesterday giving Republicans a clear advantage on all four partisan measures. Democrats would have to win 52% of the vote just to win half the districts. You've also used presidential year election data to measure partisanship of the Senate districts, but the state Senate never runs in presidential years. Partisan fairness measured by efficiency gap at or near zero is a constitutional requirement, not just a goal. Anyone who tells you otherwise is wrong. No disproportionate advantage has a plain language dictionary it does not mean being largely out of proportion. Your current efficiency gaps will not pass constitutional muster. We encourage you again to borrow from the AFL-CIO maps or others on the portal that draw districts that are fair to both parties while respecting communities of interest. 
The rest of what I need to say today is being submitted on the portal for your consideration. Again, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Do we have a number two? We do not, okay. At this time, we will now move on to remote live public commentary to the commission. I will call your name and our staff will unmute you. If you're on a computer, you will be prompted by the Zoom app to unmute your microphone and speak. If you're on the phone, a voice will say that the host would like you to speak and prompt you to press star six to unmute. I will call on you by your name or last four digits of phone number. Also, please note that if you experience a technical or audio issue, or we do not hear from you for three to five seconds, we will move on to the next person in line and return to you after they are done speaking. If your audio still does not work, you can email redistricting at michigan.gov and we will help you troubleshoot so you can participate during the next public comment period at a later hearing or meeting. You will have one minute to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment is James Gallant. Oh, it's James Gallant, Marquette. These are my opinions. And uh, where's the second public comment at, please? The period. And uh, it appears on robertsrulesoforder.com. There's a question and answer uh, forum on there. And it seems to be the consensus that motion to discuss is absurd and out of order. And that discussion has been going on for the last 10 years. And you move the, uh, the minutes to deny the public due process to uh, uh, address your minutes, to, to talk to the minutes before you approve them. That's a First Amendment issue. And although it's highly improbable, I think that Secretary Benson may have randomly selected 13 cheaters out of 10,000 applications. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about this. You need to have discipline not to take the temptation of the, you know, Duchess witches and people that want to just make it so easy for you that you don't have to follow the rules. Now, uh, please do your due diligence and get the reports and ask and, and hire a parliamentarian. You know what I mean? All due respect to your attorney, but that's her worldview. That's her own personal opinion. And where did these, where did this uh, come from? No, you didn't ask you again. This commission, Mr. Gallant. Next in line to speak is Anthony Skinnell. You'll have one minute to address the commission. Please wait for our staff to unmute you. Good morning, commission. Thank you so much for uh, the one minute. I guess one minute's better than none. It's not as good as two though, but um I'm I'm uh, commenting to mention today uh, my community of interest, which is downriver. Um, I'm uh, not too happy with the way it looks in one of your maps, which is congressional. Uh, looks good in state house. Looks good in state senate. No problem there. But uh, in Congress, it's split three ways between three different districts. In District One, you have part of downriver, including Allen Park, Melvindale, Rouge, and Ecorse, Lincoln Park. And it's with cities in Macomb County. Doesn't seem like it seems like an odd grouping to me in the collaborative congressional map. And then in District Seven, you have the rest of Downriver except for Taylor, and those are with cities which include you know Washington, off fine, but Jack, part of Jackson County too. It's just such a stretch to me. I don't I don't understand these congressional districts for Downriver. My comments are backed up by the steelworker from Ecorse, if you remember her, and the lady from Trenton on the Zoom the other night. Thank you, Mr. Skinnell. Next in line to address the commission is Dr. Stan. That participant is not currently present. Thank you. Um, Ashley Prue, you will have one minute to address the commission. Please allow a moment for our staff to unmute you. Hello and thank you. My name is Ashley Pru and I'm a resident of the city of Fenton, Michigan in Genesee County. I would like to speak directly to the um, state house map and the state Senate map as it pertains to Genesee County. Specifically the state house map uh, very clearly chops Genesee County into eight different districts. I am in the proposed district 56. And as I look at the proposed district 56, 59, 57, 58, and 53. For the residents of Genesee County, it seems highly unlikely that their representative will actually live in the county where they reside. And I think that violates the community of interest standard. 
In addition, um, the state Senate map for the northern part of Genesee County cuts way into Lapeer County, and I do not believe that is appropriate. Um, I also did notice that the maps do disproportionately lean to Republican uh, favor uh, for the state house and the state legislature, or state house and state Senate specifically. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line to address the commission is Loida Tapia. Hi, good morning, commissioners. My name is Lloyd Tapia, and I'm a resident of uh, Detroit. I'm calling you uh, to bring your attention to some concerns from residents. Uh, we think that it is deeply needed to have a second public hearing in Detroit. Uh, even your communications and outreach director, Edward Woods, has requested this as well. With 40% of the population in Detroit, I think it's highly necessary to have a second period, especially when you've moved public comment from two minutes to one with just a rule change. Uh, these were changes you made last week. Please reconsider as organizations and people are really trying to get to the public comments to provide you feedback on your maps, especially in Detroit as you're struggling with them. And it's necessary for us to provide as much time for residents of Detroit to be able to provide those public comments. Please consider adding the second day as it was recommended by your communications and outreach director. There's a reason why he's recommending this is because he's also hearing from community. When 40% of the population votes in this area, it's necessary to hear from them as well. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is Ghana Goodwin Dai. Good morning, Ghana Goodwin Dai from Southfield, Michigan. I would first like to state um, to say thank you to the commission for the changes they made for Pontiac residents. Second, um, the commission was tasked with drawing map, fair maps to undo the political gerrymandering. Currently, the Senate map favors Republicans by 7%, the State House map favors Republicans by 9%, and the Congressional map favors Republicans by 2%. There, the maps need to be significantly adjusted across the state to be considered fair for everyone. So I'm hoping that uh, the commission will take that into consideration and make those adjustments so that we will not be in the position that we are now. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line to address the commission is Susan Smith. For the public watching, Susan Smith is number seven. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Susan Smith, Vice President for Advocacy for the League of Women Voters of Michigan. The League of Women Voters urges the commission to reconsider its decision to limit the length of public comments at public hearings to one minute. As a practical matter, it won't be possible for communities of interest to follow the direction given to them by the commission. COIs have been told to provide the ID number of maps they have submitted in the portal when they sign in at the public hearing. This will enable EDS to show their map on the screen while the COI is making their public comment to the commission. One minute is not long enough for this process to occur. Please reinstate the two minute time limit for public comments at the public hearings. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is Paul McAdams. Good morning, my name is Paul McAdams. I'm from St. Clair Shores, Michigan. I am, uh, would like to speak about um, partisan fairness and um, communities of interest, beginning with uh, the congressional district that was uh, drawn. Um, I think that we have far more uh, here in the congressional district in common with our uh, fellows in, in uh, Oakland County and in Warren 
and we would like to see the district drawn to include more of that. Um, the state Senate district that you've drawn, um, it favors, uh, that you've drawn overall, it favors Republicans by uh, 7%. We think that the, the state Senate district in, uh, that encompasses St. Clair Shores should probably come further south uh, um, down to Harrison Township. I think that we have a lot in common with the folks in Gross Point Woods and Gross Point Shores. And if we could include East Point, um, I think that would be uh, more significant as far as communities of interest go. Thank you. Thank you. Next in line is number nine, Brandon Snyder. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Thank you all for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Brandon Snyder. I'm the co-executive director of Detroit Action. We're a grassroots member-led community-based organization building power for working class, black and brown voters and non-voters here in the city of Detroit. Uh, I'm a resident in the city of Detroit and like so many black and brown folks here in the state of Michigan, my family moved here up from the South for the promise of good jobs, good neighborhoods, good schools and the American dream. Uh, thank you all so much for fixing Pontiac's uh, Senate district. Uh, we appreciate that and it helps uh, ensure that both black and brown voters will be able to be able to have their voices heard. However, Harper Woods is still disenfranchised by being part of a Lakeshore district that stretches all the way to New Baltimore. Communities like of interest like East Point are needed to reflect accuracy and make sure that their voices are heard. Lastly, we need to make sure that more fair maps are across the board, that we have improved fairness metrics in each map, and that there's no regression in VRA uh, from the VRA. Thank you all so much. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is number 10, Mark Payne. All right. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hello, Commission. Good morning. My name is Mark Payne, and I'm a resident of Detroit and a Democracy for All coordinator with the Michigan League of Conservation and the Voters Education Fund. Reducing the number of hearings, especially in Metro Detroit, that makes up over 40 percent of the state's population and having the length of individual testimony from two to one minute will negatively impact the quality of public input provided to you. Furthermore, I ask you continue to be transparent and open with the process, such as posting all maps drawn for the day by the end of the day or the next morning at the latest. Lastly, please use all of the tools available, such as voting patterns, voting participation, state house and state senate primaries, and examine these tools, examine and, and use these tools to examine the surrounding districts when mapping Detroit and the Detroit metro area. Thank you. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Next in line is number 11, uh, Terry Seastrom. That participant is not present. Thank you, Secretary of State. Um, uh, Joyce Smith, number 12, please. Hello, Joyce, we can hear you if you can hear us. Yes, I can. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. Muskegon is a lakeshore community and um, the efforts to try and draw Muskegon and Grand Rapids together in the same congressional district divides this into three communities with no natural connection. Simply put, this is considered more gerrymandering. Muskegon belongs with the Lakeshore communities such as Holland, Grand Haven, and Ottawa community. Muskegon and Ottawa counties should remain 
whole in the Lakeshore District. Um, the Lakeshore Community of Interest, Muskegon, Ottawa, Allegan counties with Van Buren and Barry counties represent a Lakeshore Congressional District. Thank you very much for putting those together. Grand Rapids should be kept with the surrounding metro communities and township in Kent County. Your task is not an easy one, and we hope that you can keep the lake short by putting Muskegon and Ottawa counties together. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is number 13, Amanda Price. Good morning. My name is morning. Amanda Price. I am the. Uh, I'm at, my name is Amanda Price. I'm the Ottawa County Treasurer, former State Representative, and the 89th District, uh, former uh, Representative for the 89th District, and current Chair of the Ottawa County um, Apportionment Commission. I want to commend the Redistricting Commission for the recently drawn map number 187, which specifically draws Muskegon, Ottawa, Allegan, Van Buren and Berrien counties into District 9. Recently drawn District 9 shares similar um, concerns. We have similar agricultural products, manufacturing bases, concern for the Great Lakes shipping and water quality and our tourism efforts. Um, I urge you to retain map 187 District 9 in its current form. Thank you. Thank you. Next in line is number 14, Adele Mozip. Good morning, distinguished commissioners. My name is Adam Mozub and I'm a resident of Dearborn and for full disclosure, I'm a Dearborn school board member. First of all, the one minute limitation is very limited and I hope that could be reconsidered as urged by the League of Women Voters as this is suppresses people's voices. When Michigan voters overwhelmingly approved this commission back in 2018, the purpose was to have districts that are not gerrymandered. What the current map currently shows, especially in Southeast Michigan, and in, in specifically the area of Hamtramck, Michigan, is gerrymandering at its best. Hamtramck is a city rich in many cultures that live in harmony, and they need to be kept in one state house district, not three. Please keep Hamtramck as one district and add an adjacent area of the airport sub, which clearly aligns with the city of Hamtramck being a community of interest, the Wayne State area and Midtown have no common interest. Please keep Hamtramck. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is number 15, Rick Catherman. Good morning. My name is Rick Catherman. I reside in South Haven, Michigan, in Southwest Michigan. Um, I am going to echo the previous uh, comments, um, except for Southwest Michigan. Um, and I'm going to address partisan fairness. Michigan citizens established your commission to end party, partisan gerrymandering. Overall, Michigan is a slightly democratic leaning state. However, reports on your initial maps show that your proposed lines favor Republicans. Yesterday, your edited Senate maps resulted in a Republican plus five analysis. This isn't acceptable. I'm sure the Republicans on the commission were satisfied, but the Democrats and independents must speak up, step up, and insist that the commission do better. Your task is enormous, but your responsibility is even greater. This is hard work. The citizens of Michigan are counting on you to end partisan gerrymandering. Get it done with fair maps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next in line is number 16, Janessa Smith. Good 
Hi, good morning. Good morning. My name is Matt, and I live on the west side of the state in Hudsonville, Michigan. My husband and I chose to live and raise our family in Hudsonville because of its economic and cultural ties to Ottawa County. Hudsonville naturally associates with Zealand as well as the neighboring communities of Jamestown and Georgetown with whom we share services and even schools with. We are not Grand Rapids and we are not Kent County. We are Ottawa County and there is a distinct difference. I appreciate the commission acknowledging that Map 187 keeps Ottawa County together as a community of interest. Thank you for your work. I know it isn't easy. In the final map, I ask that you please keep Ottawa County whole. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next is number 17, Ibrahim Al-Jahim. That participant is not currently present. Thank you, Secretary of State. Um, number 18, Jill Adams. Hi, uh, can, I, can you see me? We can. Okay, uh, first I'd like to uh, thank you commit all the commissioners for what I assume has been endless hours on this very large task. Uh, my name again is Jill Adams. I live in Lenawee County, um, and I know that the people here or in the area down in southern Michigan are very pleased with the congressional map you've drawn to include the border counties that are along the Ohio border um, in, and also including Jackson and Calhoun. Uh, counties. Um, those of us near the border um, face very unique challenges in the state. Um, I know that you've received comments from both sides and knowing that you've used feedback from both sides is greatly appreciated. Um, I know I don't speak for everybody on this <laughs> uh, panel this morning, um, but I, I think you've done a great job. Um, trying to make all the communities equal 50-50 is never going to happen. Um, I think it's most important to keep the counties and thank you for addressing the commission. Um, and our final speaker today is uh, number 19, Chris Andrews. Can you hear me now? We can. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Chris Andrews from Hazlitt. Uh, please don't settle for less unfair maps. Right now, your Senate plan is a 100 yard dash where one party starts five steps ahead. Your consultant inadvertently created a false picture yesterday when he agreed that there was a democratic advantage on some of the metrics. Don't let that color your view. Every single metric provides a disproportionate bias toward Republicans. Your Voting Rights Act work did not move us toward fairness. Some of the discussion yesterday seemed to suggest that a 50-50 seat outcome was amazing. It is not amazing when it takes 52.3% Democratic vote to achieve it. In a close election, Republicans will probably control the Senate with your map, even though even when most voters vote Democratic. The party with the most votes should win the majority. Otherwise, it undermines the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. That concludes our public comment for the day. However, I would like to mention that all emailed and mailed public comment is provided to the commission before each meeting, and commissioners also review the public comment portal on our www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website on a regular basis. We appreciate everyone who provides public comment in whatever way you choose and invite you to keep sharing your thoughts, communities of interest, and maps. And uh, our chair has arrived. I'm going to hand it back over. Welcome, Chair Zatella. Thank you. So next, we're going to move on to unfinished business agenda item 5A. And without objection, we will return to continuing the assessment of the draft maps for compliance and adjustments. Yesterday, we were working on the congressional districts, and we will start with the compliance process for collaborative congressional maps with Commissioner, I believe, Eid, is he here? Online. Oh, he's online. Okay. Commissioner Eid at instructing the line drawer. So, Anthony, if you want to go ahead. Yeah. So, what we were doing, we were looking at congressional maps, uh, the collaborative congressional map. Um, since I'm virtual today, I'd be okay with skipping my turn and coming back to it uh, 
later if someone else wants to take over on making these two uh, VRA districts um, about the same uh, non-Hispanic Black voting age population. Okay, thank you very much, Commissioner Eid. Commissioner Orton, I believe you were next in line. Okay, I am I on? Um, I am not familiar with the area really, so I'll need to have the theme thoughts up, I think, to help. And to reorient myself, we are trying to, well, Mr. they're about even right now. Yeah, they are about even. Mr. Morgan, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, since the computer crashed at the end, I can show you where we were at the last moment. Okay. Uh, there, your uh, Commissioner Ede was trying to equalize the population between two and one, and you can see they're they're you know within yeah. 6,800, 6,500. So potentially a precinct or two would rectify this. Okay, and it looks like the um, non-Hispanic Black voting age population has equaled out. Yes. And that's about where we want it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let's see, we're going from one to two. So would you, I guess, just keep going up that line, that next precinct? Uh, to the south here? Yes. Okay. Down that line, not up that <laughs> line, sorry. Commissioner Orton, one of the things we've tried to acknowledge sometimes is that there's neighborhoods that may want to stay intact, but oh, I think, true. like right. you said, you don't, you're not so sure. And so I just want to acknowledge, I think, Commissioner or, um, Chair Zatella, you're probably our best help here. Do you need anything else to help guide Commissioner Orton? No. Okay. Do you if think, got them, so got that's them a outside. community right there. Yeah, is, it's a neighborhood. Is that? Yeah, that, that's where we stopped before. And I just put those two in. You said, go down the line. Do you want to mm -hmm. change that or? Well, Commissioners that are familiar with that area, should we take something else instead of breaking up that community, neighborhood? Oh, is she new? Oh, yeah. So we, we also have Commissioner Curry, but um, that's the border of Dearborn. So I think it honestly could go either way because you have a pretty decent Arab American population in that too. So I think putting that neighborhood either way would work. So if you want to continue to put it into two, I think that's acceptable. Commissioner Curry, do you have any comment? I totally agree. It it would work if he could put it in some of okay. some of yeah, it's fine the way you're gonna do it, as far as I'm okay. concerned. Yeah. Thank you. Will you do that then, John? Oh. Commissioner Witches? I I was thinking about these the neighborhoods in the Detroit area over the weekend. And there's something to think about. I don't know if, if there's gonna be agreement, but when it comes to the neighborhoods, a lot of them tend to um, break up precincts. So would it be appropriate in that particular case to assign block on the block level to stick to neighborhoods or would that be too extreme? Should precincts, I guess, should neighborhoods remain whole over precincts or should precincts remain whole over neighborhoods? Commissioner Orton. Well, my thought on that is neighborhoods are I would say fall under communities of interest. So that's number three. However, we will have to go down to the block level on the congressional map to get the deviation, the population deviation close to zero. So kind of both. <laughs> There's just something to think about. Because I, I noticed that yet um, over the weekend when I was working in the area. So yeah, a lot of the precincts in Detroit do cross over neighborhood lines. Um, so Definitely something to consider. All right. So we are breaking up this neighborhood, but we're doing this for, we started out doing this for VRA compliance. So, okay, that um, 1367 or 1376, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that little corner, please. I think it's going to go down. We'll see. Oh, it probably is. That, that's what Dustin's talking about. Like a lot yeah. of them span, but that's okay. Okay, why don't we undo that one so we don't break into that whole new 
area. Okay. Um, I'm undoing the last one. And did you want this portion or do you want to look at others? Um, let's not do the block level right now. Commissioner Weiss. Uh, Cynthia, I'm just looking. Can John, could you scroll up a little bit, please? Are we right up in here, right? That just, yeah, right there. There's two come up right there. Yes. Is that? A neighborhood and that split into one district. Could we put that back into to two from one? Who are you asking? Whoever <laughs> wants to comment. I, to me, it looks like it's in the one. It's split up right now. If that's it, you're looking at a neighborhood, it is hard to tell if that's yeah. a neighborhood and, line. And I think it is, but it's hard to tell if that's just the line from line one breaking right. it up, or and if it's it, actually that picks you up a few right there. Yeah, that would actually equal you out right there. And accomplishes trying to keep the neighborhood together. Good catch, Commissioner Weiss. Um, do you see? I think it is a neighborhood. Meaning that would that would be a, a different, different neighborhood. neighborhood. Oh, okay. Going, going across the street there. Yeah, it's hard to see, but that's what I. Yeah. Yeah. It is a different neighborhood. Oh, it is. I see the line. Well, we can still take those, the whole neighborhood, yeah. take both of those, John, over. Okay. And then um, if you want, we can look at what was done down here. So this is where you are. They're within 914 and 448 at the moment. Okay. Well, since it's congressional and we need to get close, um, Can you, I don't know if your computer does this, but if you select that little triangle of, yeah, that one um, down, just right there, yeah. Can you tell how much population is in that, those blocks? Um, just under 400. Okay. That help so why don't we do that assign those blocks Okay, District 2 is within 28 people, and District 1 is 494. Okay, so now, um, is it a, commissioners, do we think it's a good time to try and go down to the deviation we're trying to reach, or is this good for now, and then we'll go around again to get it perfect? My, my understanding is that that is also a part of our first compliance criteria especially for this map. So it seems like now is the time to do it. Commissioner Witches. Well, I mean, technically we are, the deviation is in within limits. So we're, we're complying with it. So I, my thought would be to continue working to get everything as close as possible and then go back to it. It'd be easier to make minute adjustments uh, later on. General counsel, can you weigh in for congressional? Like how close do we need to be? So right now we have districts that are like 0 0.06 with, with 400 over. Obviously the 3,800 is a different story, but um, for districts where you have like 497, 4, 494 and negative 28, is there a need to balance those out farther down? Good morning to the commission. Five days left for compliance analysis work. Very exciting. So the every day, five five days. I'll get my sign. I have forgot my tape. I need my sign. Um, so going back to the the serious question of total population and, and deviation. So I think that um, going down through the districts now, we're seeing District Three. Is, is significantly is significantly over for congressional standards. Um, but the final, you'll have another opportunity to make those final tweaks when, when 
Right. But what I'm asking is Cynthia mm-hmm. was looking at one and two. Is there a need for further adjustment there? No. Is that close enough? No, okay. not on one and two, <clears throat> not okay. on one and two. So I would recommend again, that you go down, down the list and uh, district four um, would not need to, to be modified, but, but definitely district three. So yes, definitely continue down the list at this time and see what adjustments you can make. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I think, um, with those, with those adjustments we made, we actually, uh, brought up district two to now 42% instead of 41 point something. Is that still seem okay or? Mr. Adelson. So we brought down district one and two. They're now 41.449 and 42.10. Is that compliant for VRE purposes? Uh, Madam Chair, I think they look good. And um, congratulations to, to all the commissioners who weighed in on balancing these districts the way they have. And I also have to echo uh, my colleagues' comments. The one, one and two, please don't touch the deviations because they. I haven't seen any district that you have a zero, literally, percent deviation in two. So those are... Those are great <laughs> and, and really are well within the range they need to be. And going back to the Voting Rights Act, yes, I think the adjustments do look good. And again, congratulations on everyone who, for everybody who worked on them. Commissioner Rothhard. I just wanted to offer that because we know, or what Commissioner Zatella said was right, that there are districts, excuse me, that district number two, east of Dearborn and the western edge of one, right, if we were to add Right. The, so the the popular the um the, what I'm thinking about is that that blip in the northeast corner of two that's just over the that one neighborhood that we added up on the northern side. Instead, to add it down further south, then we would add more potentially Arab community. Um, I can't prove that. I don't know that. I don't know how we can see it. But I'm just that's the only thought that I had is that that instead of that one blip on the northeast, just bring it and do it in the southeast area that's that's all i'd have yeah that does make sense to me rebecca and anthony do what do you think so repeat i wasn't quite following so if you look at um john can you sort of the blip on the right there that one that that neighborhood there and you just put that back in one relations in the numbers i think matter like the neighborhood keeping the neighborhood whole i think that's one of the reasons we did it up there yeah Well, I think we can try it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine because then you're keeping more of that triangular, I think it's mid Midwest neighborhood together. So, John, will you add, do you know where he's talking about? Will you add those back into one, those two? Yeah. Okay. And then... You could do the eight, six, yeah. four, seven, twenty-four, and fourteen, and that should be about three thousand. Is that right? Yeah. Will you do those three, John? <clears throat> yeah. And. Um, Try the 574. We'd be switching one over, one under, but. Okay, there's not a significant difference, but Mr. Adelson, is that, does that look good? Let's see. Yeah, deviation is still good. I mean, you're under 0.10. I mean, the Supreme Court, uh, the last round of redistricting in the case out of West Virginia um, confirmed that a 0.8 deviation in a congressional map was constitutional. So I think that General Counsel Pachula and I are, will, are, that's one of the things that we're watching as the maps change. And certainly if there were an, a range or a situation where you were getting into uh, potentially problematic territory, we'd speak out, but these deviations are, are good. The districts look good. The election results showed out yesterday. So I think we're good. Thank you. 
So I do have a question here. Um, we did this for um, non-Hispanic Black voting age population for VRA, but we know that we also have the large Arab American population. And I'm not exactly sure. I just know Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. So are we breaking that up at all? Is that, I don't know how to balance those two. Are you breaking up the Arab American population? Is yeah. that what you're asking? Um, no, because most of the Arab American population is in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. There are some in the neighborhoods around, but they're in that, what I call Claytown neighborhood, which is just south of the district you just added. So if you were venturing in there, um, I mean, there is, a, I mean, let me put it this way. You could pick that neighborhood instead of what you picked and that would be furthering the Arab American community by adding more Arabs into two versus the one you did pick. Um, but the other primary area is north of Dearborn which you already have in district two. Does that make sense? Okay. So if nobody sees any way we can improve it, then I'm good with it. Uh, Mr. Morgan. Um, if I may, just at this point, since you're con I just wanna point out kind of a process to this. So if you notice how everything in district two outside of Detroit, you have the whole townships and you have a split in Detroit. So what you might do if you were looking at lower deviations, which we've heard we don't have to do, you might keep district two as is and just make an adjustment in Detroit. And then district one, you might make an adjustment where you already have other splits. When you're talking about balancing at very small levels, that's just the way that you can kind of do that. You do it one district at a time. And again, I'm not saying you have to do that. We've heard comment, you don't have to do that. All right, Commissioner Orton, did you want to make any more changes or are you satisfied with your turn? <laughs> so um, John, can we look down the list a little bit just to see um, if there's anything else that needs changing? I don't think there was. There isn't, it's um Because we don't have the populations anywhere else for VRA districts, correct? And then I think otherwise our deviations are good. Correct. Uh, there's discussion about deviation on three. On three. We Just do. the population yeah. is what we're going for. But I, yeah, so VRA, I don't think we have anything else, right? Does anyone disagree with that? So population, we could adjust three a bit. Oh, and um, so six is actually under by almost a thousand and we could probably move some of three into six and what else is and 10 is also under so 10 and six would be good areas to potentially shift some of three to to balance those out a little more especially 10 10 is we could put 2000 in and then what was the other one i said six yeah i mean between six and 10 we could balance out three do you want to do that commissioner orton I'm just wondering if we could zoom out a little bit so we can see where eight and 12 are because the numbers could balance Eights, there. If yeah, they touch. the Jackson, yeah. Eight and 12. Oh, 12 is, is kind of, yeah, a little out of order, but. <laughs> eight and 11, I guess, sorry. Eight and 11, where's 11? Oh, 11's mm -hmm. Saginaw. Um, Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I would also consider moving some of three into seven. Um, that, um, yeah, I mean, just there's a, there's a half of a township there that uh, we may be able to use. And mm, that's and Plymouth. That's not half problem. a township. It's oh. Plymouth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's Plymouth and Plymouth City, Plymouth Township and Plymouth City that are oh, that are right. their own divisions right now. So it's not cut in half, no. Commissioner Orton, did you want to tackle this or you want to pass it off to MC? <laughs> please tackle it, Commissioner Orton. <laughs> okay, please tackle it. I'll tackle it. Tackle away. <laughs> because I see that, um, speaking of split townships, we do have Commerce Township. So why don't we move... Um, I don't know how much we can do. Can you zoom in a little bit more so we can see population? But we can move some of it into 10 and balance those out. Oh, and Commissioner Ede, I heard you have your hand up. I'm sorry, I can't see you. Yeah, I would just add that eastern part of Commerce Township from three into 10. Those two eastern precincts that uh, 
we're, we're almost at if you pan up a little bit. But yeah, those Eastern precincts, I would just add them to three. And I think that would get the job done. No, we need to take from three into 10. Ah, okay, well then I would do the opposite. I would take the Western townships and put them into 10. So John, can you zoom out just a little bit so I can see what the uh, so border- So th this is Wixom. the border of Wixom. Okay. This is Commerce Township. And okay. then this is Walled Lake. Okay, so that middle part of Commerce Township, can we see? Okay. So I could do that one. I could, which piece? <laughs> I can do those two middle ones right there or that that one, yeah. Well, if you're Anybody? looking at the average, this is right in between your positive 3,800 and your negative 2,800. Let's do that one. Excellent choice. Thank you. <laughs> Great, they're both good now. Okay. I'll yield back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Commissioner Rothhorn. Um, so, so you could potentially put a little of three into six too, if you wanted to balance, or was it three and six, three and six, if you wanted to balance those a little closer or you could just leave? Well, what I'm, I guess what I'm looking at is the largest is 11 that's on our screen, yep. excuse me, eight, eight and, 11, and 11, right? And so I guess I'm just, I'm trying to understand, I think that's how we're gonna, we're trying to, I think our process, right? Our, and I'm trying to be methodical here, right? Cause I think that's what it's called to do while we're doing this compliance. So I'm trying to be, yes, yeah, so the largest number, the largest deviation is eight and 11. So I'm gonna look at, at those two, they don't touch each other. Um, so eight and seven, right? That looks like a place to balance or eight and nine. Any You can also on? step up. So take a little from eight and five, eight and put it into seven and then take a little from seven and put it into five and then take a little mm, from five okay, and put it into okay. 11. Or like work? you said, just we could skip a step and just go eight, five, 11. That would work too. Yes. All right. Much faster. Okay. So, um, so that, that's what I'm going to try to do. So it looks like we're, so eight, if we're beginning at, at eight in the South, we're removed. So I'm adding five to eight. So in the, so we've got whole counties more or less other, in five. Go other ahead. way you're adding eight to five because you're over on eight. Put it on a, on a remove. You um, want to remove from eight yep, yes. and put it into five. Yeah, sorry. My language is probably just, yeah, we're saying the same thing. I just, <laughs> I'm not translating it. Um, so which, so I'm look, I want to increase the area of five by removing a section of eight. And I'm guessing it's more, mostly rural areas. Um, so I'm going to, and I feel like we, that um, I think it's, so the Western, that's Kalamazoo County sort of on that Northwestern county there. Um, and which is, that's a nine. Oh, that's Kalamazoo, sorry, that's I, that's Calhoun. So I want, yep, I want Calhoun County. And let's look at the Northeastern block. What do you think, Commissioner Court Orton? Commissioner Orton? Well, I just have one comment. Jackson County, I think from what I could tell is already kind of split. split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you took from there, we wouldn't be breaking up a county. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, let's look at that. Um, in the Northeast, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move into five, John. So yeah, a little bit North. Yeah. So that, what's that population? Mm -hmm. That one there. Pleasant Lake Munith. So 2,600 or yes, yeah, so it looks like just 2,600, 2,800, 1949. 1903 or 1055, 10, but that's, 10 but I think we're in Calhoun now already. I think we want to stay in the Jackson County. Um, so that Northwest corner, what's that? North Go ahead, Commissioner Orton. 
Well, that was just a thought, but if it doesn't matter, it's not that big a deal, I don't think. Okay. You can always split down to blocks too if you can't take a whole precinct. So keep that in mind as well. Right. Or like some, <laughs> some of those. Did anyone just open the Zoom meeting on their laptop? No. Everyone, just make sure if you have the Zoom meeting open on your laptop that uh, your microphone is off. See, I'm muted on my on my laptop, but somebody's unmuted. What I was going to say is if you split those precincts, because those upper precincts or those upper townships were more than you needed, but you've got two precincts in both of those upper southeast corner ones that you could potentially split in half, or you could go down to the block level on the other two townships on the um, western edge, northwest edge of Jackson County. Commissioner Ede. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I think it's fine as is. Like, I, I understand we're trying to make the population closer to zero, but I mean, we're already pretty close. And I, I don't know, like, where we would decide to, to stop if it means splitting up, you know, an extra township or an extra county. Um, yeah. Thanks, Commissioner Eden. I appreciate that. Commissioner Witches. Okay, well, then I have a question for uh, Bruce here. Would there, if we have our total population deviation, let's say for 11 out of the 13 districts on the congressional under a thousand in deviation. And then we have two pre two districts that are over a thousand by what? Well, one's, one's 1749 and one's 1133. Could that potentially bring up a legal challenge? That's a great question. I think that the, the challenge with the congressional is, as you know, there's you have little or no room. If there is a deviation, let's just say it's 0.4% across the map, you have to explain why. So that's not something that I'm suggesting be done now, but getting the deviations as low as possible, low meanings. I mean, I'd shoot for it to get under 0.20, and that's just a, a random figure. But if you, at the end, this, the whole plan scores out as 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, you'd have to explain why you didn't get the deviation lower. And that's a, that's a, a bridge we can deal with later on. But be, unlike the legislative, there is no room for maneuver. And in that West Virginia case, I mentioned the state provided a justification that the Supreme Court accepted. So I think our advice would be not to have to go there and get, try to get the deviations as low as possible. Okay, and then what's our next, so after that, I'm not sure that we, I think we're on map 180 for the congressional and I don't think we've run an analysis, a partisan fairness analysis on this one. Do, does any, we have run it? I remember 180 said, did we do 180? Did we yeah, do this one? I think Lisa did 180 when she was here. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, we, we did not, we did not do this configuration. Well, and we, we've made changes since, so. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm thinking about in terms of um, just helping us proceed is I'm thinking about, okay, I'll, I'll get it lower, right? Because we do have, we're over a 0.2 percentage here. So I will work on moving, you know, eight into five, but then it feels like we should also have a, a pathway or like get the analysis somehow and understand how we're going to do the next step in our compliance, getting the data that we need to achieve compliance, work towards compliance. Commissioner Lett. Oh, and then commissioners. Well, it looks like uh, that our plan de our plan deviation is 0.37. We have what two districts, as Dustin said, that are uh, a little over two, and now we're talking about taking what our relative, not relatively, they are very contiguous, well drawn maps and making a little tweaks here and there, which we've heard people come in and say, how come you got this tooth sticking up into my county? Uh, you know, 
I think they look pretty good. The ones that we needed to change, we appear to have changed appropriately. I think uh, unless uh, Bruce is going to say these absolutely will get us kicked out of court, then uh, I, I think that we ought to seriously consider moving on to the next step, which would be partisan fairness. Yes, Mr. Adelson. Thank you for Commissioner <clears throat> Ladin. No, I'm not going to say that. I think that the uh, the deviations across the board, you know, the the commission already remedied deviations that were higher than this. I, you know, what I'd like to know what the composite deviation score, but I don't see this as a as a significant issue as it stands. If you wanted to make tweaks to adjust the uh, particular district to below 0.2, I think that that's fine, but nothing is jumping out, I think, at either of us, that the numbers are too high, raise a significant problem. It just, again, that keep in mind the getting the population as low as possible. So while I, I understand uh, wanting to, to move on, I think you've resolved many of the issues. So there may still be some some room to go. Uh, and as you know, I tend to be pretty cautious. So, but you have already remedied the, the larger deviation. So I think that that's definitely a, a point in your favor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, just to point out, if you look at the top right-hand side, you'll see the overall deviation of 0.37. Yes. So that's the overall plan deviation, and it's based upon districts 11 and 8. So that upper right-hand side of the whole screen. Upper right. See where that is, Bruce? I, it, it was, yep, he's circling it. it. Yep. Oh, it's under the uh, it's under the, yeah, under, under the yep, okay. yep. That's the that's the place to look at to see the overall plan. All right, great, Kim. Thank you. I didn't the, the zoom certainly hides a lot of things sometimes. So that that is helpful. I would suggest that uh, that deviation is that's almost 0.4 percent. So if, for example, you left that deviation, you have to explain why. Right. What would the justification be under federal and state law? Uh, not being able to address this to bring the deviation lower makes it less likely that you'd have to provide right. a justification. And I think if we're looking at compactness, that's probably the, the um, that's our seventh criteria. Mm -hmm. And that's what we would be wrestling with here, right? Is like adding something to balance it. But then it, I think, you know, as Commissioner Lett said, there would be a tooth. You know, it's, and, but that's compactness score, correct? Uh, yes, and the compactness score may help the deviation. It's really difficult to, to speculate on that. But just as you saw be, with one and two, with what Commissioner Wharton was doing, you saw the deviations drop at more to where they are now, 0 0.01 and 0 0.07, which are good. So there, there are, and this is also, frankly, part of redistricting as you're moving forward to your uh, draft map and public hearings is doing these little seemingly little tweaks, but at almost 0.4%, you will have to justify that. Okay. Thank you. So I see Commissioner Eads hand, but I want to go to Commissioner Orton first. Well, oh, I couldn't see them on the screen before, but 13 is also the next one that's out of alignment. So it looks like we could move enough from eight up through five to go to 11 and 13 and solve all those problems at one time. I think Commissioner Weiss had an idea though. Thank just you. A, just a quick thought here. I'm looking at district eight right at the Jackson area and then right down to the right there, there's that little section that butts up, yes, John, right there into seven. Maybe we could take some of eight and put it into seven. That would bring eight down and bring seven up a little, but I don't know. If you if different. you have an idea, Commissioner Wise, please, I think we're, yeah, please help us. Yeah, try, right. try to do that. And if you would help us move, yeah, adjust all the districts, I would appreciate it. This just to try to fix this. Uh, John, if you go over to the right there uh, under Jackson. Okay, I'll move over there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm you're, looking, you're looking at eight and seven. Yeah, right just below your cursor in the right corner, right okay. there, that little section. How much is the population there versus taking that and putting it into seven, if that's possible? 
So again, the split areas already are here between eight and seven. There's also a split between eight and nine. And then nine is adjacent to 13 as well. Yeah, so what would be if we moved uh, Norville into seven? Okay, so that would change by 1290. Yeah, let's just try that to see what it does. Commissioner Eve, while that's happening, did you have a comment? Yeah, no, I feel like this is a, this is a good endeavor, but it, to me, it makes more sense to run the partisan fairness values first, because if they're off, then we might need to make more wholesale wholesale changes and then come back to doing this after making those. Um, so just a thought. Yep, I hear that thought. What we're trying to do is be methodical, and I think um, our VRA analysis is help consultant is helping us be methodical by just adjusting when we're in district one or fixing and getting to, and then moving towards compliance in that methodical way. So we will move on after this adjust, these adjustments towards the, um, the partisan fairness measures next. Commissioner Weiss, please continue. Yes, it looks like we raised up seven to 0 0.15, eight to 0.06, brought our plan deviation down to 2.29%. Uh, Keep going, Commissioner Weiss, please. Uh, that I'm not sure after that. I need a little help. Cynthia, okay. bail me out, please. No, this this is it, Commissioner. This is great. Did you have something, Commissioner Orton? No. Okay. Then I'm. Well, what was you talking about by switching and moving? And, and uh, I, I didn't quite. Well, you took care of some of that. Yes, but. But I think the direction that MC was going, just moving a little bit into five and then moving that up to 11, will take care of some of that. Yeah. Well, I think you should handle that, and I will watch and try to. <laughs> Why help. are you picking on me? Because <laughs> well, you're good at these little details. Lucky things. I got that That's little right. bit done. I think. You're detail oriented. Commissioner Orton, will you do? You, uh, no, I'm, I'm seeing. Okay, so I, I will, I will. Uh, it is my turn, so I will continue. So we're looking at 11 and 13, I believe. And yeah, we only have 13 districts. Okay, so those are, and oh, seven, seven is point one. Okay, but, but and that's, so we just did that. So I'm gonna focus on 11 and 13. 11 being, that's our Flint, Saginaw, Midland area. Right. Um, and then 13 is above that in the, the um, oh, and they're both I, under. I think it, it's, yeah. They're both under, okay. Commissioner Lutt. You're over in seven, you could move some of seven into five, and then you can move some of five into 11. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm gonna take away from seven because it's overpopulated. So I'm gonna, this is where I have to go into, what is, should I just add some, like, so that's our Lansing area. What do you think, Commissioner, or Chair Zatella? Uh, well, I was gonna say, I would not go into the Eastern portion because that's Brighton. So I would avoid that. Um, I would aim more towards the western edge of seven, Commissioner. Which is, do you agree with that? I would, yeah, I'd say the western edge is seven, but I would also go into um, what is county is that? What's, what's Ingham? Yeah, Ingham. Ingham County. That that uh, the the furthest west and then straight north. Okay, so John, the. Um, Jackson County, the green area, right there, is that is that where you're seeing? Yep, Commissioner correct, and then, okay. goes, and then straight that, north, yeah. just above that into five. Yep, so we're going to try to, gosh, I guess we have to do it at the block level, don't we? Right, because the, the township or the, is the precinct, is the township and the precinct are the same, it looks like, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so then. Um, you, you could go a little over under Pickney, too. And maybe moving east on it. Yeah, so you see that little precinct under Pinckney. Okay, let's try that. I mean, I just wondering what the population there is because it's a pre so 1359, right? Versus having to break something up. Okay, let's try that precinct 1359. Commissioner Witches. Before you do that, can the, the road from, uh, yeah, there, can I just see what the, what the blocks would be there potentially uh, in, in regards to population? I'm just curious if that could get close, maybe. Who knows? Probably not, but.
So, John, could you select that area above the road that he was looking at, just so we can see what the population is? Uh, the short answer is not quite. Um, not quite. My computer doesn't have that functionality. Okay. Um, so I can add it and then take it back out. That's probably the fastest way to do it. Do you want to try that, Pusher, with Jess? I, I was just curious to, to, to see the, the numbers. and it doesn't. Yeah, they're, they're, it looks like they're all pretty small. small. And you're looking at a 1,000, you probably won't quite get right. there with just the road. Yep, I was, that's it. That's all I needed to see. So Okay. Yeah. So let's try that precinct uh, just under Pinckney. I think it was 1,300, maybe. So we're going to add it to five, please. So five is. Oh, wait, did we go the wrong way? Uh, no, because it was seven that you were trying to adjust. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm no, confused. no, no. Um, uh, there's something else that happened just. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought we were like a thousand <laughs> over yeah. or thirteen hundred over. No, there, I don't. I'm not sure what happened. Just a moment. OK. Oh, I see what happened. Um, oh, no, maybe not. Good choice, John. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so if this does something that we don't expect, then I'll probably uh, rebuild the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, there's something up with the geography here because it's it's not assigning the right amount. Okay, so we'll take a little pause to let you rebuild the plan, right? Yeah. Should we? Do we want to take a 10 minute recess? Hearing no objections, it is currently 1015. Let's recess for 10 minutes until 1025 so we can rebuild the plan.
Test one, two, test one, two. Test one, two. MC, can I get a test from you? Test three, four. No, it's... <laughs> I can hear you on the Zoom. As chair of the commission, I recall this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission back to order at 1027 a.m. Will the secretary please call the roll? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Commissioners, please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose during roll call that you are attending remotely as well as your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. Present. Juanita Curry. Present and attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. Present, and I'm remotely attending from Farmington Hills. Brittany Callum. Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Zatella. Present. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. 12 commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. All right, we will continue with our unfinished business agenda item 5A. Um, so Mr. Morgan, did the computer start cooperating? <laughs> um, not quite. Uh, what what appears to be happening is that there seems to be a different population assigned to the precinct than what we see on the screen, possibly. Okay. So I wasn't able to resolve it right away. So we're still working on it. Do we want to try a different precinct, perhaps? Okay. Let's try a different precinct. We're not seeing it on the screen yet.
Okay, I'll bring the back, this back up on the screen. Um, I think what was happening was, even though I was assigning by precinct, it was moving the population from the whole township. So it, on the visual, it just assigned the precinct, but for whatever reason, it assigned the whole population of the township. So what I have, on, I'll show you on the screen. Okay, so the population of this township that's coming up here, um, and I'll put it on the other screen. The population of the whole township is 6696. But when I put just that precinct in, even though it looked like it only assigned the precinct, it actually assigned the population for the whole township. So this is probably one of the areas where the geography is just a little off. And so when you click on the mouse, it doesn't quite do what you expect. So we could look at another area or, um, you know, we, if, if we really want to do this area, then well, it, it looks, require more time. I'm just wondering if changing it to black level might resolve that or would that make it more difficult? Um, we can try it, but I did try it at the block level and I had the same thing. I moved okay. one block of like 100 people and it moved 6,000 in the population totals. <laughs> Richard is giving him his eraser. So let's look at, yeah, the one next, yep, at that seven, yeah, you're, you're on it. Let's see what the population is there in that precinct. Two thousand. So I'm noticing that uh, just west of where we were, if you go from just further west, I think, so that's 2052, this, that whole township further west, I know, I guess it's 26. So that's a good 6,000 more. Yeah, no, so it's not, it's not a good idea. Yeah, we want to get in sort of the 1,300 uh, well, range. You could try to split that one township too. and Maybe it would work over there. I don't know. That, this one here that he was circling on? The one that was a little over to the west, but still within, I think, Washtenaw County, Linden Center. Okay, that's, yeah. Um, and that's where uh, Commissioner Witches was exploring earlier, I think. Is that, is that right, Commissioner Witches? I, I would think it was over one more to one the more. west, but so that, you, that should be fine too. This one, okay. So Unadilla, so let's do, um, and this looks like it might have more population than that, the farm country that was in the Western one. No, a lot of farms still, yeah, lakes. And let's stop there, John, after you yeah, clean up. Okay, so our overall plan deviation is 0.24 and we have reduced. So we've worked on five and seven and we're trying to move toward 11 and 13. Um, so I continue up here, I think that moves in favor of bringing seven's deviation down to closer to zero. You want to say something, Commissioner Witches? I was going to say, might as well follow that road and take everything north. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Let's just see what, what happens. Okay, we haven't altered our overall plan deviation with that. So that seems like a, and it's it's more of a complete um, a ge geographical area. All right, and so I think at this point we're moving, yeah, north of five into 11. 
and we're going to try to move 11 and 13 districts. So we're going to take from five, right, into 11. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And where should we do that? Any suggestions, commissioners? I would suggest north of Owasso, right, right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Can we change the color on 11 to just make it stand out a little more? It's just kind of hard to see. Commissioner Orton. Um, so seven is still, you know, in the positive and five isn't that much over. You might need to take a little bit more just because there's not very much to move up into those other okay. 11 and is it is it do we want to be closer to a thousand you think have five be closer to a thousand over is that what your your range is that what you're thinking i guess so yeah because we have we're down 2000 in in those other two districts so we got to take it from somewhere right okay and we want to be as methodical as possible so any any thoughts there, Commissioner Witches? So we move into the next township over. Oh, just keep going. where's where's District Thirteen at? I know twelve is the UP. Right? Yeah, uh, District Thirteen. You have nine and thirteen here. Nine is slightly over. Yeah, and then thirteen is adjacent to nine, so you could do that <clears throat> if you wanted to, or you can go into yeah through five as well. Um, hmm. So I think uh, Commissioner Rothorn was suggesting taking, or Commissioner Orton was suggesting taking a little more of seven in the same area, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just follow the road from Linden Center uh, southeast. Mr. Adelson, did you have a comment? Yes, I think in, in looking at the, the continued positive direction and the overall deviation, I'm looking at the population in 11, for example, that's under, under by over 1,000. That I think that to me would be an, uh, an area to to look at because the number is just going right down the list. Could you, John? Could you go down a little bit just so we can see what thirteen is, what the deviation is, please? Thank you. So those are the only two districts that have over uh, a thousand people uh, uh, under. Those would be areas that I would recommend if there's something you can do to to lower them. I think that. That would that would be a very positive step. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. I think that's the yeah, we're we're doing that population circle thing, trying to figure yeah. out which which do we take from. Yeah. So so Commissioner Witches, do you want to help continue um directing uh Mr. Morgan to yeah, I mean he's 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 going down the road as suggested, which is which would be fine. And we're pretty close to a thousand here. Yeah, let's fill that in, John. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Oh, maybe that last little corner there in the township, the southeast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's grab that area too. Fantastic. Okay, so we are a little bit over a thousand. Right, the next step, what I heard you suggesting, Commissioner Witches, was the right to uh, move District 11 into five, correct? And grabbing from those areas, is that, is that right? Hold on. Yeah, that would make the most sense. Agreed. So let's grab those two townships, please. Oh, excuse me. We only want There's one the 12, of them, right? Just grab the 1218. 1218, okay. And now we're moving further north above. Oh, wait, do we want to grab both? Because we want to reduce, right? Because we want to have 1,000 over to get, right, 13 more in balance. Do we want to grab the next? That would be, if we grab, instead of the 1218, what if we just grab the 2,000? That's probably, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's switch it. I didn't think that far ahead. Same with me. And put and we the, have... the New Haven Township back into five, mm -hmm. and that should be able to go over into 13. Keep directing, Commissioner Witches, if so you'd like. where to put it into 13? So I think we want to go above District, we want to go north of District 11 to find 13. Yep. Oh, 13 yeah. is right there. Yeah. I would... 
you've got that little divot above the bay too, like right there. I don't know what the population there is. If yeah, look, well, I'll see how much do we need. A thousand sixteen ninety three. So that'd be four hundred. That we'd be over. Let's see if there's anything sh close south. Let's look at the the border going towards Livingston County. There's what about the eighteen forty two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's the hand in front of the mouth, Dustin. That oh, it's on my chin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be comfortable, you know. Sixteen ninety three. Let's just grab that. Sixteen ninety three. Sorry, I think you need to go. You're the going other the direction. other way. Yeah, you're going the other way. You're taking from eleven into thirteen. But oh, right. but you could, if you look at the difference between these two, you could go uh, into uh, into eleven with this, and then out into thirteen with that. And the difference between these two are going to be closer to what you need. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Let's do that. <clears throat> <clears throat> There we go. There you go. That looks good. And I believe um, our compliance is as low as it's been yeah. Yeah. 0.22. Plan deviation. I said compliance, but I meant is our plan deviation. We've got that's one of the um, pieces to get our data in compliance, more in compliance. And so um, I think we just sort of methodically checked this part off, right? Mm -hmm. We feel like we feel pretty good about this. Yep. Commissioner Orton, do you have something? Well, just for clear, clarification, Mr. Adelson, I think you said below 0. 0.2 would be would be great. Should we try further, or is this good? Uh, Commissioner Orton, thank you. It would be great, but I think this is good too because okay. you, if you look at just look at, at uh, step by step, if you had a few districts that you had over a thousand deviation, you don't have that anymore. The plan deviation has come down from 0.37, I believe, to 0.22. So I think that that's something we can provide more information about in the record about you know, your approach and, and what you achieved. But I think a 0.22 deviation uh, at the moment, I think that that's, I think that's good. Commissioner Witches? I was going to suggest we may want to look at District 6 and 3 because that is a negative and then three is a positive 751. We could be able to probably get that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. While we're here, but let's do it. Where, I'll leave up to you folks. So, <laughs> Okay, so I guess it's technically still my turn. Commissioner Orton, do you want to help me out with this? I just had one little thing. He said, this is good, but if we got below 2.0, it would be great. I think we want to be great, right? Yeah, be and great. I think that fix is going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But that that adjustment will probably fix it. So let's just move a little from, Commissioner from Weiss. three into six. Yeah, and I think I think Commissioner Weiss has an idea. Maybe is that true? Commissioner well, Weiss? yeah, I think so. Uh, District ten is over by almost three hundred, and District ten butts right up to six. Maybe we could swap a little bit there to bring six up a little and take ten down a little. Do you want to direct Commissioner Weiss? Uh, no. Cynthia, please. I still think we should look at three. three yeah, three is even higher. Yeah, higher, over 350 over. And and also up here in the plan deviation to the right, it shows you which is the highest, which six, is six, three. and which is the lowest. And they happen to be uh, adjacent. You okay with that, Commissioner Weiss? Maybe we take a little from each. Yeah. Sounds Just like a plan. A little. So Cynthia, you're talking about taking your, a little from I'll give from you my team. eraser, please. So what are we doing here? Let me see. So, okay. So I'll, I'll try to direct you up. And John, where you are is exactly where we want to be. That's the right. I think so we're adding three. Mm -hmm. so we'll start with three and um, we may be at the block level. Is that, do we know? Can we do precinct? Yeah, it looks like block yeah, instead of block precinct. Uh, Commissioner Clark? Yeah, I, I would consider going down to Clawson, which mm -hmm. is in three, which is just south of Troy. Okay. And moving something from Clawson, yeah, from Clawson so that, up into Troy. It, 
it might also be helpful too to add the Asian American dots because there, there might be some population in those yeah. neighborhoods and we did try to excellent to six. can we try that I, I know Clawson and Troy are relatively linked they tried mm -hmm. to get their school districts together and that didn't work out right so when we I think what you're reminding us of chair Zatella is that when right it was when we drew three that the Asian population was in our mind yes. and so to remove it from three yeah let's so let's have the Asian American theme please um So not, not anything there, yeah. Okay, so we are, so let's continue, take that suggestion and go into the 2532 area and yeah, take from at the block level. There, Commissioner Wichita. Commissioner Wichita. There's a nice, nice road. Well, I guess it's not really a road, <laughs> but from the 68 at the north, follow that curve line down potentially on the either. North, yeah, south. Yeah, that's the one, yeah, or you got it. But I don't know which, uh, which side you want is up to whomever's doing it. So let's look at the theme and see if it'll help us. It looks There's like a little, that one, yeah, 93. So, yeah. so do we want to keep that in district six because of the other dots or do we want to, can we, can we zoom out to see how many, like where our most um, Asian American population is, if it is in six or in three? It's definitely in six. Yeah. It's in six. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so we do want to take the Eastern edge as commissioner, which was suggesting right where that, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, that way we accomplished two objectives. Of the same. Yes, that's great, John. Yeah, and now our plan deviation is 0. 0.18. Okay, which is under two, which is great. Okay, so I think my turn is done. I think we're also trying to figure out what we do next to achieve more and more better compliance. So before we move to the next, it seemed that we were in, when we were in, Mid can we move up to Midland City and look at it? Because it seemed like there were some discontinuities there and I'm not sure if it was just because it was zoomed out. I just, yeah, so look up at the top of Midland City. Yeah, there, and there's some at the top. Can we fix those? Yeah, we've got a, Maybe a couple. That's, is that part of our compliance that we want to run a no, discontinuity check? No, I just figure while it's here. Well. I, I think we do want to run, like, that's part yeah. of our compliance. Yeah. So let's, so let's do that. Since this is the map oh, that yeah, we've decided that. to, yeah. Do you want to walk us through that, Chair Zatella? Sure. So um, five, has, so what is it recommending for that little area? So it's a recommended to sign it to five. Is that an area of four sitting in there? Yeah, can you just assign that to five? Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I know in the past, um, the commission has elected to let uh, EDS during the meeting, if it's surrounded by a district, mm -hmm. to just make those changes automatically and raise and highlight and receive guidance on a, a discont excuse me, a discontiguity that would be on a border between two districts to see what the commission would like to do. Um, so I would recommend that uh, the commission might want to consider uh, doing the same thing here today with the yeah. congressional. Yeah, I think these are all the ones in, in Midland. Yeah, that's correct. These are all Midland. I'm just cycling through them. Yeah, if you could just put them all into, if they're surrounded by Midland, put them into Midland. I would appreciate that. Yep. And it, it will affect the population slightly. Yep, that's why I wanted to do it now before we did anything else.
commissioners, I wonder while we're while we're waiting, um, are you all okay with working um, not through lunch? But what I mean is, can we? Are you? I would. I'd like to consider sort of breaking at one o'clock rather than at noon because it's a little bit later. And I'm wondering if how you all feel about that. We can. It's only. It's not even eleven o'clock yet. But the what I'm while we have this break, while we have this time, I'm just asking you to consider that we, you know, because we're going to work till eight potentially, right? To have a later lunch. Um, and this was, yeah, we've got some great thinkers over there that we're considering that. So if you all just think about that, we can, um, yeah, try to work through the noon hour and just take a break at one or one thirty. We'll just see how we're doing. I'm not seeing any objections. So I'm not saying that we're going to do that. I'm just wanted to make sure that we didn't anticipate. Yeah. Sometimes anticipation is what helps us. Sorry, it's uh, taking a little time. We need like a sports announcer to cover all these changes. <laughs> and now we have District 11, zero population that needs to be assigned. Where's Ernie Harwell? <laughs> the spirit is within chairs of Tella. <laughs> Yeah, all these, all these zeros. That's that's what we're cleaning up. And those must be uh, Yankee precincts. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the baseball metaphor. Yeah, of course. Of we know that's true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just, just preparing you for tonight's game, Bruce. <laughs> yes, Doug and I have a lot of action about tonight's tonight game. We're we're locked in a a definite major rival. And this is the Detroit, New York. Is that uh, this is the Yankees and the Red Sox? The Yankees and the Red Sox. Got it. All right. So we have no discontinuities. Did you check for unassigned areas? And if not, can you? Perfect. All right. So that looks good. Please save. <laughs> All right. So um, we've Commissioner Wise. Did you have a comment? Uh, why did our plan deviation jump? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Probably because there was an assignment of a township when we took a block. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let me look back here. Eagle Eye Wife. Yeah. All right. So let's. Working on the discontinuity. Commissioner Witches? Commissioner Witches, did you have a comment? Well, I was just going to say that that happened while the we were assigning the, the discontinuities in Midland. Yeah. So, so is, a, is there any place else that's over by that amount? Because I'm thinking. I, yeah, I'm going to try to rebuild, rebuild the, the plan, plan and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, because that seems way off. Okay, so what's happened here is that some of these have become unassigned um, as we were doing that. So I have to go and assign those uh, townships. That's what the issue is. That's why it looks off because these townships were unassigned during this process. So if I reassign them, it'll get closer to what we wanna do. Can you go ahead and reassign them to 13, please? Uh, we'll try. It may, it may cause the discontiguities again, but yeah. we'll get there.
Okay, um, the commission directed me to assign these townships to District 13, um, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, thank you. Would it help to lock District 11 before you do that so it can't I, change back? I did that. Oh, thank you. You're so smart.
Who knew Midland was going to be such a pickle for everybody? I mean, I I feel like that's it's contiguous, so just leave it, you know? Yeah. It's weird, but yeah. Okay, so who do we have online? We have Commissioner Curry and Commissioner Eid and Aaron. Okay, I just want to make sure we have yeah, some. Okay, all right. All right so I'm go here. ahead, Mr. Porter. Thank you. Okay, um, sorry for the delay, but um, I just ran the, the checks on this and there's no discontiguities and all the territories on assigned. So now you can look at the plan deviations with the correct totals. All right, and we're back to 0.18. So that looks good. So um, we've looked at VRA, we've balanced out equal population. We accommodated the communities of interest in drawing this map. Um, so do we wanna now do the partisan fairness analysis? All right, so let's go ahead and run that partisan fairness analysis. And Chair Zatel, I'll just offer that I'm, I'm giving up my turn, so it's whoever is in the next rotation. I think it's you. That's me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Although technically, I could just say, "Well, I asked to clean up Midland, so, <laughs> so move on to someone else. It's on to Janice." <laughs> Commissioner Lang. I'm curious, what was the conversation about Midland? Because that we had no audio and it came on with you saying who knew Midland was going to be such a pickle. So I was just kind of curious what the conversation was that we weren't able to hear. Yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. So the issue was there were, um, I think, 13 or 14 discontinuities within Midland. And so I directed John to fix that. And in the process of fixing that, it reassigned a bunch of population, like 5,000 people in District 13. So we had to go back to fix that. So that's all we did there was just fix the discontinuities and then correct what got reassigned. And there were a lot of them. So it took them probably a good 10 minutes to, to fix all that. So it's it's back to the plan as drawn um, with the discontinuities affixed, fixed and then no unassigned areas. Okay, thank you. Okay, if I may, before we run the partisan fairness, um, you know, we took this plan that was originally 180 um, and then you made revisions yesterday and you've made revisions today. Um, would you like to rename this as a plan so that when we run the information, you have a, a new fresh plan number for it? Yes. Okay. So I will save this with a new name reflecting today's date. Madam Chair. Yes, Jen. thank you so much. While Mr. Morgan is assisting the commission um, in running those, I wanted to circle back um, on this partisan fairness issue. Again, the, the goal for the commission is, is to achieve scores that are low as possible without sacrificing other criteria. The constitutional language is very clear that competitiveness and proportionality are not criteria. The accepted measures of partisan fairness um, that the commission is about to look at, what the constitution provides is that there shall not be a disproportionate advantage. I know that the, there's been very passionate public comment about uh, the goal is 0%. Uh, what the Constitution speaks to is, again, disproportionate advantage, so that 0% threshold. Remember that the federal court has found, a federal court found our current maps in Michigan were heavily partisan gerrymandered, um, and they used both political and election data to achieve that result. Um, again, the goal is to have it as low as possible, but without sacrificing the other criteria. And,
Uh, I'm sorry, uh, please excuse the, the delay. So the, the other thing that I know that Dr. Handley highlighted uh, when she was with us last week, and I wanted to uplift again, is that the data that is in the active matrix that we're looking at with the draft plans that the commission is currently working on, these are projected election results. So in the League of Women Voters versus Benson case that I was highlighting the other day, those results and those fairness measures were based off of actual elections that the plaintiffs used to prove partisan gerrymandering. So I wanted to make sure and, and make that distinction uh, once again. But the commission, again, is adhering to the constitutional criteria as written and will continue to do so. Thank you. Um, General Counsel, could you clarify for me what kind of the the bumpers are that we're looking for. I, I, I don't believe lopsided margin was one of the ones considered by the League of Women Voters. I know mean median was and wasn't efficient to gap as well. Is there a range we should be looking for that you can direct us on, on, on what is legally permissible? I thought the mean median was between negative six up to five, but I'm wondering like what is the range for efficiency gap and if there's anything for lopsided margins as well. Um, and Madam Chair, while they're debating that for, or discussing that for a moment, I just want to point out that I saved the plan name yeah. with today's date, version one CD. So that will be what we'll be running these on. Yep. And at the end of the day or whenever you choose to, we'll upload this to the website. Okay. Thank you. And if you want to go ahead and run that report while she's responding and we're sorting this out, that would be helpful. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. So Dr. Hanley um, gave some feedback and, and we've been in contact with her about some additional guidelines that would assist the commission. But the... Bless you. Bless you. And again, the, the goal is to get the school scores as low as possible without sacrificing the higher criteria. What the commission is will see and... and continue to see is that the function of keeping communities together, whether it be by through communities of interest, the third criteria, or the Voting Rights Act, the first criteria, or diverse populations in the third, third criteria, is that that, that tends to submerge um, party votes on, on a certain side. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what the, the numbers are demonstrating bear, bear, bear that. Um, Okay. Um, so again, we're, we'll receive additional feedback from Dr. Hanley. And I would also note she raised last week um, that she was very surprised at the UP, the Upper Peninsula, some of the, the, uh, the data that was demonstrated for, for the Upper Peninsula. So that could also be an opportunity for the commission to look at. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can we see the numbers, John? Okay, so this is the Partisan Fairness Report, and it's on today's plan date, version 1 CD. Uh, and then these are the numbers. All right. All right, can we see the mean median? All right, can we see the efficiency gap? 0.7. Commissioner Orton. The zoom is a little bit in the way. Can we move that down maybe? Yeah, Department of State, can we move the zoom to the bottom? Thank you. All right, and uh, can we see the, the seat, seats, vote, seats for vote? Okay. All right, thoughts? 
So I have a suggestion if anyone's interested in hearing it. It's your turn. It is my turn. So um, Commissioner Witches did have an alternate arrangement for Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo. And with his map, these numbers go down a lot. Um, do we want to create a clone map with his configuration for Grand Rapids and then run a report and compare it? Is this my the zero deviation one I was working on? No, it, you had a couple versions where it shows Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo together. So yeah. just that, that, yeah, we could work off your zero deviations. We'll or, go, you can go off of that one because yeah. that... It has the same configuration, I believe. So. Yeah, I think there's a couple with that configuration, but just to give us some, some food for thought, maybe Fine. create a clone. Yeah, But I'm, I'm going to, even though it's my turn, I would ask you to direct that because you know your map. Okay, well, um, can I'll I try. Clark? Yeah, are, are we talking about making a clone of this one mm -hmm. and then making the changes? Yes, because okay. we have already fixed everything else on that's, this that's what i want to avoid is, <laughs> so, is having to go back and yeah do so what i would like to do if we can is maybe create a clone of this map and then grab the shape file from dustin's zero deviation map put it on top and then that can guide you to redirect well i, I that yeah. one was submitted so we can we can actually pull that one up as an alternate i believe right yeah but then it doesn't have all the changes we just made for vra and oh yeah yeah so that that was why i was thinking we got to make that's fine um, Commissioner Ede. Yeah, you guys, um, uh, I, I couldn't hear what just happened uh, after we suggested making a clone and putting up uh, Commissioner Witch's uh, configuration for Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo. Uh, that was pretty much it, is, is we discussed the process for doing that that would make, be most efficient. Okay. So we're going to make a clone of this map and then pull in the shape file from Dustin's map, put it on top. And that way we're working with all the work we already did this morning, but making those changes in the Grand Rapids Kalamazoo area. We also had uh, the map that I submitted that was based off of this map originally with some configurations that uh, had Grand Rapids with Muskegon and then Kalamazoo with Battle Creek and that scored a little better I think it's a little closer to this map that it's a little closer to the collaborative map shape wise. I mean, we could, we could look at both of them and I'd be totally okay with that. Yeah. I mean, we can do that, but let's work on getting Dustin's Grand yeah. Rapids variation up first. Sounds good. Just the shape files you said, right? All right. So if he creates a, a clone of this map and then pulls your shape file, um, from the website, he should be able to put the shape file over as a layer, and yeah. then you can see very easily where where your districts were and draw from there, and it's just a lot faster. Yep, perfect. And then, like I said, it's preserving what we did earlier today where we balanced everything else, so. Okay, so I made the copy and I've opened the copy. So it has the name uh, version one from today's date with uh, DW. Thank you. And then uh, I'm yeah. going to open the shape file here.
Okay, are you able to see this on the Zoom for the commissioners that are not present here? I see Juanita shaking her head. So the answer is yes, okay, nodding her head, you. I should say. Okay, so these, uh, the outlines in red are the boundaries of uh, Commissioner Witches's plan. Okay, so what should work on the coast and move <laughs> inland? I just say do the whole thing. Let's All right. Do what make so, the changes that you have, and we'll rerun it and see what we come up with. All right. So District Nine. Let's start there. Um, I guess just follow the red line at the south. Um, now, since I did get these down to near zero population, blocks are going to have to be used. So we'll see how uh, if I remember where they all are. Mr. Morgan. Yes, I was going to suggest um, making the big moves first and then seeing if you want to adjust at the smaller level. That's fine. So let's just go ahead and fill in the counties here. So I believe that those red lines on the uh, outside of Grand Rapids and north of Lansing are all District 13, if my memory is correct. Sorry, we need our sports announcer back. <laughs> Maybe we can get Harry Carey. <laughs> B5.
Justin, can I ask a question? Is the, the next red line, is it that, you know, between 11 and 13, is that adding to 11, just, just south of Midland? Is that adding to 11? Uh, I want to say yes. Okay. I'm just wondering if you're willing to go north to Bay. Sure am. To Aranac, because I think one of the things that we heard, and I think it, yeah, if, we, if we're doing it already, Aranac and Bay counties really associate with each other. And that was that was my thought there. That's fine. Yeah, and I your map does not have Midland City in West Saginaw, and I would prefer to leave that. So we might have to make some other adjustments to what you have. Fine by me. Um, and and if I may, what I was trying to do primarily is get four, nine, thirteen, yeah. five, and eight. Yeah. And we haven't adjusted any of these, so these are still uh, the same as the map you just had. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So now if you look, if you just focus on as it stands, then it's eight and 13. Um, you know, you would potentially have to look at passing population between eight, nine and 13. And then I think you're good on the deviations. So because do you want to go ahead and direct that Dustin? Um, so we're going to pass population from eight because we're 2000 over on eight to five up to 13 or, or nine or nine or yeah, nine, five yeah. or nine, whichever five or way. Nine. Maybe let's nine. Do, let's do nine. Yeah. Okay. So um, down here, I took this one township that you had. Um, maybe the next township yep. up would be that's, a good idea. That's fine. Okay, so Howard is fairly large. Uh, it's possible you could split it or you could look at another uh, portion of another township. Or you could look at the difference again where, uh, let's say we're trying to take out. So uh, if you took this in, then you'd be 5,000 up and then you'd have to take out something else. So that probably doesn't work. Okay. Commissioner Orton has a thought. Well, I see that part of Niles is split. So maybe we could at least take some of that area so that all of Niles would be together. That's fine. Okay, let me see if it selects as a separate township, but before I do that, I'm gonna save. Okay, so that didn't affect a lot of people, but that does unite Niles. And now if you follow with the same idea, you would probably take some area around that or in the Southern part of Howard, maybe. That, that works for me. Okay. Okay, what section would you like to take into nine? Well, let's take the north end of M60 following the road up right where your mouse is. So let's see where we get with okay, that. Okay, so right here? Correct. Okay. And we're looking at um, probably somewhere a little more than uh, 1,500. Okay.
Do you want me to continue up around this lake or go a different direction? Thoughts? I'm worried if you go around the lake, you're going to end up getting more population and splitting the lake. So maybe yeah. going up around the airport. Yeah, let's keep heading north. Okay. So that should be it's slightly over the 1500. So let's stop there. And then we got to pass that through the district 13, correct? Yep. Okay, so I'm saving this. And then before we do that, I was going to run the discontiguity to see if something changed, if I may. Yes, you may. <laughs> do you want to move the rest through? No error, sorry. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> All right, so please continue, Dustin. What are those blocks? Sorry, these are uh, townships. Oh, okay. um, so those are the population of the whole townships and it looks like you're looking to move uh, somewhere close to 1600. So this would be one um, or this mm -hmm. single one there. Ooh, what about that 1627 right there? Okay. Missed it. Commissioner Witches here. I missed it. Oh, that's fine. I didn't see that. Commissioner Orton. What is that that we're cutting up? Wastewater treatment facility is what it says. <laughs> My brother would have something different to say, but. Okay. All right, that looks good. So can we save this and run the partisan analysis on this plan and see what we come up with? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, and our plan deviation is 0.12, so I think it's even lower than, oh, I didn't record what we had. Did you record? Did, was it 0.18? It was 0.18, right? Was our other one? Okay. Okay, so I have a different plan name for this, so we'll run the scores. I think we had a seven on the first one. So we're down to four for the lopsided margin. <coughs> Do you want to direct us, Chair Zatella? Yes. Yeah, so last map was 7%, also Republican favoring Republicans. Let's look at the mean median. Mean median is 2.4%. Republican, that's down from 3.5%. Let's look at the efficiency gap. 1.3% down from 8.7%. It's a huge drop. And then let's look at the seat votes. So we now have a 1.5% negative for Republican, positive for Democrat. So the, the um, balance has switched. So this is now a 7-6 Democratic map um, versus the other one was a 6-7. So the proportionality bias was the, the negative sign was reversed. 
Um, and if I remember and correctly, the old one, yeah, the other one was uh, negative six point five or six point two. So quite a drop there too. All right. So if I may, Chair Zatella, one of the things I heard with the, that uh, Commissioner, or excuse me, um, Lisa Hanley said was that the state is democratic, yes. right? And so the majority of the voters elect the majority of the seats in that one. Madam Chair. There's yes, General Council. Wanna... Yes, to build on what Commission Vice Chair Rothhorn is stating, yes, the, the key is that the party with the majority of the votes wins the majority of seats. So what happened in the previous plan, um, the, the first congressional map that was run the mean median at 3.5 was acceptable, but the other three measures uh, uh, were either significantly high or in seats to votes it, that was flipped, that the uh, seats to vote ratio was not, demonst was not um, demonstrating uh, or reflecting the majority of votes in the state. The current plan that I had stepped out, but I heard I heard percentages, so I popped back in as fast as I could. All of the measures have improved um, and significantly uh, the seats to votes ratio actually accurately reflects the majority of votes with the majority of seats in the state of Michigan. But all three of the other measures, there was even an improvement on the mean median score. Um, so this plan, this plan scores very well across all, all the measures. Thank you. Mr. Morgan and then Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Ede. Yeah, I just wanna point out again, um, I've said this before, but just to go back to it again, the vote share here does not change for each plan. So while Commissioner Rothhorn was talking about individual elections, what we're really talking about is this composite index. So that's not gonna change. All right, so that's all. Mm, Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I've got a number of comments. Um, yeah, let's stay at the map here, Jeff. Um, granted, the numbers are, came down, and I, I wouldn't want to argue that. But to make that happen, we did a number of things that I'm concerned about. One is, and I, I know what we're trying to do today, but with this map, we've taken Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo and combined them, and I don't think they belong together at all. And I'd like to get some comments from some others based on that. And then what we've also done is taken what we call the lake shore, and we've moved it inland. And that's not what we're hearing from the public either. Um, and so I was, I was concerned about those two things. Um, I was... I'm anxious to look at what Anthony's done as well as a, as a third alternative. To, um, but I personally would rather live with the first map and the higher numbers than this for the reasons that I think we've hacked up the, the west side of the state. And I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think that's what the people want over there. So that's my opinion. Commissioner Ede. Well, you know, this configuration to me is certainly much better than um, than the previous one we were looking at, just on virtue of the numbers being so much closer to zero. Um, I mean, the numbers are good. You know, the numbers look really good. Um, I, I agree with Commissioner Clark that I, I don't think Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo uh, go together very well. It's kind of a long district, but if that's what it takes to get the numbers, then I'm okay with it. You know, we could examine a, a third alternative when we get to that point that has Kalamazoo with Battle Creek. I think that's a little bit more appropriate, but uh, overall, I mean, the numbers don't lie. This map is much more fair than the other one. Commissioner Lett. Um, I agree with Commissioner Clark that the west side of the state has expressed their opinion regarding who they want to be with and whom, uh, while also uh, everybody has basically said they want fair maps. And this certainly is one iteration of a more fair map than what uh, our first one was. But uh, certainly we need to take a look at uh, Anthony's and the uh, see what that looks like. But I, I think undoubtedly we can improve on our numbers somehow, um, some way. Commissioner Lang. 
I just hope we remember to follow the ranked criteria. I keep hearing the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, but if there's community of interest that are being separated to get these numbers down, then I will not vote yes for it. I'm going to follow the rank of the constitutional amendment that says communities of interest rank higher than the political fairness. I'm fine with political fairness. And this is a good start, don't get me wrong. But if we're jeopardizing or throwing out communities of interest to make those numbers happen, then that's not gonna set well with me. Um, Commissioner Witches. <laughs> Another way, to, like, I think I said this before, I'm not too sure, but with, with communities of interest, for example, Cal okay, so Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, that's two very different cities, sure. I can I, I I can agree with you, but on another communities of interest standpoint, you can say, well, we're keeping the Kalamazoo community of interest together. We're keeping portions of the of the of the um, communities of interest in Grand Rapids together. So there's communities of interest that are staying whole, and then I'm assuming that there is a community of interest in the middle too that is also staying whole. So yeah, communities of interest are are there. A community of interest is not where you don't want to be. It's it's a group of individuals living together. So by doing this, we are in fact taking communities of interest into account, in my opinion. Commissioner Orton. So I do think these are great numbers. It's amazing that we got the plan deviation down. Personally, living in the Kalamazoo area, I don't think I don't like this configuration, but the numbers are good. Um, I do think Commissioner Lang's point is good that we that communities of interest rank above partisan fairness. Um, and we all want fair maps, but not really thinking about Kalamazoo and, and Grand Rapids together. What I see is, I don't know about the Grand Rapids area, but Kalamazoo, those few townships to the right of Portage and Kalamazoo really are a community of interest with Portage and Kalamazoo. So we have to make it so skinny to get those two cities together that we are breaking up communities of interest, I believe. So um, Department of State, can you put the zoom down to the bottom so that we can sort of see, or either that, John, can you move the map over a little so we can see the west? Thank you, thank you so much. Um, so I have a couple of thoughts on this. One of the communities of interest we consistently heard about was Grand Rapids and keeping Grand Rapids and the Metro Six together. This map does that. Another community that we heard repeatedly about wanting to stay together was Ottawa County. This map does that. Um, we have the shoreline kept together. Yes, we carry it out all the way to the county, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because all of those supporting communities, townships on the inside, do typically rely on the shoreline as well. They, they are connected. Um, in terms of Kalamazoo, we've heard all sorts of comments about Kalamazoo with respect to Battle Creek. I don't know that we've ever heard any comments from Kalamazoo about not wanting to be with Grand Rapids. And of course that's natural because Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo aren't currently together on a map. So I feel like there's an area for public comment there um, in terms of what does the public want? What do those communities think? And I would particularly like to hear from people in Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo, are they okay with this configuration, particularly in light of the fact that it creates a more fair and equitable map, which is number four on our criteria, but I don't see a lot of dividing of other communities of interest that are happening on this map. Um, I'll be honest, I don't love this configuration. It's, it's not my dearest, fondest desire. I like our other map better <laughs> in terms of appearance, but we do have to also meet that goal of partisan fairness in this configuration gets us much closer to that goal than the other map that we did. So, um, and then my last point is with respect to the Latino community, which is scattered all the way up and down the coastline, this map performs well in terms of keeping that Hispanic community together because we have 6.86% with this configuration because that, that community is sort of dispersed up and down the coastline. So I, I think that's yet again, another community of interest that we're keeping together. And John, if you could pull the map down a little bit more, I just wanna see the upper boundaries of District 9. So once again, we have Muskegon County where we've received a lot of feedback about Muskegon not wanting to be cut up. And this, for the most part, preserves that county except for one little township that's brought up. So I, I don't think we're throwing communities of interest to the wayside with this. Um, I think 
we have most of them considered in the way that we've understood. It's just, I would want to hear from the public specifically about people who live there, not people like me who don't live there, (laughs) who have an opinion about it. I want people from Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo to weigh in on that concept, which is why I think presenting, bringing two maps to the public hearings might be a good idea so that people can weigh in on that. Um, General counsel and then Commissioner Ede, I believe, hands his hand up and then we'll go to Commissioner Clark. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, What I would like to highlight is that this is a perfect illustration of since the beginning of the commission, um, certainly before I got here, and, and I know I've said it numerous times since I've been here, that this this is the perfect illustration of the tension between criteria that the commission has always expected from the very beginning uh, and, and it's manifesting today in the differences between these two maps. So I just wanted to highlight that because I know when we're giving all our presentations going through the criteria and we kept saying that the, the, there will be conflict between the criteria there will be conflict sometimes within the criteria, such as the communities of interest and the advocacy efforts around uh, those. But again, both plans uh, both plans would be acceptable to, to put forward to the commission, or excuse me, to the public. Um, and, and both plans are stronger for different reasons. Um, Commissioner Ede, I believe you had your comment, your hand up, and then Commissioner Clark. Yeah, and no, I just wanted to second what uh, Commissioner Zatella and Commissioner Witch has said. I mean, I already said I don't love the Grand Rapids Kalamazoo configuration, but as far as communities of interest go, it does support communities of interest. It's just a matter of which communities of interest, which is, you know, the hard thing. And it's something that I struggle with because it is subjective. We've had all sorts of comments that advocate for all sorts of different configurations all over our state. So I'm sure if we look, we could find some that have Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo together. Now, probably not as much as you know some other configurations, but as you guys already said about all the other communities of interest that are intact on here, uh, and I would agree with that. Thank you, Commissioner Ede. Commissioner Clark? Yeah, I, I agree this map should be brought to the, the hearings that we have, and I'm a going to be particularly interested when we're in Grand Rapids and when we're in Kalamazoo, what the comments are. Because if we get a lot of negative comments, um, I'm not going to support this. Um, and I still may not support it. Um, but I, I would like to see Anthony's map as well. And yeah, I'd like to see Anthony's map as well, because we may want to bring three. <laughs> Yeah, I I think that's a fine idea. So um, we're going to try to go to one. Is that correct? So do we want to take a quick 10 minute break and then we can have you, we can save this. We've got it saved. We can put it on the website, Mr. Morgan. Yeah. So I was going to say, once you reach the lunch break, um, that might be a good time for me to upload these plans Mm -hmm. if you like. So if commissioners want to look at them during the lunch break, they could. That would be fantastic. So Commissioner Orton. What 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 is the number or name of this plan? Right now, um, it is ten five twenty one version one CD, which is the descriptor, and then it has DW for Commissioner Witches's plan it being overlaid and put into this. So that's the current name of it, and it will get a number designation when I upload it. So you can refer to the number after I upload it. And the first map just doesn't have that DW at the end. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Yeah. Commissioner Rothhorn. Um, in terms of um, moving us along with both of the plans that we've looked at, 180 and, and this one, I'm wondering if we want to run the compactness score in term, just before we upload it to see if we can actually sort of check that off, because I think that's our last measure for compliance. And and if I may, I don't believe we've run the compactness scores on any congressional plan. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So yeah. I'm suggesting both of them before the lunch hour, just to sort of before we put them up, because yeah. then we would have a Senate one that has had all of that. Yeah. And then we would have two congressional that have would have. So complied. can you go ahead and run that on this right now? Okay. Thank you. And did we want to take a break for 10 minutes or are we good? Okay. If we're fine, then I don't, let's press through. Cause I know this was supposed to be our lunch hour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
We are, we are not on a break. Okay, so in running the compactness report, um, there's only 13 districts, so there's not as much to look at. And I will open this in uh, the PDF format. And this is version DW that we're working, looking at, correct? That's right. All right, thank you. Sorry, I didn't get to see those numbers, but- Oh, that's okay. I'm gonna blow them up. Uh, I'm gonna enlarge them on the PDF. Thank you for not blowing them up. I was just gonna say, don't blow them up yet. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so looking at this again, Polsby Popper is the measure that we're looking at. And as we discussed yesterday, it's a range of zero to one, and it is comparing the areas of circles. So the most compact here is district nine and the least compact is uh, District 1 in this configuration. And right, so just District confirm. 1, Detroit area, and District 9 was the one that we just drew on the West Coast. All right, which is interesting because, um, yeah, the Senate District, right, that was well, District 34, and that was also a 50-50, that was unusual. Please, Ms. So, Morgan. Um, one of the things that's a little odd here is it has to do with the uh, the territorial boundary of Michigan. So if you were to just follow the coastline, this would not score as compact, but because it has the um, water, the, tw the water, the 12 mile water limit, it's increasing the compactness. So I don't know how you would describe that, but that's what's happening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Morgan for that. Um, all right, so we've got, um, and uh, just to, I wanna record this. Um, I guess we're not recording an overall score, we're just recognizing which ones are the least compact and the most compact. And it is our final criteria. So let's, I think we're just gonna acknowledge this and uh, let's run the first version, which is I think map 180, I'll say version one, whatever we started with this morning, please. Right, we adjusted it. And so the new name for that is gonna be 10.5.21 version one. And then it will get a, a number designation when I upload it at the lunch break. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just confirming that this is not the Grand Rapids to Kalamazoo. Um, and then you can see the changes that we made. So this was a change between five and seven. Um, and then this is the township swap up here. So I'm just confirming that the tinkering that we did this morning is correct. And yes. now I'll run the compactness report. Thank you. We're, do, we're um, I guess we're running the Polsby Popper on this one. And then we'll have two congressional districts that have completed our compliance review, I suppose. And then we will um, upload those and then we'll move on to the, the next, next thing. Okay, so in reviewing this, um, you have the same district one, so it's showing up as the least compact. And in this case, the most compact is district five. Okay. Which is here, it fills the circle. Okay, Commissioner Orton. Aren't those the same numbers, the high and low? Uh, the same- Most uh, compact. I mean, the most compact was district nine in the first one, but it was the same number. Is that what you're suggesting? I mean, it was 0.55, wasn't it? And then 0.24? Yes, you're exactly right. Uh, th that's right. Um, what's happened here is that <clears throat> the configuration that has the Lansing area following the county boundaries is a little more compact than the one that takes a few townships away from that um, as the, uh, the witches uh, adjustment did. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so um, Mr. Morgan, I think what we wanted to do is just make sure that we can save those and upload those to the website. Um, and thank you. Okay, so I uh, shall I pause here and work on that? No, or at the lunch hour. At the think, lunch hour. At the lunch okay. hour, please. And um, I think where we're at is we're ready to move on to the next thing. Commissioners, um, Commissioner Ede, well, so let's see, where are we? I think it was, so that was Commissioner Zatella's turn, so we finished with her. Help me remember, um, the alphabet, no. <laughs> Should we do Commissioner Z's plan? Okay, and so it would be um, Commissioner Vallette. So Commissioner, I guess what I'm asking Commissioner Vallette, will you help Commissioner Ede run his plan or how should we do this? Commissioner Wichis, do you have a thought? Well, just for clarification, are we doing the same methodology that we just did with putting an overlay on and then changing, keeping the VRA districts the same as what oh. we just did, or are we just taking a look at Anthony's plan? It seems, go ahead, Commissioner. Consistent. Clark. Say consistent. Yeah. So which, the, what does that mean, Commissioner Clark? Overlay. Overlay. Okay. Yeah, exactly what Dustin said. Okay. Commissioner Orton. I think it kind of depends on how much Anthony wants to change, how different his is from this and what his goal is. Right. And if I remember correctly, Commissioner Ede, you were saying that you weren't quite sure you wanted to do that because you're remote today. Do I remember that correctly or do, am I miss? Uh, well, I mean, I can do it. I, I think that if we set it as an overlay to this first collaborative plan, it's actually pretty close. Um, so I, I think we could do it. There are some changes in Metro Detroit, but it achieves about the same levels of uh, of the VAP that we were looking at. So yeah, I think let's set it as an overlay and I'll talk us through it. But let's make it look, let's make a, make sure there's a copy of this because I don't want to, you know, I, I believe there is, so. So are there, so I, if there are substantial, what I'm hearing you say, Commissioner, is that there may be substantial changes, not just an overlay. Is that, do we want to? I don't think the changes are substantial. Okay, so why don't and I so maybe what we need to do is put it as an overlay, and then the commission can understand if it is substantial or not. We can talk about that. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Yeah. Um, there is a the one that I uh, submitted yesterday to get more VRA fairness, and that was posted on our website. Um, so if we could use that, that would be great. Okay, Commissioner. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Morgan. So. Um, this might be this might be a good question for Commissioner Ede. Would it be better to use uh, the Witches version with the Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids together, or to go back to the previous one that didn't have that configuration? No, I think the the, the first one that we we're looking at today would be a good base. And then okay. We can put the overlay over it, just like same methodology as the first one. Okay, and then just to try to keep us sort of, you know, in a cycle here, again, it is, we would be normally going to Commissioner Vallette. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how to proceed or just, I recognize that it, well, might, go ahead, Chair Zatella. I, I guess I'm just wondering, I mean, I know Commissioner Clark, you want to see it, but our goal this week was to review collaborative maps, and this is not a collaborative map. And we discussed that yesterday with respect to my map, which I said I didn't want to bring up, that it was not collaborative, so we weren't going to review it. So I think we should, you know, we have time on Friday to look at this, and it should be brought as an individual map, but none of us have collaborated on this map. So I have concerns about, I, I certainly don't think it should be presented as a collaborative map and added to our our queue of collaborative maps. Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Widges. Uh, there's no difference with what Anthony's doing than what Dustin did. His was not collaborative. He did it at home and then brought it in. But that's it. not what we did. We took our collaborative map and I asked him to add a district to it, not have Dustin bring his whole map. Go ahead, Commissioner Widges. Well, I, I, let, me, let me finish. One of the alternatives we did collaboratively previously was, and I think this is the direction Anthony's headed, was to bring it out to Muskegon, mm -hmm. uh, District 4. Um, so we have done that portion of it collaboratively. Oh, I, I yield. Commissioner Witches. So I, 
I, I kind of tend to agree. I mean, we, we had a collaborative map with, that had um, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids together. That's, that's a, a true statement. I don't see a difference in Anthony putting, or Commissioner Eid, or um, <laughs> <laughs> putting his overlay on the map and changing that Grand Rapids particular area or the Muskegon area, much like I did. I would say that if he were to go make changes in the Metro Detroit area, at that point, it's no longer a collaborative effort because those changes were made on his own. But if he, if he wants to bring in his map and, and we can change around the West Coast of the state, by all means, that seems good to me. Uh, Commissioner Lang. My question is, is that what Commissioner Vallette wants since it's her turn? I would hate to skip her over her so somebody else can bring their map. Um, I just want to make sure that's okay with her, that that's what she wants to do on her term. Commissioner Vallette, do you have an opinion? Um, yeah, I actually would like to see Anthony's ma'am. Okay. All right, so you're opening up that map. Um, Commissioner Clark, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to see it, but as Dustin said, not the changes in Metro Detroit, just the Western part of the state, because I think that's what we're focused on at this point. Oh, that's what I'm trying to understand. You're, you're wanting it at, opened as a shape file on top of our existing map or? Correct, okay. correct, but, but only deal with the Western part of the okay. state. So then I think Mr. Morgan's question was, um, which, which of our collaborative maps did you want it overlaid on? The one with the witches changes or the one? No, the, the, the first the original one. Original because... one, so the 10, oh, 10 5 2021 20, version one CD. Correct, that, okay. because that's more consistent with what Anthony has done. Okay. And it'd be easier for him to make the changes. Mr. Morgan. Um, if I could ask Commissioner Eid through the chair, um, what is the plan number for the districts, the plan he wants to bring forward? So I don't believe, I didn't see it uploaded to my districtor yet, but it's uploaded to the MIC website, MICRC website. Okay, so I don't have access to that at the moment. So I would have to um, arrange to get that shape file and make sure that it's been processed by the Secretary of State, I think. Um, it has okay, so this is a different plan that I may have received uh, separately, but it's not uploaded to the website yet, so it doesn't have a designator. So do you want me to find that plan from uh, email? Whatever works for you to get it up. Okay. Could you, could you help him with the title? Yeah, just a moment. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Eid, um, in my email, I see something that says uh, Eid Congress Plan V8A and V... Yeah, that would be the one. V8A or V8B? You no, know, they're both pretty much the same. One just has Midland with the Tri-Cities and one has it without. I would prefer we look okay. at VA at this point. Uh, okay. So closer to the collaborative map we were just working on. Okay, I will uh, download that. It'll take a moment. Okay. General Counsel has a comment on this, John, if you could please hold. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Yeah, it is the the posting to the public and in, in that I know during when we were at Oakland University, Commissioner Zatella had a plan that she designed um, with some proposed changes that she wanted to display and the mapping procedures, as well as the, the intent of, and the will of the commission at that time was that it be posted first. And then it was, it was looked at at a subsequent meeting. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that if the commission decides to uh, upload this map in this fashion to address it, 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 it again does not follow the adopted mapping procedures, which requires it to be posted to the public with the plan number and then pulled up in the meeting. So I just wanted to highlight for that for the commission and let them know what they've done in the past when this exact situation has arise. So, so it, was, it is posted to the MICRC website. 
I thought it wasn't on the web. Which one is this, Anthony? What's the plan name, Anthony? Well, I thought he just said it wasn't posted, so it didn't have a plan number. So is it is this a different plan? Um, so okay. to be clear, so if you yeah, on the website under mapping data, it's the the first one, Eid Alternative Congressional Draft Plan 10-5. And it says MICRC Eid Cong Congress Plan V8A. I, I don't see that. It, it's not on the second it's page. The I, second I'm saying page, I do yeah. not believe it's been uploaded to the my Michigan yeah. MyDistricting.com site. Um, in that sense, I would have to upload it into my computer uh, from his email, um, which was sent to me by the executive director. And then I could bring it into auto bound and then I would upload it to the, my districting site. So that's the process that I would generally follow at this point. Well, if we only want to look at the West side of the state, like we could use version two, the difference between version two and version three was simply, um, VRA stuff. So if we don't want to look at that, that's fine. We can look at the other version too. So are you talking about um, 9, 29, 21? You have a 2A and a 2D. Is that what you're talking about? One of those? Yeah, if that's easier, we can use 2A. Okay, so 2A. Sorry, I think uh, 2A is 188 on the website, if anyone's looking at that. Yes, 188. Um, Ms. Reinhardt, I see you have your hand up over there. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to clarify, um, individual commissioner maps um, may be uploaded in two places. Um, the shape file is uploaded um, for the record that the secretary keeps in this location. It is the mapping data page under mapping process on the website. I mean, as you can see, Commissioner Eads plan is posted here. Um, members of the public may also view this particular individual commissioner plans on my districting um, without having to download the individual shape file. Um, while Commissioner Eads plan has not been uploaded yet to my districting, it is publicly available for download at this page. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, General Counsel. Yeah, with that distinction, certainly if it was posted to the website, even though it hasn't been incorporated into my districting, which I think is the, the easier way for the, the public to interact with the data. The initial comment was that it was not posted with a period after posted. <laughs> so thank you for the additional clarification, Ms. Reinhardt. Okay, so um, John ran from the room. <laughs> so I'm not really sure where we're at right now. <laughs> He's like running from the room. Um, so I, <laughs> Mr. Brace, can you jump in and help us out? Just came back in so, so where are we at, General Counsel? Are we are we authorized to open up this shape file that's on the one site but not the other? The, and thank you for that question. It's an excellent question, Madam Chair. So when the mapping process was um, was adopted by the commission, the my district site was not active. So there was only one site where, and that was where the shape files were posted and the public would need to download those shape files into GIS software in order for it to be meaningful. What has occurred since the mapping process document was uh, approved is that the my districting site where uh, has gone live so people can comment on the maps individually. So yes, I, it would be appropriate for, um, for the map that is currently on the MICRC website uh, to be uploaded into the My Districting site so that the commission can move forward in the manner it wanted. And I believe they expressed uh, that they wanted to see the overlay of it onto the plan that uh, is categorized as coming from Commissioner Witches is what my understanding is. Okay, so um, Commissioner Clark. 
I believe it was to be overlaid on the plan that we've completed yesterday. Right. Well, yeah. Man, go, and, go ahead. Oh, and Madam Chair, I, was, I apologize for the interruption. I also did want to uh, extend my apologies to Commissioner Eid. Again, when it was first stated, it was that it was not posted, period. So it was my understanding that it was not on either site. So I'm very happy that it's on the MICRC website. And I'm sure Mr. Morgan has, has rejoined us and he can uh, take the necessary steps so that the commission and the public can, can interact with the map. So um, Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Witches. You're done, Commissioner Witches. All right, so just so I can get this straight through my head now, what it is that we're doing. We're taking the, the collaborative map that we worked on today that we made the VRA changes to and population changes to, overlaying Anthony's map and then working on the west side of the state. Well, I don't know that we're working on anything, but we're looking at we're it. We're looking at it, I sure. mean, it, it's ultimately Janice's turn, right. and if she wants to change things, she can. Uh, so, Mr. Morgan, is that to, to bring you up to speed, we are working off that 10-5-2021 version 1 CD. We're going to bring in the overlay that Commissioner Ede has posted on the second page and put so it... So, that's eight? No, it's not... It is not in the my districting. No, uh, right, but he's referring to it as eight A or eight B. So, Mr. E, do you need to specify? Well, let's use A A because it's closer a. to the collaborative. Okay, I'll bring that up just a moment. Okay, so I'm bringing this up as a shape layer. Okay, okay. Uh, Commissioner Reed, can you see the screen in the Zoom? I can, I can. So the blue lines are the shape file that just got overlaid. Um, you know, I don't know why we're saying this isn't like, I understand I made changes at home on my own, but I did use the original collaborative map we made on our first day of mapping the Congress to do this. You can see District 5 is essentially exactly the same. If you scroll up, District 1 is almost exactly the same. If you scroll down, the, uh, the uh, border district is almost exactly the same. Um, District 8 being there, it just extends out. But so what, what changes do we want to focus on? We said uh, possibly looking at the west side of the state. And I think we, we see those changes there in District 9. Um, it splits Ottawa County, which is unfortunate. And I think that's you know one of the communities of interest that this map is not able to accommodate but it does accommodate what we did, tried to do as a group last week in including Grand Rapids with Muskegon. Uh, and it does it without it looking like a, a robot arm, was <laughs> I think the term used last week. Um, it also has Barry County there included with uh, District 13. Um, that is something that I've heard Commissioner Lang advocate for saying that Barry County in particular wants to be more with uh, those counties north of it. And to do that, 
uh, District 8 just goes all the way across to the, to the border. Um, and those are really the only differences. Oh, Ms. Reinhardt, did you have a comment over there? I do, apologies, I don't want to impede the progress of the commission, but I do just want to clarify quickly um, to Commissioner Eads' point regarding the difference between a collaborative map and an individual commissioner submission. So uh, I think something that'll help clarify is to think about it in a way that the collaborative map, um, what we would consider a collaborative map is a map where all mapping decisions are made in public. So if a commissioner takes the collaborative map and while not in a public meeting makes individual edits to that, it would no longer be a collaborative map. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Gotcha. That makes sense to me. Um, and then if you, if you guys want to look at Metro Detroit, I mean, the only thing it really does is it takes um, Warren out of District 1 that you have there um, and instead includes um, the airport with that district. So it's just one township more on top of Taylor. And then it includes Southfield with District 2 in Dearborn. Um, and, and because you do that, you're able to include Troy with the rest of Oakland County. Um, and uh, as you can see, if you look at the VR, well, we can't see it now, but if you were to look at the VRA numbers, um, they're pretty much exactly the same as what we just made earlier today on the collaborative map. So, John, can you scroll up on the active matrix for us so we can see higher up? Just so we can see districts like one, two, thank you. Okay, and to be clear, um, this is not Commissioner Eads map. This is the current map. With oh, that's right, overlay. so it's not gonna show that. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me of that. Can you zoom in a little bit to the Detroit district for me? So one, two, three, what he's got there. So adjusting one takes out the part of Warren above eight mile and just includes Romulus, which is where the airport is. And to make up that population on two, it goes into Southfield. And then you can see that Oakland County district has most of the townships in Southern Oakland County, including Troy. Commissioner, sure. can you, what I, one of the things that, um, so the district two, one of the th ways I've been trying to conceptualize it for myself is that we've, we've talked about the Arab American community in district two primarily. Um, as just in district one, I think we had a number of communities, um, including the Bengali community and that Yemeni community that was in the sort of Warren Sterling Heights. So that's now in six. And I heard you say that you've added, oh, no, the airport does not include the Yemeni. That's the airport suburb and that did, never mind. So I think I just walked myself through it. I pre, yeah, sorry. Yes, I, I think you got it. Well, what do you mean it doesn't include the Yemeni community? I'm, I'm lost. Sorry, the, the, um, one of the things that um, the Bengali Yemeni community around Hamtramck was asking for was there's a Detroit neighborhood that isn't, that's sort of the, that's east of Hamtramck that is I think the airport. There's there's like Coleman Airport maybe. Yeah, Coleman Young Airport. Yeah, and yeah. so I was confused because Anthony said he added the airport, but that's actually down west of Taylor, right? In mm, District mm -hmm. Two, is that no, true? No, oh, okay, maybe. No, not at all. Um, so the airport in Romulus, which he does not, uh, or he does have, that's, that's Metro Airport. Coleman mm -hmm. A. Young is right next to him, Tramit. Yep. So you're saying the same thing. Yep. And that's what I mean. Yeah, it's like, I, I, they're both in here. Yeah. Yeah. But you also cut out the part of the Bengali community and the Yemeni community that's in Macomb County. That, that, that is true. And uh, that is unfortunate. I, I think that looking at a congressional district, the, the percent of Bengali or Yemeni people in a congressional district isn't really going to matter. Um, I did not look at any sort of election results, but if you wanted to pull it up and look at the election results, I think uh, that is what you would what you would find. Uh, to me, it seems like the Bengalis and Yemenis are more so advocating for a house district than a congressional district because they know their population isn't sufficient to uh, matter, you know, in this case much. 
Commissioner Clark. Yeah, with all due respect, Anthony, uh, why are we revisiting something we did this morning? Why wasn't this brought up this morning when we were making all the adjustments? And they were painful adjustments to figure out. Um, I believe I did bring it up, but we decided to, to, you know, we wanted a few different choices to systematically go through, which I agree with. This is just a choice. Um, you know, and we have we have two choices that are in compliance. I believe this is a third choice that can be in compliance. And uh, yeah, that's not that's just how the meeting went. I don't really know how to answer that the, question. But the second choice that was in compliance or it is, it was Dustin's and we kept Detroit the same in that one. We didn't touch it. Mm -hmm. We made a decision earlier this morning that, well, I'm not sure it was a decision, but collaboratively we decided that uh, a certain configuration for Detroit. And I, I think we should stay with that. Uh, excuse me, if I could just interject briefly. I know we've, we've talked about about this before, but I would just recommend broadly that until the attorneys, as we did with the earlier plans, mm -hmm. vet issues, I would caution against referring to something as compliant or in compliance. Mm -hmm. So with the first two, I completely agree. We went through them. Mm -hmm. You all made a lot of changes and adjustments, but I think that beyond that, I would be cautious about using saying something is in compliance or compliant thank you yeah i just i, I also am wondering because you said you didn't and maybe i just misunderstood you that you didn't look at election results but my understanding was this from this map of what you've previously indicated is that you did look at election results and you tried to make this as close to what you're you're referring to as zero on the partisan fairness as possible so i'm just um wondering so my understanding is there's a difference between election results and putting the map into plan score to generate the numbers of partisan fairness, which I did do in order because we didn't have the tool yet. But what I looked at there was efficiency gap, mean median difference. Uh, they did not have lopsided margins test on that website. But that, I mean, that's the website our, uh, you know, Dr. Emily told us we could use. Um, if we wanted to run the plan using our tool now that we have it, I'd be in support of it. Um, but I did not look at any election results in, in the fashion, for example, like how Mr. Adelson looks at election results when we're configuring the VRA districts. Um, we have Secretary of State and then Commissioner Weiss. Thank you. Um, so per your rules of um, your mapping procedure, um, I believe that you all are currently still in step one of deliberations, which is making adjustments to collaborative maps um, to ensure compliance. Um, step two, um, or I should just say later steps, um, would involve the presentation of individual commissioner maps um, that commissioners want to propose are carried forth into public hearings. Um, so as the, the, for the presentation of Commissioner Eads map, should you wish to um, carry this forth into public hearings for consideration of the public, um, that would be the appropriate time to present um, those figures. Um, or conversely, if the commission collectively chooses to incorporate features of Commissioner Eads map into your collaborative map, now would be the appropriate time to do that. Um, but regarding presentation of this map to the commission, um, I, would, I would suggest waiting until um, later phases of deliberation. Thank you. I Thank you, Ms. A, a quick, I just have a quick question about the process. Let's say I intend to take this, you know, to the next phase, right? Just as an option, uh, you know, to be looked at, I'm not saying it's, uh, it's what we're going to choose, but an option. When would be the appropriate time to figure out if it is compliant in the same fashion that we just did for Dustin's map? Because I feel like that's a, we did exactly the same thing for that configuration. 
I would encourage you to um, contact the consultants um, to coordinate with them for um, examination of your proposed plans. Um, and I think general counsel has more to say on this. Yes, next. general counsel. Actually, and if it's not the appropriate time to flip, I, I, need, uh, I need something clarified. Um, what I noted for what Commissioner Ede said, and I don't want to misinterpret, misinterpret or mishear or misstate, so I need, I need the clarification from Commissioner Ede. I heard you did look at election results, but you didn't put it into plan score. And I just needed clarification on that statement. If, if I captured, can you clarify that, Commissioner Ian? Yeah, no. What I said was I did not look at election results, but I did put it in plan score before we had our own internal to tools available to look only at the measures of partisan fairness that we're using now. Just to get an idea of if it was, you know, okay or not. Through the chair to Commissioner Ede, thank you so much. I, I, again, I just needed that clarification. So the, the plan score, and I know we've talked about this before, and this doesn't address the issue of alternative maps or that, but plan score is only based off the 2020 pres presidential re results. That's the, pre that's the only election data in that predictive model. Um, and the, as Dr. Hanley had indicated, that you never want to use just one election result unless you have to or have good reason. Um, so the the partisan fairness measures and the the software from your consultant has that composite score of thirteen weighted elections. So it's it's far superior um, to plan score. Thank you, and thank you for the clarification, Commissioner Ede. I very much appreciate it, Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I. Um... I suggest that because of the large number of changes that have been made outside this group, that this be moved off to a um, category of a, an individual map that's presented at the at the public hearings and that it's not a collaborative map out of this group. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. I agree with that assessment. Um, and just to be clear, I, I just want to clarify that what happened with Dustin this morning was um, it was my turn. And we had worked on the map and made it compliant or attempt to make it compliant or try to reach compliance. I'm not saying it's compliant, but we worked on our VRA. We worked on our population balances. And then it was my turn. We ran the partisan fairness on it. And there were some concerns there. And so my suggestion was having previously viewed the map that was drafted by Commissioner Witches in one of our collaborative sessions, by the way, um, to suggest to redraw the map and create an alternate that included the, the configuration of Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo together during our meeting on the public record in front of everybody. So at that point, that map is a collaborative map because we're working off our collaborative map and I'm just incorporating ideas, which I asked Commissioner Witches to lead. So it was not Commissioner Witches working on his own at any point, honestly, with that Grand Rapids Kalamazoo district because he drew that in one of our public meetings and I just asked him to incorporate it in our map so we could reevaluate partisan fairness. So it was not an individual map. And I think that's the distinction there is that um, this is an individual map that Commissioner Ede worked on. And like I have as well, I have several individual maps that I've submitted, but we are at the point where we're dealing with collaborative maps. And that's the point right now. Commissioner Lett. I don't disagree with that, but quite frankly, we invited Anthony to present this map to us today. Commissioner Vallette was asked directly, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to see Anthony's map. And that's what we did. Now, if we want to uh, move on and say, Anthony, you can submit this as your own map, uh, that's fine. But I, I, get, I, I guess I'm feeling that we're kind of dissing Anthony when we ask him to present this. And that's not fair. Well, that's not what we did with, with uh, Dustin. In fairness, we did discourage it <laughs> so, um, because it doesn't follow our process. But as a, as a, um, 
a nod to Commissioner Clark who wanted to look at it. We did allow it to proceed, but it's it's not our process. So if Commissioner Clark is now saying who is the person who has to have it brought and then followed by Janice that um, you want to move on, then it's time to move on. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I feel we want to move on. I, I think there's too many changes here uh, because we were focusing in on a Western Michigan standpoint. And I, and I know Anthony had, had looked at bringing Muskegon in with Grand Rapids only. Uh, I, I mean, previously, uh, we had done that a couple times. I think Cynthia originated it and Anthony put a, a different flavor on it at some point in time. But this got too complex, particularly over in the, the changes in the Detroit region, too complex and not done collaboratively. We had previously talked as a group about Muskegon. And we had previously gotten Bruce's opinions on using Muskegon. So I would, I would like to have this brought in as an individual map into the public hearings. And um, unfortunately, I, it got too, too complex for, for me from what I saw from the, as far as the changes that took place. Commissioner Witches. <clears throat> well, I mean, I... I think it would still be appropriate for us to fill in the at least west side of the state. Let's not let's not make any change. Put put a pretend that the, the Detroit area to the thumb and north doesn't exist for a couple seconds. We're just dealing with the west side of this particular state. We can make those changes in following the blue lines that are west of Lansing. To at least make changes to the west. Bring thirteen down. Change. Grand Rapids, change nine, and then maybe tweak something in eight. And then we have a collaborative map yep. with with his particular changes I, only on the west side. But I do not want to see Detroit changed here. That's way too complicated. So I agree with you, Commissioner Witches, and we absolutely can do that. We can create now a third version, which would be AE, I think, I'm using our notations. Um, actually, it looks like you did do that already. Mr. Morgan. Well, uh, that's what you're contemplating was to make changes to this mm -hmm. before so, this discussion. Um, Commissioner Vallette, if that was, if you would like to use your turn to do that, you're welcome to do though to focus on the left side. We can certainly do that, and then, as Commissioner Witches rightly points out, then it would be a collaborative map. Anthony has his hand up. Let's hear from him. First. Commissioner Ede, and then Commissioner Lang. Oh uh, well, you know, I just want to say I don't take any of this this personally. So, so, you know, don't worry about my feelings or anything and none of it's personal. I mean, I could, you know, I, I could submit this as an individual map. I don't really think it matters. A map's a map. I just wanted to make sure that at some point I'm able to review with it, if it is compliant or not with our experts, um, you know, especially for those VRA reasons. Um, and I just want to say, you know, thank you, general counsel. I, I agree. The tool that we now have available is much better. And uh, uh, Dr. Hanley ran, um, ran that on Friday for this. Uh, and I do agree that is a much better result because it takes 10 whole years of elections rather than just what plan score uses. I just used that in the meantime because we did not yet have that tool available to us. And Commissioner Ede, I would encourage you to um, contact the consultants and coordinate review of the compliance of your map with them. As I mentioned during the um, presentation of the deliberation process, it is appropriate for individual commissioners to do that and to coordinate that outside the public meeting. Thank you. Uh, so Commissioner Lang and then Commissioner Weiss. I'm probably going to have an unpopular opinion, but that's okay. I'm just curious, we keep saying collaborative, collaborative. So if a commissioner that hasn't submitted a set of maps yet submits a set of maps tonight that has perhaps some districts on here that are the same as what has been drawn already, are we gonna consider those collaborative and go through every single one and, and to present or should we just leave them at an individual's maps that can be submitted? I feel like, Right now, we're wasting a lot of time and not getting through the maps that we need to, the collaborative that everybody drew together. I just feel like we're going to run ourselves out of time again. Just Thank you, Commissioner. Opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> um, so, Commissioner Weiss, and then I think we're going to go back to 
Ms. Follett. Commissioner Reed, uh, since all the discussion about your map, now I'm curious, what was your planned deviation on your map? Uh, it was, I, I did not go, let me look it up. Hold on. Um, I believe it was 0 0.57. However, I didn't painstakingly try to make it zero uh, like you guys did this morning on some of the maps yet. But Thank you. Just, just the base is 0 0.57. It could easily be made closer to zero just as y'all did this morning. I was actually, you know, if we did overlay it, I was hoping Dustin could help with that because he seems to be very good at it. Thanks. So, Commissioner Vallette, um, are you interested in redrawing yes, I, west? I would like to do what Dustin suggested. Okay. Let's look at the west side of this map. So, um, Mr. Morgan, I believe you've already created an alternate version. So, can you, um, following the west side of Lansing, start reassigning those areas following the shape file from Mr. Ede's map? Okay, so uh, in order to do that, we're looking primarily at District 4 in Grand Rapids, District 9. And then it also looks like it'll affect eight and five and 13. Yes. Yes. And in the interest of efficiency, because it's 1234, can you just do that without us telling you each individual township? Can you just move it along? So put, yeah. We're all watching you do it. So we, we know what you're doing. We don't need to tell you every single township. And uh, Commissioner Lang, um, I just want to be responsive to your question that you posed regarding whether a individual commissioner who edited a collaborative map outside of a public meeting um, then brought that map back to the commission, if that would be considered a collaborative map. And the answer is no. Um, any map that is edited by an individual commissioner outside of a public meeting um, would be considered an individual map, um, not a collaborative map. Is that responsive? That's fine. Yes. Commissioner Eat, is your hand up to make a comment? Okay, um, so at this point, I'm focusing on four and nine first, mm -hmm. and then the surrounding districts, eight, 13, and five will be affected in some way. And what I would like to say is um, you probably would, it would probably be a good idea to direct me to stop after I've adjusted four and nine primarily, okay. because the changes in the other areas may be substantial, um, because Commissioner Eads' configurations are a little different than what you have okay. here. So can you put that into eight, that area of nine? Uh, yeah, I, I will. I just, yeah. I want to get four, four um, and nine closer. 
going in uh, to the district with uh, uh, District 9 with Kalamazoo and Holland mm -hmm. and um, Benton Harbor. Okay, so this is where uh, um, I, I'm, I'm going to undo that last move because you, in order to put this, you're affecting so many districts mm -hmm. here. Um, let me just try to get four and nine close to where they are and then uh, bring it back to you for reevaluation. So for example, District 8 is already overpopulated before we put those townships in. And that has to do with something related to the Detroit metro area. Oh, I see. Also up here, this may this may fix that. Just one moment. Okay. Okay, now I'll do the move uh, down in District 8 here. Okay. And now that would go in 13. Hmm. Okay, so at this point, primarily focusing on four and nine, four is within 4,600, and then nine is over by 1,370 as drawn, but district five and 13 are um, something between those two would probably uh, reconcile that closer to zero population. They're off by 52 and 40,000 at this point. There's a, a little part of the area in between four and nine, like right yeah, right where you were. Yeah, right there. Thank you. The line goes off a little bit. All right, I'll make that adjustment between four and nine. Okay, and that brings uh, four to twelve hundred under, and nine to twenty one hundred under, and it basically follows the configurations. And then I just point out that five and thirteen, thirteen is overpopulated, so uh, it might give to five directly to resolve that. Jim
Well, I'm I'm really not certain. Um, does anybody have any comments on this, Commissioner Richards? So I would uh, no. <laughs> Um, I, I see him. So can you zoom into the area between three and five? I'm just trying to understand where the lines are there. Okay. So moving towards Metro Detroit, yep, just right there. I just, so, okay. All right. Um, okay. Zoom back out. Commissioner Ede. Yeah. I mean, y'all said you wanted to see the Western part of the state. That's how, that's how it looked with Barry with, Ionia and Montcalm and Gratchet. And like I said earlier, you have the city of Grand Rapids proper with part of Ottawa, part of Muskegon, which is what we were trying to do last week, but not make it look like a robot arm. And I think that that achieves it. Um, and then basically instead of Commissioner Witch's configuration, which, which again was a very good configuration and I, I like that configuration. This is just a different one. Just has Kalamazoo with Battle Creek instead. Uh, and it also includes the, the rest of the lakeshore as well. Commissioner Witches. Okay, so I, I thought about potential changes between five and 13 here. Um, my suggestion would be either to take, a f well, a few counties from Barrie, but I know what, Barry stated in regards to where they believe they should belong. Um, one other place that you can do since it's already cut up just for now to see where we go is the little part of um, north of Shiawassee so we can make what looks like a birthday cake, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, so you're proposing just taking from taking, 13 and putting it Taking from 13 five. and putting it into 5 okay. for right now. Or parts of Barry. I mean, I, I see the, the, the Barry um, wanting to associate with North. However, Barry County stretching that far North seems a little bit of a stretch to me. Eaton County, uh, Clinton, Ingham, they're all rural as well, for the most part, minus Lansing naturally. So adding it into directly into district five or majority of Barry into district five seems like it would be a fair way to go about doing that. So adding which in? Berry. Berry, like part of it? Part or of all? it or almost all of it or okay. the bottom half, some of it into Berry or. All right, we'll direct him to do so and then we can run an analysis okay, so, it once it's better balanced. Sorry, Unless you don't want to do that. Commissioner what are we doing? He's, he, so we've got a difference of 40, District 5 is $40,000 under, $40,000. Um, and District 13 is 52,000 over. So he's just proposing a quick fix to, to balance those two. So it'll be closer so we can run a partisan analysis. Okay, he can do that. And then I have a comment after. Uh, so I took all of Barry. So you might look at either taking some of that back or looking at Clinton, which is on the border as well. Well, we could take the top. Let's take the top couple. Uh, yeah, right there. I'll put that back into 13. Okay, so you have uh, eight and nine are collectively 11,000 under and five, which is here is over. So again, eight and nine, nine are under and five is over. So let's take the uh, five is over. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know where, to, where to uh, change the population. Anthony might have a better idea. Yeah. So, Commissioner Vallette, you had a comment. Um, yeah, it was my intention just to look at this for the west side of the state. Um, it's my understanding that we are not going to use this because we do not consider it a collaborate map. Is that correct? 
Okay. Well, I think at this point it is becoming collaborative, but um, it has not gone through the rest of the analysis that we did this morning. So um, we can continue to adjust it or we're, you know, we're almost at lunch. We can run the partisan analysis, which I think was kind of the point to give an alternative and see if we want to continue working on it. Um, Commissioner Wichos. Yeah, that's that's a good suggestion. Run the run the partisan fairness and compactness tests here right now because the changes that we're going to make are not going to really change the configuration all that much. If we're working with population, it might might add or remove a, a township or a precinct, but that's about it. It's not like we're going to be deviating from the actual plan here very much. So I think it would be appropriate to run the analysis. Uh, on uh, the compactness and also the political fairness at this particular point, if everyone agrees. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Commissioner Vallette is instructing you, so. Okay, so um, save this plan as is. Yep. All right, are we ready to go? See what we got here. Yeah, just, just a moment. What froze again? <laughs> um, it, it's the windows at the moment. Okay. Oh no, there we go. Okay, these are the numbers. Okay, so lopsided margin, 6.9. Can we see the mean median? 2.8, Republican leaning. Can we see the efficiency gap? Uh, we can't see it with the Zoom bar, Department of State. Oh. Yeah, okay. Efficiency gap is 8.5%. And then the seats votes ratio is um, six Dem, seven Republican, with a bias of 6.2 negative for Dem, positive for Republican. Okay, all right. Um, all right, and what are the district numbers that we just changed? Can you tell me really quick, John? I thought it was like nine, sure. um, four. There was a change primarily in four and nine. Four, nine 13, Thirteen was affected. Five was affected. Eight was affected. Five was affected. Eight was affected. Okay, can we go back to the um, either seats, votes, or lopsided, either one? So, so five, which is Lansing, is now 50.1 Democratic. Four is now 50.1 Republican. So those are swings. Um, eight is 59.2. And then nine, 44, and 13, 60. Okay. All right. Um, so just for comparison purposes, because I wrote this down for everybody else, the very first map we worked on without, without Dustin Witches's changes, um, was lopsided ratio of 7.0 leaning Republican. The second map was 4.0, also leaning Republican. This map is 6.9. Um, so on those standards, the best performing maps was the Witches map. Mean median, the original map was 3.5 leaning Republican. The Witches map was 2.4 leaning Republican. <clears throat> this map is 2.8 leaning Republican, so a little better than our original map, but not performing as well as the Witches map. Um, efficiency gap, the first map was 8.7% Republican. 
the witches map is 1.3 Republican. This map is 8.5 Republican. So again, a slight improvement over the first map, but not as much as the witches map. And then the last one is the seat vote ratio. Um, the original map was six Democrats to seven Republicans with a bias of negative 6.2 against Democrats, positive 6.2 for Republicans. The witches map was a balance of six Dems, seven Republicans, so it flipped the balance with a positive 1.5 for Dems, a negative 1.5 for Republicans. And um, Eads map is exactly the same as our other map. It's, it's the negative 6.2, six Democratic seats, seven Republican seats. Commissioner Eads. Yeah, you know, so this is a little surprising because when Lisa did the analysis, I'm oh, sorry, when Dr. Hanley ran the, the, that the whole map with all of the changes, not just the ones on the west side, the numbers were significantly better. I don't know if anyone has them on hand. I, I do, uh, if you need them. The efficiency gap was 0 0.5. The uh, partisan that the seat vote ratio was uh, seven to six, much like Commissioner Witch's map. The mean median difference was 2.3, much like Commissioner Witch's map. And the lopsided margin test was 4%, which is exactly the same as Commissioner Witch's map. So I thought Lisa Hanley ran a different map though. Isn't this map a new map that you had just submitted? I, I'm a little confused. Um, well, the only difference between um, the one that Lisa Hanley ran on Friday and this one, um, well, I mean, so are you talking about the overlay or are you talking about this actual map that's being looked at? Because No, I'm talking about the numbers you just read off for, for a map that Lisa Hanley ran last week, but my understanding was you just created this map, which is why it wasn't posted yet. So it's a new map. Well, you got, well, you guys... Else. You guys didn't make all the changes. You just made some of the changes on the west side of the state. Right. But I'm just saying, comparing it to what Dr. Hanley said, those numbers may not be accurate because she didn't run this, your shapefile map, right? Is that accurate? She ran the, the whole shapefile map that you have overlaid on top of this map. If you were to open that map and, and run that, um, then you, you would get different numbers. These numbers are different because we only reconciled some of the overlaid districts uh, into what we were doing. Uh, Ms. Reinhardt and then Mr. Morgan, and then I think Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Widget. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Ede, I appreciate um, I appreciate what you were saying about the differences between um, your map and the scores versus the collaborative map. Um, but I would again remind you and the commission that presentation of individual maps, including scores of partisan fairness and other considerations are scheduled for later this week. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morgan and then Mr. Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Witches. Um, yeah, I think uh, Dr. Henley, while she was here, we did run another plan, it might have been Commissioner Eads 2A or 2B, mm -hmm. but That's it wouldn't have been this 8B that we just received. That's now. what I thought. It was, it was, it was not the same map. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what those changes are, Commissioner Eade, but um, it was just a different map. So Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I want to get away from the numbers for a sec and ask Mr. Adelson. We looked at Muskingum and Grand Rapids attached before. And but it was a much narrower type of um, path to Muskegon. Now it's much wider, and it gives a different perception. Do you feel that that's more acceptable, or this one is acceptable? Uh, well, Commissioner Clark, let me address that with the, the the point about the the robot arm, for want of a better term. If you're reaching out from a proposed district or area to another area with a, a, a rather thin geographic reach. And the predominant reason is for based on race, that you're trying to capture a community that is majority or uh, minority or plurality minority, then yeah, I would be 
concerned about that. So this, you're right that this does look different, but the whole issue of the explanation, justification of, you know, what's the reason for doing that? If the reason is to capture, <clears throat> excuse me, a substantial minority community, then that would uh, concern me. Okay, I, it doesn't matter how, how wide it, 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 we're, uh, we're reaching out. I know we are reaching out. Right, and to yeah. your point, I think that the, the, the um, districting plans that the courts have rejected, uh, going back quite a few de decades, all have these really weird shaped right. lines. And often the weirder the line, the narrower the line is to gerrymander, whether it's partisan or racial. So that's something that that I was schooled with by the Attorney General of the United States a long time ago, that those are things yeah. that jump right off the page okay. and present concerns. And it's given, given what you just said, I mean, I find this then unacceptable because we're just going to get ourselves into a legal bind. Um, the way we dealt with Grand Rapids and Muskingum, unacceptable. So I I don't support this either because of because of what uh, Mr. Adelson said. So um, Commissioner Witches, did you still have a comment, or can we go on to Commissioner Orton? Go on. Okay, Commissioner Orton. Well, I just think um, maybe Mr. Adelson can look at this, but looking at the numbers, um, trying to we originally tried to put Muskegon with Grand Rapids, thinking of the minority community, but the minority numbers aren't high enough to have an impact, it mm -hmm. seems. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Orton, that's a good point. I think that the um, often, and, and in just looking at the map, it seems that Muskegon was split. So that may be a, a reason. There may be uh, parts of the district that have dilutive potential, but it does, what does stand out for me is the city of Muskegon seems to be split. And as we've talked about, often when you're splitting a community that has uh, a plurality or substantial minority community, if you cut it in half, then you have, you're splitting, cracking, reducing uh, the minority community and potentially a reducing minority voting strength. So that could be one explanation for why the district presents as it does in population. Commissioner Villette. Um, I just wanted to say, I wanted to look at the west side of the state to see if he had better options. Frankly, I don't think that they are. I mean, we looked at the shoreline on, on Dustin's and we thought it was too wide and this is way wider than that. Um, I, I just, unless someone disagrees with me, I think that we should just move on. And um, I, think Anthony should tweak his map and submit it on his own. I, I concur with that. I'm um, seeing lots of nods around the room, Mr. Morgan. Um, for the sake of completeness, you did ask me to run the compactness. Do you want me to run it on this um, or are you moving not on? Not at this time. Okay, I think you. it's it's one o'clock. We're, we're, I think we're going to break for lunch without objections. Um, we're going to take a recess for 60 minutes, Mr. Morgan. Sorry, and I was asked to <laughs> upload two plans at this point. So yes. I'm going to upload yes, the one, the collaborative plan, and then the collaborative plan with uh, Commissioner Witches' changes in Western Yes, Michigan. please. Commissioner Orton. I think we should run the compactness. Just It's only going to take a couple minutes, and then we will have run all, all right. the things to see. Fire away. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it generated the report. I just need to save it in uh, PDF form. And again, this is gonna be the base map with AE in the West. Okay, and here are the numbers. So uh, district one is the least compact at 0.24 on Polesby Popper, and District 2 is the most compact um, at 0.53. So that's basically the same mm -hmm. number. Yeah. All right. Um, so now, without objection. Oh, no, Mr. Morgan. Two, two maps, important. not three, right? Two maps. Thank yes, you. Two maps. Um, Mr. Moore, or, uh, without objections, we're going to take a recess for 60 minutes. Um, it's currently 1.03 p.m. 
Hearing no objections, we will recess to 2.05 p.m. Thank you, everybody.
session, I recall this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission back to order at 2.05. Five of you are waiting to spend one hour. Are we good? All right, call the meeting back to order at 2.05 p.m. Will the secretary please take the roll? Absolutely. Commissioners, please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose that you are attending remotely during roll call as well as your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. Present. Juanita Curry. Present and attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. Brittany Callum. Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lutt. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. Present. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. 11 commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Okay, at this point, we're gonna continue with what we've been working on all morning, which is agenda item 5A, continue compliance assessment of state Senate, congressional and house maps. Um, it's my understanding that we have a request to move back to that first congressional map and rebalance districts to make sure they're as close as possible. Is that accurate? Commissioner Lett? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to go back to our first congressional plan, 10 5 2021 v one cd and adjust the, the districts to eliminate any, any discrepancies in population? I was told by someone you wanted to do that. So if that's not accurate, then that's fine. It wasn't me. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, who did that? Um, I don't know that I want to uh, do anything with the populations. I think we can uh, examine it to see if we can get the partisan fairness more uh, closer. In other words, okay. as Dr. Hanley has said, lower is better. And, and we had some that might be considered a little higher. Okay. So you want to go back to that first congressional plan and see if we can adjust for partisan fairness. Sure. Okay. So, um, all right, uh, John, Chair, I'm sorry, General Counsel? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, relative to that, it is my understanding that Dr. Handley is available later on today to speak to the commission on partners and fairness. And so the commission might want to wait until after that presentation and that additional information is given to uh, move forward with, with congressional um, or, or any partisan fairness uh, work on the maps already already looked at. So in light of that, Commissioner Lett, do you want to proceed or do you want to wait till after Dr. Hanley has a chance to speak to us? Well, my preference would be to proceed. However, I will defer to our esteemed general counsel. <laughs> and uh, I said that with a sneer. Um, so uh, having done that, unless somebody wants to stick with congressional, we might as well move on to the house. Uh, Commissioner Orton. Well, I'm just wondering if we wait to talk about that, <clears throat> isn't that the next step for all of them? So what would we be moving on to then? We haven't done the house maps yet. But what are we doing on the house maps? We're gonna do the same thing we did this. So start so again with- Start again with BRA. population, BRA. Okay. And then move on down the line. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we will move on to the house map at this point. So I believe we only have one, unless I am misunderstanding. Um, so, John, if we can bring up the last house map that we worked on, which is 194, and we can rename it and start making revisions from there. Okay, so from the website, it's 194. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a moment. And then I believe um, Commissioner Wagner was gonna pass today. So we're gonna move on to you, Commissioner Weiss. <laughs>
Okay, I'm just bringing the plan across. Uh, time for sports commentator again. <laughs> And uh, we'll rename this with today's date. Is that the yes. procedure? Yeah, okay. and just use the naming convention that we use. Okay, I'm just confirming that this seems to be the plan that uh, you want. Yep, that's the last one. Okay. So are we just going to follow the same process we did before with going down district by district, looking at VRA? Um, so, Commissioner Weiss, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> um, looks like our first one could be an issue. Well, number one looks fairly good, if I'm correct, 37.46. That's not so bad. But I see number two is a little high. And let's see, John, maybe could you scroll into one and two? Looks like we could maybe swap some stuff out here, maybe. <clears throat> Maybe bring up some uh, population totals, maybe take the uh, 
matrix down a little bit. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna add the population on for the, uh, the voting precincts. Commissioner Weiss, what I remember uh, District 1 was that there was a, um, a relatively um, high Hispanic population and also another community of interest that was um, um, that identified as 48217. Um, I don't think there's a, uh, any, I don't think there's a theme there in that one, but I remember that's why number one was drawn the way it was. So I guess the, if you're gonna get, a, if you're looking for the dots, like the Hispanic theme may be the, the, right, the right one to look at. Okay. When you're adjusting. John, could you do that, please? So you want the Hispanic population? Yes. Okay. Okay, so this is the Hispanic theme. Okay, thank you. Um, can you bring up some population totals, I guess? I'm looking at maybe up in the upper corner there of two, where it goes just above one. But I don't know if there's too many in there that... Let's take <laughs> It looks like you're pretty safe to take off of the northern part of that district one. Well, Commissioner Orton. Well, I'm just wondering, you're trying to bring down the non-Hispanic black voting age population a little bit, right? To get it in good balance. So maybe the African-American dots would help to see if there's anywhere to pull from. That's yes, John, that. could you do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this theme is on the African American voting age population. Cynthia, you have any thoughts? Yeah. It all seems yeah. pretty much the same, mm -hmm. equal. Could be tricky, Richard. Yes, <laughs> that's why I'm asking you for help. You want my eraser? Four, four is overpopulated, and then, and then so further south towards the river, uh, one and four touch in that Detroit area, yes. in that downtown Detroit area. Oh, I guess there's, yeah, I'm looking at the 1588. Oh, no, I guess I just didn't see the dot. So I'm looking right where one and four meet. But I, yeah, I think that dot there. Um, so just to be clear, you're trying to increase the African-American population in one and reduce it in two. Is that what I'm understanding you're trying to do? Yes, at least okay. that's what I'm thinking. Any suggestions, chairperson? So can you take two up above where one is, right where Richard was originally? Well, 
and I'm, I'm wondering, yeah. So what are the percentages like well, in 1065? Yeah. 91%. Want, so go ahead, Commissioner. Robert. I just want to get a read on Mr. Adelson, because I think we do have a significant Hispanic population here that is within sort of the threshold of 40, 35 to 40%. And so I'm wondering if there is reason to sort of say we can justify number one as it is, um, specifically because of the high Hispanic population, I guess, or, or do we need to focus on the non-Hispanic black in this situation? But to your point, Commissioner Rothhorn, the uh, Hispanic population, both overall and VAP are 40-ish. But remember, we don't have, Dr. Hanley's analysis mm -hmm. did not cover the Hispanic population. So we're still awaiting the voting pattern analysis. So I think that the, the um, as I recall, we'll be, we'll be checking this as well. The election results are, are good in this district, but because our racially polarized voting analysis did not focus on the Hispanic population, uh, I'm uh, reluctant to make changes that might negatively affect that just because we don't have data on uh, voting patterns and cohesion among different groups. So my, my advice for now is to leave the Hispanic population as it is. And the I think the diversification across the numbers in this district appears to be good. As I said, the election results, as I recall, are also good and we'll be checking them. I think that the moving if to district two and making some adjustments there, I think that that would be my recommendation. Richard, so if you, just being familiar with this area of Detroit, if you take population from two up at the top and put it into one, you're adding more African-American into one. And if you go down where there's the junction of one, two, and four, those few precincts right along there are kind of the downtown area, and they tend to have a predominantly white population. So that might enable you to balance it if you try to take up top and then take at the bottom. All right. I'd like some suggestions from you since it's kind of your area. So I would try that 1323, 1464, 1065, put them into one. All right. John? Uh, yes. Uh, did you want the neighborhoods on or not yet? Not, no. Okay. Because we're looking at VRA, so no. Let me write this down. So we're at 37.46 and then 40. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then go scroll up a little bit so we can see down at that junction. So I would say the 1191, 616, and 167 should bring the numbers the opposite way. All right, that worked a little bit. So now we're at 39.9 and 43.9. Is that a little better? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I also want to make a comment about the plan deviation. Remember, this is a legislative map, so you have a little more leeway. The, the deviation over 9.3 9 is something that we should also aspire to, to bring down, but it's not the same as the congression where you have virtually no margin for error and the core Supreme Court has approved uh, legislative plans with deviations in this area, but I still recommend bringing it uh, lower as we progress through the hospital. Okay, Commissioner Rothorn, you wanna go ahead? Are you satisfied with that? I like it, it's a lot better than it yeah. was, but I guess as long as it looks like it's okay, I would say yes. I would be finished. All right. You sure you don't want to do another district? <laughs> you did such a good job with that one. You know, I might be pushing it. <laughs> All right, so then I think the next one to focus on is District 4, and Commissioner Witches, we will put that to you. Okay, we'll follow the same logic then. 
Well, actually, just kidding, because that downtown's already in District Four. So, I would imagine we'd have to go north, correct? Well, we got to take some away too. So, hmm. Well, we could expand District 10 into District 4 and then move District 4 to include some more of the points, I suppose. Any thoughts on that? So expand District 10 to go where? To like bring... bring um, the diagonal line at District 10, if we expand that to go further towards Canada, I guess would be the easiest way to describe <laughs> that. Um, right, yep, yeah, that would take some of the non-Hispanic Black population out. And then if we were to expand north in the points, we should be able to get the non-Hispanic black voting population down. So let's try that. So let's do 1029. Okay, in, into district 10. Yep. 635 and 1177. So now 10 is that there, okay, four. Oh, thank you. Let's grab the 805 as well, just for some good measure. And now let's go north towards the points. And let's grab what district is that? Right there, correct. Let's put that into four for now. The entire township? Um, sure. That was quite a bit of people. So, would it be more beneficial to remove back from the point area or move 10 down into four at this point? I mean, I think you have the right idea by growing into Gross Point, Gross Point um, Woods. I just think maybe that might be too much population, but um, I don't know. I think that's the right way to go. Mm -hmm. I just think you probably need to chip off farther with 10, bring 10 more in. To, to expand 10 in the direction that I was going? Yeah. Right, yeah. So I think that will help. Let's do that. So... But where? Um, Scroll uh, north, that particular area where you just clicked on the on the dots, um, right there. So exactly. Let's take those out for or add those into ten. Seven ninety nine, ten seventy nine, thirteen eleven, and twelve forty two. And let's just bring it right back on down. 
So five thousand over. Let's do the yeah, you got right there. there yeah. The one eighty nine, nine eighty one, eight sixty six, and twelve forty one. And then you should be pretty close to being in compliance, I think. That's fine for now. Thirty nine point three seven non Hispanic black. Yeah. Um, Isn't it forty eight point eight seven for ten? Or which one are you reading? I'm looking at District Four. four District Four. Yeah. Okay. That brought it down quite a bit. Yeah, from fifty three point mm -hmm. two. Commissioner Orton. I'm not positive what these numbers were before, but now it seems like we have three districts that are really high. Like I feel like we're maybe going the wrong direction. I do have the I do have the numbers recorded for District Four, and it was for non Hispanic Black it was fifty three point two four. But it seems like six, uh, nine, and ten are all now pretty high. Well, that's going to, wouldn't yeah. that just happen because of how we're adjusting? At this yeah. And point? we, with 10 and six, we have room to go north. So I think it's okay. And these, and some of them were high to begin with. So I, I think we have room to go north with the rest of those because they kind of lead out of Detroit, whereas four and two and one are really squarely in Detroit. So. It's definitely an improvement. Uh, where was District Six at? Six was at forty-eight point. No, no, no. On the I map, think it's I right next to. It. I think it's that, that green, green one. Yeah. Well, let's add. Let's try to fix the population here. Let's add a couple. Let's add that 709, 1495, 657, and fourteen ten into six. And I was going to skew the. Okay. So now six needs to expand north. Or into the gross points or east. Well, wouldn't the gross points wouldn't that um, that would just undo undo the did. district yeah. four? Okay. Yes, it would. I apologize. I mean, no, I mean it's a that's an that's an option as district four is below 40 percent mm -hmm. is dr adels in the 40 percent sweet spot still apply yeah i think that uh, as we talked about yesterday i think providing some leeway a little cushion here i think i think that's important okay so let's let's try to increase <laughs> district four on the non-hispanic black side slightly by adding some of the gross points back into district six but we might have to do that on the block level i would imagine or precincts like that 2202 let's add that in to six and 2396 and 2800 let's do both of those Yeah, but see now that's going to be undoing four. <clears throat> Undo what we just did. I don't like the way that looks. Commissioner Weiss. Dustin, down at the bottom of 10, um, we, I think, added into four. John, could you scroll down near the bottom of the 10 district? Right there, that little blip area right there. 
Would that help if we put that back into four? Where? I must From be. 10 into four. Yeah, right there where John's got oh, his cursor. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, sure, we give it a shot. The 1177? Yes, sir. Into four? Sure. Your magic eraser of any other suggestions there, uh, Commissioner Weiss? All right, let me think. I see we're 10 butts up in the district six. No, oh, it's going to be. Doesn't it go up farther north, westerly it, too? It, it does, but I'm trying to adjust 10 because 10 has too many at this particular point. Oh, okay. And then six is underpopulated. So, mm -hmm. yes. So let's grab the 981, 866, 1241, and the 777 and put that into District 6 for right now, please. And the 1279, I apologize. That strip. Did you want the 981? Yep, uh, yes, please. And we'll grab the 333, 992, 1242, 1242. The 333. Commissioner yes, Clark. Yes, please. Yes, we're going in this direction. Uh, District 6 is now up to 61%. Well, that... I, I need to. As, as you take from 10 and add to six, it keeps going up. Correct. Yes. But now I need, don't, now I can, now I have more room to go up and add more into six on the north side. Yep. So let's go do that. <clears throat> Okay, so it looks like it's going to have to go into District 34. And I suppose we're just going to have to keep adding going north. So the, those, let's try those two at the bottom there, 27, 36, 31, 19.
So I got to go back and ship to District 10 again anyway. So let's add the next three St. Clair Shores, 1130, uh, 3359, that line, got it. And we'll go back down to District 10 in a second. And then we have to take population away. This uh, 3201 is uh, these two pieces. Okay, so let's add 1242 and just to square that off. All right, then we have to go back down to Detroit. And let's see, so 10 is good on population, 11 is on, we can add more to 11. So let's take. Um, 1279, 777, and over to District 10 and add it to 11. Twelve forty-two. We'll put that into eleven. Twelve forty-one eight sixty-six into eleven. Uh, we'll take the ones in the southern area there to fourteen ninety-five and nine eighty-one into eleven. Uh, 1410, 657, 1389, and Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in where? Just zoom in slightly. The, the thematic layer is in the way for me. There we go. <laughs> Commissioner Clark. Yeah, other than what we did with one and two, all it looks like we're doing is going in a circle. One reduces and the other goes way up high. I almost feel that we're better off where we started from. And uh, try to justify the numbers. And I know one of them was like 57%, Bruce. You know, and I don't know how that would how that would fly. Well, that's a, a thank, thank you, uh, Commissioner Carr. It's a good point. I think that the, as we're seeing the, uh, adjustments among the districts, that number has come down. So that's more in a, uh, I believe in, I believe it's come down and more in a range that I think is um, justifiable. But I agree with you that initially the justification would have been different if that number had stayed the way it was. Would it be acceptable to keep it that way? at 58% black voting age population? I mean, given the community. Well, uh, just looking at what the law says and looking at what Dr. Hanley analyzed, the Dr. Hanley's analysis is in Wayne County, BVAP, black voting age population, the black voters can elect candidates of choice at 35%. Yeah. So if you make a district, a, a majority minority district, when that additional population goes beyond 
the ability to elect, that's where you get into um, more involved attempts at justification. But, but you can't change the, the places where these people are living. I mean, it's just so concentrated. It, it is. And that's like we had talked about before um, getting into things in such detail that there may be areas where, because of the concentrated population, there, may, there are some limitations into yeah. about what you can do. But having um, a population that is more than 20 points above yeah. what Dr. Handley analyzed is, raises my eyebrow. So to the extent that it can be done, absolutely. And okay. if it's impossible or unreasonably um, difficult, then that's a justification that we, we would have to deal with. But until that point, I think making reasonable efforts at what the um, Voting Rights Act and the courts say, and then also what Dr. Henley analyzed, I think that that's important. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just offer, Doug, I, I do think that Dustin's juggling what, like, what, what I think is this requires just extreme patience and trusting somehow that, there, that there's a, right, it's going to require like 17 balls in the air kind of thing. Like, and I, and, and I, what I mean to say is like, I really appreciate that Dustin's trying it, right? And, and Dustin, if you're willing to continue, like, I, I, I do think that it's, yeah. You, yeah. How are you feeling about it? Well, I mean, what, what I'm doing is I'm slowly shifting the districts up. So I do have to keep going back and forth between where I started or where the right. district starts to where it's going to end. And yeah, it's going to look like we're going in circles, but we're making progress on the voting age population for non-Hispanic black population is going down. All right. And so keep going. So, yeah. But I'm running out of room. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. That's to the point in, in answering Commissioner Clark that there may be because the population, the river, and the other realities of downtown Detroit, there may be a limit. I don't know what that limit is. I don't know if the limit exists, but I think to Commissioner Widge's point, clearly the adjustments are having a, uh, an ameliorative effect. So I think that as, as we've seen in other areas, but in, in different ways, you know, if, if there is, if it just isn't going to work, then it's not going to work. And that's a justification that's different than saying, well, we just kept the population because we kept the population. And that's the eyebrow raising attempt. And I also say, that, I mean, what we're doing now is going to have a ripple effect throughout all the, the, the Detroit districts. So no matter where we go, 11 is going to affect 12, 12 is going to affect 10, 10 is going to affect 8, so on and so forth until we get to the rural areas. So, um, but I would, at this particular point, I would say to continue working on 6, which was my main goal, is it 47%, I can continue to shift up north if you want me to try to do so. I would, because yeah, six was, we started at 48%. So it's not too much of a difference. So if you're willing to continue, I would. Or was it district four? It was district four that I started on. And then I went over into six because six got all sorts of messed up. Four was at 53%. Yeah. So that one is a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Okay. So well, let's take another slice off the Southern portion of six. We'll put it into 11 for now. I'm just going to throw that a little more out of whack. And then we're going to increase, um, District six in the north and expand it further north. So let's take, okay, there's a line. Okay, 1954, 1440. I want that to be the base. So we'll take 709, 1380, 1300 and move up until we get somewhat of a straight line. And then we'll go back north and add some in. So then 1322, 1212, and 1145. See if I can make a uh, an arrow here, maybe. And 
All right, so six is now under by 7,000. So let's go back north and continue to add from District 34. Let's take the two bottom pieces of District 34 and put them into District 6. All right. So now District 6 is at 40%. And the we're in the total population deviation. So there's 4 and 6 done. Yeah, 11 and 34 are going to need work, but their population deviation is pretty much equal. So, right. And what if what I'm looking at is a township there in 34 and it looks like Roseville, maybe that's the population line, but is that a simple switch to add to 11? Or is Which that one? 2083, just add that to 11. Is that a population? You know what? I can't tell. Yeah, you're yeah. over in 11 though. Yeah, so never mind. I'm going to leave my turn here at this particular point. No. I know I was doing really well. But. <laughs> you were doing really well. You balanced a bunch of districts. So this is this is hard. Like, this is hard to tr to rebalance. Um, okay, so. Should, should we review? I could just sort of, like, look at what, what districts yeah. we do want. Like, I, I think we did one, two, three, four. One through six. Are we, six. Are we, is five also good? Uh, that was my well. question. I don't think we touched five because five is over there. I think. Yeah. Okay. So five and 16. Five's on the other side. Okay. So and one, one, two, three, four, and six. Let's take a look at those for a quick analysis, I suppose. Or, okay. When you say a quick analysis in terms of uh, voting rights? Yeah. With the, with the, um, the election results or what, do you, what, what sort of analysis are you thinking? Mr. The, yeah, election results. One, two, four. One, one, two, three, four, and six. Okay. So let's, let's pull up the uh, election results for one. I think you may have balanced eight also, just for what it's worth. I think it, I think it was at 53.9. I think you brought it down significantly, but. Oh, yeah. Like with eight. Accidentally? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, if we just, <laughs> yeah. But okay. let's just do one, three, four, and six. Okay, so district one is uh, for the election results as configured now, 87 for Biden, 13 for Trump, 91 for Clinton, nine for Trump, Obama, 94, Romney, six, Peters is 87, James is 13, Stabenow is 90, and James is 10 in 2018, Peters in 2014 is 94, Land is six, uh, Stabenow is 95, Hoekstra is 5, Whitmer is 91, Schutte is 9 for governor in 2018. Uh, for 2014 governor, 89 Shower, 11 Snyder. Attorney General is 90 point, uh, 91 Nestle, 9 Leonard. Attorney General 14 is 89 Totten and 11 Schutte. Secretary of State is 91 Benson and 9 Lang. Secretary of State 2014, 89 Dillard and 11 Johnson. For the governor's primary, El Sayed is 29, Thenadar's 36, and Whitmer is 35. So the, the uh, excuse me, the election results all are uniform. They all play out and indicate that this is a district that performs where minority candidates of choice can be elected, but going back a little bit to um, my discussion with Commissioner Clark here, this is a district where the, the margins are very strong. So rhetorically, if you were going to add additional minority population here, wouldn't that be packing? That's not necessary to elect candidates of choice. That's the key metric. So if, they, if the margins were close, like 50.1 to 49.9, yeah, I think that that would make sense. But when you have margins like this, the difficulty is in justifying it. Well, why did you do that? What would be the, the constitutional rationale, if you will? So that's part of seeing in real time, since the election results all play out strongly, that's the Voting Rights Act metric, ability to elect. 
or should we look at two? Sure. Um, we can. I have a feeling that it's going to be roughly the same. Well, what we could do is, why don't we just look at the, I think there are uh, four, John, four bellwether elections. Are those still separated out into its own tab? Okay. Yeah. What? Okay, let's just look at the bellwether elections, and if they suggest any problem, then we can look at, at others. Well, as he's analyzing, it's also nice to note that on this Detroit side, I know we're not dealing with communities of interest at this point, but gross points, the five are still somewhat together. Yeah. Or all, all the points. And for what it's worth, Commissioner Witches, I think we want to do one, the districts one, two, three, four, and six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to look at the minority races, or excuse me, the bellwether elections for two, three, four, and six. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, for this limited sample, it's uh, Biden 92, Trump 8, uh, Obama is 96, Romney is 4. For U.S. Senate, Peters is 92, and James is 8. Stabenow is 93, and James is 7. For Governor Whitmer is 94, Schutte is 6. For Secretary of State 2014, 90 for Dillard, and 10 for Johnson. The three, please. Okay, District 3, Biden 89, and Trump is 11. Clinton 95, Romney 5. Peters is 91, James is 9. Stabenow is 92, and James is 8. Whitmer is 93, and Schutte is 7 in Governor. Secretary of State 2014 is 88 for Dillard and 12 for Johnson. Do you want District 4? Four, please. Okay. District 4 is 69 for Biden and 31 for Trump. Obama is 66 and Romney is 33. Peters is 65 and James is 34. Sorry, 66, 34. Stabenow is 61 and James is 39. For Whitmer, it's 64 and Schutte, 36. For Dillard is 52 and Johnson is 48. And six, please. District 6 oh, yes. is 66 for Biden, 34 for Trump, 69 for Obama, 31 for Romney. Peters is 66 and James is 34. Stabenow is 66 and James is 34. Uh, Governor is Whitmer, 68 and Schutte, 32. Secretary of State is Dillard, 58 and Johnson, uh, 42 or uh, 59, 41. Thank you. So in all the elections across the one, two, three, four, and six, they all perform. The margins vary. Four and six, the margins are one and a half or two to one, for example, for most of the elections compared to um, the other districts we looked at. But without exception, the bellwether elections play out the, the, other, the uh, election, other elections that I noticed when we were going through play out. So these districts do appear to offer the ability to elect candidates of choice. They do perform in the um, description, voting rights description. So I think that for now, I think from that, only that metric, the Voting Rights Act metric, I think they look good. And I, I will note that District 8, I, was, I wasn't sure if it was right, but I did record uh, when we started, we were at 53.9 non-Hispanic voting age, black population. I look, think now we're at 35.71. So I think you did something there too, Dustin. Yes, you can take a nap. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what I'm, what I'm, I think what we've identified is five and seven are sort of the next places we want to work on. Is that, is that accurate? Okay. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Chair Zatella. Yeah, so um, at this point, we would go to Commissioner Clark. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at five and seven. Can we get District 5 up on the screen? Okay. Let me see where we're at. Five is 45.37. 
and seven is 10.91. Okay. Well, Commissioner Wichess, just a comment? question for, for you, Bruce. Um, the fact that we have a district that where we were working that has, uh, you know, about 38%. So district four, 38%. District five now being 45%. I guess that particular could, never mind, because I thought they were next to each other. I was going to, I was going to say, if they were next to each other, could you make the argument that the cushion exists in both areas one way or to the next? Well, that's a good point. I, I, I my first thought in looking at them was if they're adjacent, then, uh, we might be able mm -hmm. to do the swapping that we've done before because I had this the same yeah, thought that they were five. that they could be next to each other, but they're not. Yeah, it's over. Com yeah, Commissioner Orton. Um, District five is in a different yeah. county, so the numbers should be different, right? The threshold. That's true. That's Oakland mm -hmm. County, so it'd be forty-two to forty-three percent, which is. Are we within range there with District 5? I thought it was 40 to 45. Yeah. For, that's Oakland County, I think, right? Farmington yeah, Hills? 40 to 45 versus 35 to 40, isn't there? Wasn't that the range? The mm -hmm. This is where I think our general counsel said the official legal term was ish, 42 to 43 ish. Ish. And is that accurate, general counsel? Did I write that down correctly? That was uh, certainly accurate, Mr. Vice Chair, and, and I believe that we obtained those uh, <laughs> ranges from both Dr. Hanley's presentation and, and uh, VRE Council, Mr. Adelson. And, and again, the, the ranges, I think, for Saginaw County and Oakland County, the 40 to 45 range, but that 42 to 43 really was um, what was pinpointed by your experts. Okay, so we're 2% above. I, well, that's just for uh, for five forty five point three seven percent, that's like that's right there. So I, my thought is that there may be whether it's um, looking at eight just to, from a performance metric and nine potentially, but I think that forty five point three seven is just in that forty to forty five percent range. And there was significant changes made to District Five, so we I think we can justify it. I feel I feel comfortable, and I hear what I'm hearing you say is that it may be okay to say this is okay because it's in Oakland County. We've got a decent, and it's not only in Oakland County. It is also like a tip is in Detroit, right? Yes, and I think that that I, I'm not um, I don't have the raised eyebrow effect of a 037 percent. Um, difference with in the range we were talking about with Dr. Andley's analysis. So the there are whether it's District 17, for example, it's about 51 percent, and District 9, about the same. I think that those are um, perhaps more more a, more of immediate concern as we're going down the list. Right, and I'm just trying to be as methodical as possible and help keep us track. So what I'm hearing is that we may, we've done one through four, so we're gonna say five is okay. Yeah. We've well, done, we should, okay. Five, yes. I would five, say. Okay, five is okay. Six is also okay, we've looked at that. And seven and eight are also- Well, seven sorry. we're not seeing on the screen right now. So, okay. Because it's out of view, and he's got the in view. So it goes from six to eight. So, Mr. Morgan, can you pull seven on the screen so we can yeah, see Yeah, seven is in a different area. It's south, yeah, it's south of uh, other way. I think it's south well, of I, seven. I, I think a simple change. Yeah, there it is. There you go. I think a simple change may bring five down some, a small change. Taking some out of nine and moving <clears> it to <throat> five. Right, but I think Mr. Edelson's point is it's so close that we have bigger fish to fry, like the ones that are 50 and oh, maybe yeah. we will end up taking from there, but. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at seven and eight. Seven is good. It's 10.91. It just bumped off the screen again. Eight is 35.7, which is. Also good. Also good. Okay. So nine would be the next one because that's 50.97. So nine. Which is right along five, so. Uh, and, and if I could, I think I don't think we looked at the election results for eight. Okay. 
and that is that's the, is eight only in um, Wayne County. Um, it's but it's both. It goes Wayne into, and Oakland. Oh, Wayne and Oakland. Yeah. So that that gives us an additional leeway because remember it's thirty five to forty percent in Wayne County, mm -hmm. forty to forty five percent in Oakland. So that um, I think that that should be um, looked at as well. Okay. So we want to look at eight. Okay. Eight and nine. Eight. Yes, eight and nine, but they're not. They're not contiguous, so yeah, I don't let's know. Let's start with nine. Okay. Let's take a look. I think the approach on nine, let me look at it for a sec, would be to take. And Sarah Reinhardt, can I ask you to pull the zoom down to the lower right so it's a little easier for us to see? Thank you. The approach on nine. I want to take some of the black population out and move it. And if I move it to five, It'll help with the population, but I think it's going to increase the percentage if I do that. So if I move it to 110, can we see what 110 is at? So 110, okay, it's real low. Okay. All right. So let's move some of five. Um, can we bring it up so I can see five again? Uh, yeah, and then so so adjacent to nine, you have one ten, twenty four, sixteen, and five. Yeah, I don't know if you looked at sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Wait, is, let me see what sixteen is. Yeah, yeah, because your your African American population in nine is in the Southfield area, so it's all the way to the east. Right. So if you're trying to pull that out, you're going to have to go somewhere along the east. Yeah, I could go if if I went into wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. Nine into sixteen. It uh, I could take some of the black population out of nine, bring it to sixteen. Sixteen still be I think it'll help it a little, bring it up a spec, and then it'll bring nine down. So I think that's what I want to do. So let's look at the numbers on the east end of Southfield. Okay, so if you take anything off the east, you're going to divide it. You don't have much of a bridge there. You know, it's so narrow. We're talking we're talking about putting from nine. No, into from 16. nine into sixteen. So, well, let's let's start with the small number eighteen fourteen. And see what what impact that has. Okay, didn't reduce nine enough. So let's take, uh, let's go up, can we go up north a little? Let's take the 2713 and move it. And John, can we also have the demographic overlay the-, the Yeah, that, uh, see that didn't change it much. I think we're getting- I think that's cause you're, that's Beverly Hills. Too which far is, north, yeah. yeah. Can we reverse that out and let's go down south a little. There was a request for the theme. I can't There was a request for the theme, the African American theme. Okay, let's go down and let's. Uh, Commissioner try. Clark, do you want the theme put on? Yeah, please. Okay, let's go down to the bottom of nine and see. Yes. Okay, the, what what percentage is that? Can you tell? Oh, good. Let's move that one. Really didn't impact nine a whole lot. 
and 16 is now over. Boy. So let's back that out. I mean, 16 is way over by doing that. Well, when you add African American population in, you're going to have to take some off somewhere else. Yeah, that's but, like I could do it that way too. Yeah, I would just yeah suggest adding those in and then taking off white population yep, elsewhere. Let's go up to the top of, of nine again, and let's. So take do you out. want me to you want me to add back in uh, add that back into sixteen or not? Um, no, not not yet. Okay. So let's take a look at. Hold on. See, both 24 and 16 are are over in population. I slide. So if I take some from there and and move it into nine. Boy. What communities are that? Looks like that's Bloomfield Township mm -hmm. here. Oh, Bloomfield Township. Yeah, nine's okay. already into it right here. Yeah, let's let's move those two into nine. Let's see what happens. And so then they would have to go to sixteen. I don't like going that far north. And, and I definitely don't want to start splitting up West Bloomfield either. So let's let's back that back that off, John. So sixteen is high. Let's take boy. Let's take um, just on the north part of nine. <clears throat> Hi. So nine, we want to increase with white population. So let's go, yeah, let's go up to Beverly Hills area and Bingham Farms. Let's start right there where you're at, yeah. Move that from 16, because 16 is overpopulated anyways. Yeah, that one there, yep. Yeah. Okay, so now we're 49.3. So let's take the next one over. Seven. 48, 7. Let's take the one that says Beverly Hills with a small dot. Yeah, let's see where we're at. So that's nine, 16, we got the population down. And that's a 40.57, which isn't in the 42 to 43-ish um, range. 
Um, let's look at 24. So may I suggest something? Yeah. If you pull off that eastern edge of Southfield and put it into 16, yeah. you're then shifting the African-American population Correct. from 9 to 16. Yeah. And it should, should take it in conjunction with what you did up there. Yep. That should adjust your balance a bit. Let's do that. Yeah, that one right there, John. 2713. I just do that whole strip all the way down. Yeah, I'd like go another one. Yeah, I was just kind of doing one at a time to yeah. see how this thing rolled out. Yeah, every time you do that, it's balancing out. Yeah. For you down to 48, now 47. But I don't want to take more population out of 16. No, you can always add more farther north too. I keep them going north. Um, 16 is overpopulated right now. Yeah, it is. So oh, it's over. Okay. Probably 5,000. Um, and nine. And I don't want to, yeah. But it, nine is, see, that's eight, nine, or nine is in compliance. Well, 47.5. Well, we can take. Five is underpopulated, so we really can't take from there. It's tw what's 24? Okay. Yeah, let's look at that, John. Do you want uh, this one to go into nine? Correct. I'm sorry. Brought it out of 46.6. And what did that do? We took that one from 24. That's no, nothing significant there. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that one. Yeah, let's move that to nine. I would have 45, almost 46. And what did it do to 24? Okay, population-wise, fine, okay. W would that be acceptable, Bruce? Mm -hmm. well, Commissioner Clark, I think that the, your adjustments have really made uh, a lot of, um, had a lot of positive effects. So I think that that's, I think like, uh, Commissioner um, Rother and I were talking about a 0 0.37 difference or a 0.5 difference isn't the same as a full five to 10 percent so difference. So that's that's just marginal. I think that your the changes are are positive and the having a 0.89 overage with the 40 to 45 percent range, I think. I think that's okay. Okay, let's leave that one. Let's go to eight. So did you want to possibly take a little more population from 16 to bring that, because it's above deviation right now, it's at 5.8. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Um, like by Beverly Hills or in that area of West Bloomfield or Bloomfield Hills. Yeah, I'd take it rather up work. in the Beverly Hills area, yeah. Keep it consistent as much as we can. And that'll help nine's numbers too. Yeah, so now nine is down to 45.24 now. In 16, we still have an overpopulation in 16. Now it's a nine. Um, what's was that? Um, your, your outside deviation on nine now. Oh, by doing that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, the numbers. But didn't you add that edge? Didn't you take that edge from 24 into nine? Correct. Do you want to move that back? Yeah, let's move it back. I mean, probably the, the on, upper one, yeah. The, the tooth, as uh, Steve would say. <laughs> yeah, on the, on the west side, let's move that 
back. No, 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 go up, uh, up further. Up above Franklin, yeah. yeah. Let's take that and move it back to 24. Because 24 is underpopulated too. Okay, that's better. Yeah. So. Forty-five point. We're at forty-five point nine two. Twenty-four is fine. Um, yeah, let's leave that at this point. And according to Bruce, the numbers, the forty-five nine two is going to be okay. Let's go to eight. I hate messing messing with eight. Okay, so it's underpopulated, and so what we want to do. Um, eight yeah can I see the active matrix on eight yeah so we want to add we want to add population um and we want to add black population so eight is another this is going to be Wayne County and Macomb County, I believe. Yeah. So what are we focusing toward here? Wayne, we always said 35 to 40%. Macomb, we had no, nothing. So we're currently at 35.71. So if we raised it to about 40, I think we'd be okay. No, I think Commissioner Corrigan, that's the... The uh, if you particularly if you if you're moving population from Wayne County areas, I think that that's the 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 zone to look for. Plus, as you said earlier, this district is underpopulated, so there okay. is some um, room to grow here. Okay, so 10, 10 is overpopulated. So let's take a look at the border of eight and ten down toward Detroit, yeah, in the Detroit area. Let's see if we can move some black population. Mm -hmm. Without, man, we may impact 10 by doing that percentage wise. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's but gonna be a wash at, if we start moving. Tens at the upper range of that though, so. Can we can we put the black population on the screen? Uh, the dots, yeah. So, I mean, we're not gonna, We really can't take any out of eight because we're going to reduce the population. So we're going to have to add into from 10 into eight. Yeah, I mean, that's the only area, but that's, I think it's going to impact 10 negatively when we do that. If we move that, well, let's see what happens. Move to 1873 and let's see what happens from 10 to eight. Yeah, that area. Let's, let's just see what's going to happen. So 10 goes to 8 goes up, 10 goes down. Which is, that's good. That's not what I expected to see. So let's get... Trying to see where else there's a down. If you go down on the bottom of 10, and eight, and eight, where that, see, now we're into the Hamtramck area. So, Mr. Take, Adelson, where we have these districts that are kind of bordering. Wayne and Washtenaw because we have different percentages. Yeah. Should we be aiming towards the higher or, or is like right around 40 good? Because we've got half Wayne County and half Oakland County. Yeah, we're up County. to 38. Mr. Morgan, did you have a Yeah, comment? I was just going to say um, District 9 was entirely in Oakland and now these are, um, you They're know, split, split yeah. between the Wayne, counties. And Wayne Macomb. Yeah. So we have. Uh, it's Wayne and Oakland and then 10 is Macomb. Yeah. So we have eight with 37.98. And we have 10 with 42.53. So, I mean, we could try to balance them more, but they're still both going to be about 40. Is that yeah. acceptable? Are they mainly in Wayne County? 
They yeah. cover both, I think. Yeah, about half and half. Yeah. half season. Ten, I'd say, is more in Wayne County. Eight, mm-hmm. I'd say, is more in Oakland County. Well, I think eight goes a little further north in Oakland than Wayne goes. It's more spread out in Wayne and McComb. Oh, yeah, eight does come all the way down. So, yeah, yeah. I'd say they're 50-50. Okay. I mean. Well, what we could do is that you could see if there are some additional adjustments to make in, in, in with the aim of, of hitting Dr. Handley's marks, mm-hmm. and then we can look at the elections. So you're suggesting some a little more? Well, if, if eight if eight and looking at, uh, I understand that that's in uh, Oakland and, and Wayne County. So um, well, let's, let's go to the top and maybe Madison Heights will move some from eight to 10. Um, and let's do, okay, and that will bring uh, non non black population into ten, which should reduce it a little, and it should increase the population in eight, the not the, the black. So let's take a look at Madison Heights, and we're going to move from eight to ten. Um, so the upper, yeah, right. The upper corner there, right next to your, right next to your cursor, take, take the top, yep. That one and move it over to, um, 10, 10, 10. Let's see what happens. It may be too many people. That's the problem. I mean, it helped the numbers. You're now at 39.05 and 41. So, yeah, it it does help. It does help the numbers, but it's too many people. Um, But take the reverse that off and Commissioner Orton. And take the the, the bottom two and that, uh, yeah, those two. Commissioner Orton, did you have a comment? Well, I just think. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> the districts are so skinny that yeah, if I've, we take anything, it makes them. Oh, I know. In discontiguous, or at least almost. Commissioner Witches. Well, that may be true, but there really may not be anything else that we can do in that situation. Yeah. I mean, if you look at maps currently now, it doesn't matter what state you look in. Correct. In heavily populated areas, there are districts drawn that are maybe blocks wide just to just to do something so yeah ideally do we want it to be skinny no but i think we just don't have a choice yeah i don't think you have a choice either right can we get the map back up uh yeah i'm just saving it okay good idea So we'll, yeah, we'll back off that last change and then let's take a look at some other precincts. But that did have an impact on the percentages to, to the direction we want. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So did you, I didn't see it before it crashed. Did you move those next two precincts over? Okay. Yeah, I, yeah it just crashed. Yeah, right the, that, the so. ones that were below the yeah. funny looking one. And then if that's too high, then we'll just use one of them and see what happens.
Okay, so bringing this back, um, we put Madison Height okay, yeah, you, back into yep. eight. So the, you, those two that were just below. Okay. Uh, where we took off. Let, let's add those over the tip from eight to ten. Yeah, those where you cursor is that one goes to. Yep, correct. Let's see what happens. And if not, then we'll just move one of them. Let's let's go with both at the beginning. Okay, let's take eight. Let's take the twenty five ninety eight one. Let's see what happens. Eight at 39% and 250 deviation on the population. And what's it do to 10? 10 is below 3% and it's at 41. You think that's uh, acceptable? So I, I'm sorry, which, uh, which districts are we? Eight, eight and 10. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the only changes I would make from here is down at the block level. Yeah, my my only thought about ten is that arm reaching out, uh, and I'm not suggesting that that's being done for any nefarious purpose. But um, the, I think the percentages uh, there's been some positive movement in the with the percentages, but that's that's my only offhand thought. We could um, are there other adjustments that you're looking to make for eight and or 10? I mean, I can, would you recommend one of the percentages change? Well, I think that the, um, you know, eight is at 39%. Yeah. Uh, well, how about this? Why don't we, for now, why don't we look at the bellwether election results and just have a metric to measure these against? How does that Good sound? idea. Which district? Okay. Okay, so District 8 as drawn is 72 Biden, 28 Trump, and 77 Obama, and 23 Romney. For U.S. Senate, it's 72 Peters, and sorry, um, and 28 for James. And then Stabenow, 71, James, 29. For Governor, 74, Whitmer, 26, Schutte. For Secretary of State, 67 for Dillard and 33 for Johnson. District 10 is 71 for Biden, 29 for Trump, 79 for Obama, 21 for Romney, 73 for Peters and 27 for James. 72 for Stabenow, 28 for James, for Governor, 74 for Whitmer, and uh, 26 for Schutte. And then Secretary of State is uh, Dillard, 71, and Johnson is uh, 29. So, Commissioner Clark, the, uh, the bellwether election results all prove out the margins are uh, about three to one approximately. So, this district does appear to perform both districts okay. and to offer the uh, ability to elect candidates of choice. So I think for now, they they look okay. Okay, let, let me take a look at one other thing. Can we go back up to that last change, John? And look at the, I wanna look at the populations. Should, should I switch 2598 and 3759? That's what's in my mind. And that would, that would give you more population in 10. Correct. And and that more non-black. And that should bring their 41% down a little. And eight, it should bring it should bring their well, it may impact their negatively. No, it would not. It would inc it would help that one too. 
can can we just see what would happen if we switched twenty five ninety eight and thirty seven fifty nine? You'd have to get rid of this part over here at the above the two oh six, yeah. So huh. I think it's better, like you said. What's that? Oh no, it's thirty nine. Sorry, I thought. Yeah, never yeah. mind. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to see what would happen if we switch the two. Makes it a little better. It does make it seem to make it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's stay with that. Yeah. I'm good with that. So that is the two districts that uh, I was responsible for. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. You're welcome. All right. Um, Commissioner Curry, I saw you on earlier. Are you still there? You're on mute. You're on mute. I said I would like to pass if I if I may and let Doug take over for me, please. He's do you want another turn, Doug? <laughs> do you? We can do so, well, before I come in, such a great job. Let me understand which districts we're going to deal with because on the twenty three thousand seven six, I would I would like Dustin to do that one. <laughs> we we got Anthony next on yeah, deck let's too, go with so Anthony. we can always yeah, give Anthony. Anthony a turn. Yeah. We need someone who's got a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, he's not on. Okay, um, Mr. Morgan. So um, yes, definitely District 11 is out of population alignment and so is 34, but you also might wanna look at District 12, which might not impact those too much. District 12, okay. All right, so who's taking the turn here? We're going to, I mean, we can move on. If Commissioner Curry wants to pass, that's fine. We can move on to Commissioner Lang. Oh, why do I always end up with this? You guys, I think there's commissioners from the Detroit area. I'll stress this again. When we're getting down to these blocks and voter precincts, I really don't want to make a move that will affect Detroit negatively. So I am going to pass it to... What about you, Commissioner Zatella? You seem to know quite a bit about Detroit. Do you want to take my turn? I just no. feel more comfortable <laughs> if somebody that knows the area does it so nothing is messed I mean, up. I'll be honest with you. At this point, we're just moving blocks back and forth. So I don't know that you need to know the area to do it. Um, I'm happy. You know, If you want to pass, I'm happy to let it go to Commissioner Lett. It'll get around to me eventually. So, Okay. Tag your it, Commissioner Lett. <laughs> okay, so we are zoom out. Let me see what we're looking. At. Sure. So uh, eleven is overpopulated. Thirty four is underpopulated. They are joining here. Okay, let's see if we can't do something with those. Are they joining at the top? No. Yes, 11 and 34 are joined at the top. Oh. Um, I'm out in St. Clair Bay. Yeah, um, so 34 is under is uh, underpopulated. Um, I think if you were to take this area, you would probably affect the African-American population 
percentages in 11 and not the direction you're potentially looking at going. Okay, 11 is over. Put some population up there and let's see what we look like. Uh, From our previous uh, work in this area, this is uh, has a strong concentration of African American population here. Right, go back north on uh, let's take. I know you want to go south. I want to go north. <laughs> nope, no problem. I'm just following the boundary of the district. Okay. I want to take the top three districts and add them to 34. Okay. Uh, take the next four. Put them into 34. That's 34. I suppose, Bruce, you think 61 is a little high. Yes, sir. All right, second question, 34, considering where it is, I don't know that that's low. Well, that the 61.65 percent? No, 34 is 14.43. Oh. Yeah, I think one, 34, as I recall, was one of those interesting districts where the uh, performance of the elections was somewhat of a, a surprise and that there seemed to be, I don't remember how, to, how much, um, opportunity to elect candidates of choice. But clearly, you're right that the population is is much different. So taking population... Um, from 34 to 11 to um, or is, is that what you're suggesting or am I just getting the directions mixed up? Are you suggesting going from 11 into 34 or? I just took it all out of oh. 34. My, my question is that my and my assumption is without really Knowing it, but heading north up the lake shore is not. Put, I doubt it's very uh, African American. Put the theme up and see what it looks. That's like. my recollection too, Commissioner. That when that when we were doing the Lake Shore District, that I had noticed the same thing.
squirrel up north. Squirrel um, out. Let's see what we take a look at. And uh, take the themes off so I can see the districts. You scroll out or zoom out. Let's what's twelve? What what's twelve? Okay. What is uh, on 12, the very southern tip? What do we have for population down in that area? Okay. And well, let's take just to see what will happen. Uh, let's take four eighty six, four ninety eight, and seven fifty four. Put them in eleven. Went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. We need to tell me I was going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't give a verbal uh, indication. Um, 12. Did you want to undo those and look at taking from 11 into 12? Yes, I do. Then you can do next door. Yeah, do 312, 14, 18, and uh, probably 105. So we're low on 11, head back north on 11. Okay, so don't take any more at this point? Not at there. this point. I want to see if I can put some of the, in the north back into 11 and see if that'll dilute it. Yeah, take those.
What do you have at the top of 11, up by 34? <clears throat> and he just took in uh, four precincts here in Roseville into 11. Can you zoom out a little bit more? <clears throat> For what it's worth, we did start the, um, the Black voting age population with at 11, we started at 51. 0.58, and then we went up to 61. So we're back down again. And with 12, we started at 45.27. So I'm wondering we if- can, We can ahead, add Steve. some into six out yeah. of 11. So let's take uh, the Southern, the Southeast, Precincts of okay. 11. Into six here? Yeah. Okay. And then four is also underpopulated, and uh, that might work in your favor as well. Yeah. Let's, let's do the bottom, the southern, into four. With one, two, three, three, three southerns. And then um, would end up with four. Pretty good numbers. Okay. Do the three. The, these two here into four as well? I was going to put those into six. Four. Oh, I thought you put this into six. Huh? Oh, I, saw, I thought you were going to put this into six. Well, number wise, four is pretty good. And, and it's at 40%. So let's put them in of six. See what happens. takes um, some more of the southeast of 11. Into which district? 10, 12, or 6, or 4? All right, all right. Take that tooth and put it into 4. Commissioner Weiss has a pencil and eraser, and you've got a tooth and a tooth extractor. <laughs> okay. And then uh, So we took those from um, six into four. So now six is a little underpopulated. Well, the only thing I'm trying to do right now is to get the percentage down on 11. That's right. You're so, making progress. Thank you. So, yes. Yes, Commissioner Orton. Well, I'm thinking if you just add a little bit more into six, since it is under a little bit underpopulated, that's taking African American population out. Mm -hmm. So that will help the number mm -hmm. in eleven, I think. Well, th that's true, and I was contemplating that, and what I didn't 
want to do is then increase six pop, uh, percentage, but we can try that. So give me 1145, 13, and 1380. How much does six go into Macomb County? Because that might be one of the districts where we can tolerate more because it's not Wayne County entirely. So I think you have more wiggle room in six than you're thinking. Yeah. So. Well, you have both 11 and six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So between 40 and 45 is what we're aiming for. So that's actually good to add a little more to six. Let's take um, that 1380 and 13 into six. Mm -hmm. How far, what's in 12? It's about even out. 12 goes up there too. Mm -hmm. So we can put some in 12. Let's put, uh, let's go north a little. No, we could do it down there. You were, where you were, where you were. 333 and 972 into 12. And 502 into 12. Commissioner Clark? Yeah, you might benefit on 11 going up to and take some of Roseville which if it's not heavily America, African-American and move that into 11. And well, that'd be the third time I did that. And I just wore it out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Before we know it will be. A well, I time. think. What, um, what about taking a little bit of St. Clair Shores, that Western edge that's in six, isn't that primarily white along there? Add a little more white to bring down your African-American. Yeah, that's the concept. Move more white into eleven to to uh, adjust the percentage population mm -hmm. in eleven. Sure. You try that. Give that. Uh, what are those top three precincts? Western, top, northwest. Forty-five percent. Yeah. Where are we at number-wise? Forty-seven. We're a little high on population at eleven. Okay. Give me that northwest precinct of eleven. Put that up in Roseville. So you want to take something northwest out, right there and take that into 34? Yeah. yeah. That's 34. Is that 34? Yeah. Into the pink district, 34? So now we got 34 is underpopulated. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Where we at? Uh, Let me see 11 on the matrix, please. Okay, so six. Not bad. 11 is not bad. You're saying what? Yeah, these two are here. It's a little while. Okay. Just for the heck of In the north of uh, 11, right next to that northwest we just did, let's take uh, those. Yeah, let's see. Hold on a second. I'm a thousand. Take, do the 3534 and put that into 34. 24 and 48 under. Well, I'm in within 5%. Yeah, Doug, what? Commissioner Clark? Yeah, on, on the... Um, I'm going to leave it right where it is. On the two southernmost Roseville districts, I, I would think about taking those off and getting the maybe the three easternmost because that's the shoreline concept that we had talked about. And they're not, yeah. See, that runs up all along the shoreline. So as, as the numbers work, that would be a wash. Everything's under. Yeah, the two, two southernmost uh, purple yeah, precincts. Uh, what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is take those two off. And, and if the numbers work, you got to look at the numbers and get the three easternmost precincts. Yeah, see, those numbers might not work. So looking at the numbers, if you're contemplating that, that's uh, 32, 40, 60, 72. And if you took those out, that's 72. Yeah. So they'd be e about even on the numbers, although we'd have to look and see how it ended up. It's an equal population trade, and if the demographics are similar, then you won't affect the demographics of the districts. Correct. You're calling, Steve. I'm tired. <laughs> and retire. So, Mr. Idelson, what do you think about those percentages? We're still a hair high for 11, 6, and 12. From a voting rights perspective, I mean, the numbers did also go in, in a positive direction. We can uh, look at the bellwether election results to uh, confirm, but uh, the, um, the adjustments uh, dealt with what was a, a relatively high number and adjusted it positively so I mean, we could if, if you'd like we can look at the the election results for 11 would it be 11 that you'd want to look at yeah 11 11 yes okay, sure let's look at the bellwether please and that okay. tell us where we are so district 11 as configured um Do me a favor and start with Johnson. <laughs> this is a challenge. Okay, so Secretary of State 14 is uh, Johnson 31, 
Dillard's is 69. Schutte is 25 for attorney general and Whitmer, uh, sorry, for governor, Schutte is 25, Whitmer is 75. For U.S. Senate, 27 for James and 73 for Stabenow. And then for Senate 2020 is James 27 and Peters 73. And for president in 2012, Romney 22, Obama 78. And then for 2020, it's 28 for Trump and 72 for Biden. So the bellwether elections all prove out. I mean, this district does appear to perform and offer the uh, ability to elect. The margins are two to three. The electoral margins are two to three times. Um, the um, that that's the gap. So the from an elections results election results perspective, um, this district is an ability to elect district with strong electoral margins. All right. I'm good. Are you good? I'm good. Okay. Fantastic. Boy, am I good. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Orton. Commissioner Witches. Um, do we have any other districts that are super high? Because uh, I want to. Didn't we? Uh, um, oh, how do I put this? Didn't we try to address the VRA while we were putting this particular map together? Somewhat, yes. Yeah. So I don't got to look at the list, but I don't think, and I think a lot of them are going into Oakland County where we, we have a higher percentage too. 17 is the only one that I saw. So, and where um, is that at? Is that in Wayne County? I think so. Yes, absolutely. I was going to suggest that. <laughs> That's fine by me. <laughs> okay. So, um, hearing no objections, we will recess for 10 minutes. It is currently 4.10. Please be back at 4.20. Thank you.
As chair of the commission, I call this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission back to order at 4.23 p.m. Secretary, could you please take the roll? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Commissioners, please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose during roll call that you are attending remotely and disclose your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. Present. Juanita Curry. Anthony Ede. Brittany Callum. Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. Present. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. I am in appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Ten commissioners are in appearance, and we have a quorum. All right, so um, let's pick up where we left off. We're continuing with agenda item unfinished business 5A. I believe we had moved to Commissioner Orton. Um, and let's take a look at our map and see what we need to work on. I'm waiting for the map. Okay, I thought there was just one district left that was a bit too high. I think it's number 17. Where is that? Oh, I see. It's the yellow one right there. Okay. And that is Wayne County. Yes. So the pop the the non-Hispanic Black voting age population were shooting for thirty-five to forty. Yes. Okay. So, John, I'm going to need the um, African American theme. Okay, I'll bring that up. Okay, so it is adjacent to 14, and 14 is currently as high as mm -hmm. it can be. Yeah. Actually, they both need to come down a little yeah. bit. Okay, so where is 35? Can you zoom out just a little bit? So what, so this is in Livonia. Mm -hmm. 
okay, well, if we, I'm just thinking through this, if we move west, which seems like the, the logical area to go, then we have to take something off in the east and where can we put that? What's 19? Can you zoom down to or scroll down to 19? Okay, so that's part of Wayne Westland. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, Cynthia. I think this is going to be really, really challenging because all of your African population is east and going west, short. I mean, all right, like one solution I could see you doing is bringing 35 in across the center line of those two and pulling out some of the African-American population. But I mean, that's about the only realistic thing I can see here. I just think this is going to be particularly challenging. Do you mean sort of a third sort of strip, like 14 and 17? Is that what you're, when you say pull it in? So if you were to take 35 and go like splice it, right. you might be able to balance those two, but I feel like that's going to look really weird. Right. And I, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, one of the reasons that we moved toward this configuration was because Livonia and Redford were split three times. And so we were trying yeah, to minimize the, the number of splits. They were split five times. Five originally. times. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is having, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you could make 14 skinnier and flatter, 35 stretch out in between, and then 17 skinnier and flatter. And that might get you there. But even that, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to work. But that's kind of the best suggestion I have in that area, unless you just want to redo other things. Oh. So I would like to ask if this is okay, unless somebody tells me no, I would like to ask John, since you can look at things and see where the possibilities are, could you, spot a possibility that I might not be seeing? Sure. Um, adjacent to District 15, which is an African-American majority district, there's District 7. Um, you could potentially put some of the African-American population into 7, um, keeping in mind that you would want to carefully look at what you might exchange. But if you did that, then 15 could take from 17 or 14, <clears throat> and then 17 could take more of Livonia. Thank you. So, MC, my brain isn't calculating it very well today. <laughs> Could you help me on this? <laughs> sure, I will do my best. So, and what I'm so I think um, seven is our um, Dearborn Arab American mm -hmm. Middle Eastern North African population. Mm -hmm. um, so, as we in and seven is underpopulated at the moment. Or where where is the population? It's I suppose it's it is under, seven is underpopulated. It has a small portion of Detroit on the north side. Dearborn is split into three right. and seven, and Dearborn Heights is in I think seven and fifteen. Mm -hmm. So where would I, Commissioner Zatella? Where would I? Where would you suggest you see that? Because it's just one or two neighborhoods, right? Just a couple blocks that I'm going to try to <laughs> right add to seven from fifteen. Well, I I think you just be going up um, just go up yeah just go up and try to pull as much from 15 as you can and then readjust 15 and 14 okay so it does create sort help. of a skinnier sort of right it, you know because i I think we're still also trying to understand how we're we want to make sure we're not reaching yeah right so I'm, I'm tempted to you know add to seven in the dearborn heights area instead of going north you see what i mean because it creates more of a skinny line there where do you mean the Dearborn Heights area? So it says, sorry, the western edge of seven. Yeah, so yes, where John is circling. So there and even further west in that 15 area to add to seven. Again, because, yeah, just trying to keep a less of a Yeah, my only thought on that is that's not where the concentration of African-American population yep. is. Yep. So okay. I think if that's what we're trying to do, we should focus where it's most concentrated. All right, and let's take that northeastern, um, yeah, just above seven there. Yep, in that corner there, John. 2287 and it's going to put us over population but we're yeah that 2287 please yeah let's do both well we'll see 
Okay. And how we, and the numbers, so if with seven, we were at, okay, yeah, so seven doesn't have a, okay. So 15. So now 15 is underpopulated, so you could take something into that, um, and then that would allow 14 or 17 to go more into Livonia. Right, and do we want to take a little bit more off of seven? That's what I'm thinking about, just like one more, maybe one more voting precinct. Yep. Yeah, I think so. And do we want to go to 2896 or 1822? What's your instinct? I do the 2896. Okay, let's try that. Okay, now we're going to go north. You may have to adjust seven, and you mm -hmm. might look to do that over here. Yep. Thank you. So now, yeah, so we're going to rem uh, add to... I'm going to uh, turn off the dots for a moment. Thank you. So you can see. So right here, you have a little piece of 16 mm. that's come into there. So Goodness. And this is all Detroit. Up to here is Redford. Okay. So we're going to have to add a little bit more to 14, more African-American population into 14 and move it through 17. Uh, you 17. would be taking from 14 and putting into 15 mm -hmm. potentially. Yeah. Taking from 14. Yes. Yep. So let's go into the, yep. Yes. That area right there, please, John. All right, so, and let's stay, well, let's see, on the, I'm just thinking about on the diagonal there, the long Grand River, that's why I think it is Grand River. Yeah, the 1022, 727, 1839, yep. Let's take those, add them into 15. Okay. Yeah, let's just stay there, okay. And so now 14 is cut off, so we can add that into yeah, that area that you're circling, John, what is that? Uh, you would do this to make your connectivity. Con or... Okay, yeah. Well, so those three precincts are okay? Yes, we have to. Mm -hmm. And our goal is still to move, to add enough population. Yes, yeah, seven, 17 and 14 are both underpopulated now. And then seven is slightly overpopulated, but we knew that. Right. And seven, I think, yeah. So but both 14 and 17 have room to take more of Livonia potentially. Okay. So let's do that. So 14, let's start with, um, so where should we start? 17 or 14? 17 is under at by 4,000. So let's, yeah, let's head west into Livonia, please, with 17. Yep, and those precincts there, please, at 2680, 1975, and 1388. Okay, so with 17, just for the moment, we've moved it from 50 0.89 to 45.72 at the moment and our and we can add some more so if with 17 let's just do one more john to see how much further toward 40 percent we can get um yeah i guess we'd have to go into those lower mm -hmm. yep let's go to 2140 and the 1782 we're going to be over but i want to wow because hmm. this is going to, yeah, so 35 is 10,000 under. Okay, and so it's too much. What are you thinking, Rebecca? Should we? I just take off. I just take off the lower precinct that you just added. Okay, and leave the upper? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take off the 1782, please. Back into 35. So 
So 17, now we're at 44. So we're under 45. So we've reduced it about 5%. I'm just going to record that 40. Three. Okay. So now we're going to work on 14. Yep. So let's go west there, John. Let's do, um, and we are with 14. We are looking. Yeah, let's do those two, please. So that was 14, we went from 49 to 45 or almost 46. Okay. And now you'd have to adjust uh, 35 and you have some surplus population way over in seven. So depending on what you do, you might have to go through 1920 or another way. Right. And <sighs> I'm, Please, yes. yes. Yeah, I'm wondering if you could put more into 15 and then push it through 14 because that, that strip that comes down is actually Dearborn Heights mm -hmm. and comes along the bottom. And that way you're keeping that community together. Will you help direct John and sort of help? Either that or put more, more of Dearborn. I mean. Do you, do you want to help direct John or you want me to try? No, go ahead, try. So more, uh, you're taking out of seven potentially. Right. Yes, that little strip down there. And Commissioner Orton, did you have a thought? Well, I do like the idea of keeping Dearborn Heights together. You know. Is it? Yeah. So what? And the, the blue sort of keeps. So Dearborn Heights wouldn't be split. It's just that we would actually be adding from 15. Right? We take away the part that of Dearborn that is currently in 15. Is that correct? Um, no, so seven is over at the moment. So you'd be looking to take a little bit out of seven and potentially pass some of it to 35, although you could look for other places where 35 could get population. Okay, so we're adding 215 from seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just going to continue into Dearborn and not disrupt Dearborn Heights. We're just adding to the population in Dearborn Heights. Or do you want to go into that, that right? Because that strip that was taken from Inkster way back when? You want to add it to Dearborn Heights like that? That's well, that is Dearborn 18, Heights. 16. That's what I mean. So like, you want to take that one you want to keep it together? To, um, 15? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you might as well. Okay. And that'll take down Dearborn a bit. And I think that's what you were suggesting, right? Right. Commissioner Orton, right? Keeping Dearborn Heights together? Okay. And then even further south in District 7, yeah, that's also Dearborn Heights. Yeah, you could take... Yeah, if you wanted to, you could look at these two let's or some try. other combination. Yes, let's try that, please. I mean, we're following the municipal lines here, but it is awfully. Yeah, well, I mean that's what the community looks like. <laughs> I mean, okay, it wraps and around Dearborn. So, so that was uh, too much for having both of those. Um, I don't know if you did that, you'd have to exchange another precinct out of. Okay, let's take this area or undo both of those. Let's undo both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to be able to keep Dearborn Heights together, so maybe just back that up and take a little bit more of Dearborn. Okay. Too much population. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, and we froze on the Zoom too. There we go.
Okay, so at the moment, um, back on screen, um, okay. we did not take the Dearborn Heights here, so. And I think that's okay. Okay, yep. so you're looking at a little bit more of Dearborn potentially. Yes, the northern, yep, that north. Okay, so just a little bit there. Yes, please. And we're taking, we're looking for a thousand or less. Yes, yeah, so we're looking to take, and we're trying to move this through. I'm through 15 to 35. Up to, mm -hmm. And so we want to move about 5,000. Is that is that accurate? We're trying to adjust. Well, I think it's going to be a little more than six, that. That's, so we want six. 35 is down by 12,000. Yeah. Okay. So, and to be clear, about 5,000 is your max deviation. So, so I'm shooting for about 10. Yeah, there may be ways to gather a little bit more from Along the uh, way. other places. Yeah, but for right now, um, you would take some out of seven. Again, right. you could go out here or you could go here. And John, with the math, what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm asking is like, do we, do I want to go all the way to the way I want to grab 10,000 at this point in, in seven? Yes. Within reason. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so can you zoom in a little bit more and center that? Yeah. I just want to see the Dearborn where we're going to split Dearborn. So my recommendation would be the 1541. Oops. Can you zoom out a little bit? Yeah. And John, just please accept direction from Rebecca. Yeah. So can you, yeah, back it out. So 1541, 16, nope, we're going to leave Dearborn Heights alone. So 1541, yep. And then the 1392, 1601. the 2,352. And then if we have room, that 1347, but I'm not sure where we're at room wise. Oh, we still got room for those two. All right, so do the 13 and the 16. Yeah, and that should keep neighborhoods together pretty good. Now you're on the extreme end on seven being underpopulated, so. Okay. You could look at taking another precinct here from 15 or take one back um, from what you just took in 15. What do you think? We just, I think we, what we want to do is keep the integrity of the uh, MENA population together, right? Mm -hmm. So will you help? Yeah. So um, what do we have up in the Detroit area? Pull up a little bit. So can you zoom in a little bit? I'm thinking that's 1688, but I wanna see what that neighborhood is. Yeah, I think that would be the one to take. We're taking out, right? We're taking uh, out. We were looking at maybe we took too much out of seven. Um, so adding. You, you could leave yeah, so, it. No, so I'm saying, yeah, so add that 1688. Or, okay, so add this. Sorry, did you want to add down here back into seven or something else into seven? No, the 1688 that's currently in 15, we're going to put into seven. Is that what we're doing? That's yes. correct. Okay. Yep. And it's just west, John. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, yes, right you there. found Got it. it. And when you say seven, you mean seven, not 15. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 exactly. All right, so I think that's better, right? Yes. Um, and we're but, not adjusting. Although that may have been Dearborn Heights. If yeah, you it is. Yeah. Okay, but you're okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we're keeping the Arab American population in seven, also not... Um, um, pretty balanced with 15 also. I think we had two districts. Do we, before we, yeah, so I'm um, looking at VRA, but I'm tempted to look at the, um, before, with the Arab American election results, El Saeed. Would that help, Chair Zatella? I'm, think, yeah. I'm thinking about it for you to also just sort of like make sure that you yeah. feel like you got, yes. Let's do that. 
and just the, the gubernatorial, please. Okay, so for District 7, seven, yeah. seven and 15. Okay, the gubernatorial primary in seven is Al Sayed 49, mm -hmm. Thenadar 14, and Whitmer is 36.5. Uh, oh. And you said 15? Yeah. I, I believe, yep, that was the other one that was potential. Al Sayed is 40, Thenadar is 23, and Whitmer is 37. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so well done. All okay, right. so looking back to we need to just 15 with the goal of moving to 14, moving to 35, right? That is correct. That's so right. So you could potentially take some off here or up there, depending on, but it needs to go towards 35 in some way. Right. So 14 is currently a little high on African-American population, right? So ideally, we don't want to be putting more of the concentrated African-American part of 15 in. So I'd say let's focus on Dearborn, the western edge of Dearborn Heights. Into, into 14. 14 or mm -hmm. 19? Um, I'd go into 14 because we're already <laughs> 19, I think, is good the way it is right now, isn't okay. it? It's like pretty good. And, yes. Yeah. And then that way we can bring down the percentage in 14 a little bit strategically by including that Dearborn Heights area into it. That's my thought. Because okay. 14 is currently at 45%, right? Yeah. Am I reading that right? You are. And I feel like you've got a handle on it. So I just want to offer to keep driving. <clears throat> so I would take those um, upper four precincts. How, well, how much are we adding here? So well, 7,000. Okay. So the upper up here. Yeah. yeah I'd, okay. I do the 20, 22, two, two, 22, 26, 2039 and 2179 and put those in to 14. So now 15 is where it should be and that brought it down to 42, which I think we're moving closer to what we want to do. And then let's go look over at the border of 35 and four. Do you think we should take off more? Take off more? Okay, so let's do the 2069. Should we do a little more? Or do you think that's good? Oh, we can do more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do more. These numbers. Well, to be clear, you're looking at the difference between 14 and 35 is now, if you add them both up, positive 11, negative 13. So between the two of them, you're two and a half percent underpopulated, which is fine. Okay. So now we're going to take from 14 into 35. Uh, that's correct. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. But gosh, I'm worried about what that's going to do to 14, but it, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it may, have, it may have a little bit of an impact. So that's yeah. why, you know, but you did take areas in here that were not African-American. Yeah. So let's take in like those uh, two rows across. So 21, 43, yep, 21, 83. See where we're at. And then just keep keep going across. So, yeah, 1873, 25, 94, 25, 94. All right. Can we see that number? Yeah, I want to see 14. 14, where are you? So 14 still a little high. Um, and 17... Yeah, so I feel like we didn't improve 14 very much, but Commissioner Wichos. I don't, I don't know if the, the population is there, but where you were just adding, what if you were to take the that, that area, the level one you just added last, put that back into 14 and then add the 2248 and the 1882 below it to 35. So we'll put those into 35 and the one above it into 30, uh, 14. Go ahead and try that. I'm John. curious. Probably not going to change much. <laughs> oh, you never know. Maybe it will. Yeah, it was better the other way. We had 47.12 with the 2594 added. Can't win them all. 
No, yeah. but it's worth trying. Yeah, it's worth trying. So, and, sorry, I took one up there. Did you want to keep that? Um, go back to what the configuration was before. So the 1873, 2594 in 35, and then put the other two back into 14. Is that how we had it before? Well, but so these, the, so let's just pause because the, the numbers are better. Oh, I because thought you said it was worse. I'm sorry. This it, it was, but like when we took the other two above it. Oh, um, it made it better. It made it better. Okay. So it's 47.03 instead of 47.12. Commissioner Orton. I think 14 can, uh, I mean, 15 can take a little bit more uh, African-American. So what about that corner? The At least the bubble seems large. Maybe we can click on it and see what the percentage is. The yeah, that um, down south, no, south, right there, like 1996. 1996. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that into 15. And that should bring down 14 a touch. So 15 was at 42.63, now it's at 44.5, and 14 definitely has improved from 49, where we started, mm -hmm. 14, I see 17 only, so I'm not seeing 14 on the screen anymore. Fourteen, forty-six. Mm -hmm. okay, so definitely an improvement. And then 17 was at 50, wasn't it? Originally, and it's now at 44. Correct, 0.73, yep. So 40, so I think 15, um, I'm just gonna adjust my numbers here, it's 44.51, okay. All right. And we're in balance, so to speak, yeah. and We've done our best, and that was a wonderful turn, Commissioner Orton. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did good. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Adelson, do you want to look at what we just did? We made what? adjustments to I 7, 14, 15, 17. <laughs> Well, I've been looking at what you did. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that the, you know, as we've discussed, the changes go in a positive direction. I think why not? I would suggest looking at the um, bellwether election results for 14, 15, and 17. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. 14, 15, and 17, please. District 14 as drawn as uh, 72 for Biden and 28 for Trump, 73 for Obama and 27 for Romney. Peters is 73 and 27 for James. Stabenow and 18 is 72. James 28 for Governor Whitmer 75 and Schutte is 25. Secretary of State is 65 for Dillard and 35 for Johnson. You wanted 15? Please. 15 is 79 for Biden, 21 for Trump, 79 for Obama, 21 for Romney, uh, 80 for Peters, and 20 for James, 78 for Stabenow, and 22 for James. For governor, it's 79 Whitmer and 21 Schutte. Secretary of State is 69 Dillard, 31 Johnson. And, and then 17 yes. Thank you. is 71 Biden, 29 Trump. And 71 Obama, 29 Romney, 72 for Peters, 28 for James, Stabenow, 68, James, 32, Whitmer is 69, and Schutte is 31. And then for Secretary of State, Dillard, 61, and Johnson is 39. Okay, good. The bellwether elections all prove out. And so these districts, based on the bellwether results, have the ability to elect candidates of choice. The only other suggestion I would make is with the tweaks to 15, do you, why don't we look at the El Said election? Were there any other among 14, 15, and 17? Were there any other, were, 14, 15, and 17? Were there any other communities within those districts that we might want to look at for El Said? No. Okay. So are we good with, let's look at 15. 
foil, Saeed, and then I think that that probably answers the question. Okay, uh, 15 is uh, 40 for El Said and 24 for Thanador and 37 for Whitmer. Okay, so the district still elects uh, based on our inferences about the Arab American population. So all the districts, all the elections prove out for these districts. Fantastic, so does, so I, are we, does that complete our VRA due diligence? Do we have enough data have we walked through methodically enough to sort of understand whether, yeah, that, or do we have more districts that we want to identify? Well, I, as far as the, the greater Detroit area, I, I believe we've touched all the districts. I think that it may be a good idea at this point to get a broader view overall and just look down the numbers and see if there are any districts that stand out. Because I remember, I don't remember if the, if Flint and Saginaw, that well, they can't be in the same house district, mm -hmm. but looking there, looking uh, at the Grand Rapids area, I think there were a couple of districts out there. So I would, that's where I would, what I would suggest. Excellent. Okay. So we, so we'll sort of say, okay, we're moving from the Detroit area. So we had, and um, Commissioner Orton finished her turn. Is that me next? Um, Executive Dr. Hammersmith, I, I understood that there might be the possibility that Dr. Hanley wanted to join by Zoom and weigh in. Is she available? Funny you should mention that. I was just trying to send Sue a, a text. Um, she just got off the phone. Um, she has sent me a text message. She has her PowerPoint set. So I was gonna send Sarah an email to say, send, um, Lisa, an invite to come on. Okay. All right. So can I just offer maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll just confirm that we have sort of satisfied the Detroit air for now. And the next time we meet or next time we do this, we'll be looking at the, uh, I guess it'd be my turn. We'll go to the, I'm going to suggest we go to the Saginaw mm -hmm. area and try to complete our VRA. Or, I mean, depending on the length of Dr. Hanley's presentation, you could be doing it later tonight. So, oh, got it. <laughs> so I mean, I don't think she's going to be here for two hours. Um, so um, because we do not currently have that on our agenda, if we want to, I mean, my understanding is Dr. Hanley has done some additional analysis on partisan fairness, and she would desire to bring it before us. We would need a motion to amend our agenda to add that on to allow it. I would like to make a motion to amend our agenda to allow Dr. Hanley to speak. <laughs> um, motion made by Commissioner Witches, seconded by Commissioner Lett. Is there any debate or discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, um, we have a motion to amend the meeting agenda to allow an additional presentation by Dr. Hanley to continue her analysis of partisan fairness. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. So we will just uh, give her a second to get logged on and we will get started with her additional analysis and data. Good evening, Dr. Hanley. Please proceed when you are ready. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can I share my screen? Yes, please. Um, your um, legal staff asked for some direction in terms of what are acceptable scores. 
And as I mentioned to you when I was there, um, there are no bright line acceptable scores, but I quickly went through the court cases and the literature today. And I thought I would try and give you some sort of idea, mostly about the scores that the courts considered high enough to reject the um, plans and determined that they were a partisan gerrymander, at least in part on these scores. And that will give you an idea of at least what's too high. I'm also gonna to point to a couple of things in the literature, um, what the developers of these scores have said they think is too high, if that is amenable. There's only six slides. I think it will take me about 10 minutes. I know y'all are tired, but does that sound like a plan? That sounds fantastic. Okay, let me um, let me do this. So there are um, four cases in which I can clearly um, identify some of the partisan measures that we have been talking about. So there was a challenge to the 2011 congressional plan in Ohio, and this is the site for the case, Ohio. Philip Randolph Institute, the householder. And these are the scores that the court case, the opinion itself identify. So I don't have access to the actual expert reports presented to the court by the expert witnesses. So I, this is a little spotty, but these are the efficiency gap scores for the congressional plan and the mean median scores for the congressional plan when they cited them. Uh, as you know, the, or as I think I mentioned earlier, the court determined that this plan, the congressional plan was a partisan gerrymander. Now, uh, let me add a caveat to this. Now, this is an existing plan so these, uh, this was an existing plan. When it was challenged, it was 2018. They had congressional elections to look at. So this is not the composite score that we're dealing with because we're dealing with plans in the future, predicting what could happen. But these are um, actual congressional election scores. And this is what the court determined was too high. Okay, of course, I'm going to leave you with this PowerPoint so that you have reference to these scores, but here are some scores that they thought were too high. Here's a Pennsylvania challenge, um, and this was also a challenge to the congressional plan. Um, this, is, oh, I've got this, this is the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. And these are some of the scores I found in the court case. We have seats votes. Um, so for example, in 2012, um, in terms of the congressional elections, 50.8% of the votes went to Democratic candidates and they garnered 27.8% of the seats. In 2014, it was 44.5% of the vote. 27.8% of the seats, and in 2016, 45.9%, um, also getting 27.8%. The mean median score over the entire period, this was challenged um, between 2016 and 2018, which well, I don't have 2018 scores. You can see it's 5.9, and you can see that the efficiency uh, scores range from 15 to 24. So these were considered too high by the court and they did find that this um, congressional plan was a uh, unconstitutional party, partisan gerrymander. Now, the, the, as, the, um, as your lawyers will explain to you, of course, all of this becomes irrelevant uh, with a more recent Supreme Court case, but this is when the courts are considering these kinds of measures as relevant to partisan gerrymandering. 
Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to go page down. Uh, here's the Wisconsin challenge to the state assembly plan. You can see the seats votes ratios, 51.4% of the vote got them 39.4% of the seats. You can see the efficiency gaps, 13.3 and 10 points. Those, the Wisconsin court held this was an unconstitutional gerrymander, it was overturned. Um, and again, this was challenged uh, apparently before there were even 2016 contests. So these would be scores that are on the high side. Okay, now here's the Michigan case. Um, and these I gathered from the case itself. Um, this was a challenge to all three plans, the congressional plan, the state Senate and the state house plan. And these are the scores that were reported um, in the opinion. So you can see we've got a seats votes ratio where, um, I think that's wrong. I did this very quickly. I, I might have copied that over and that might be from a slide earlier. Yeah, it is. Huh. The seats votes ratio there is incorrect. It's uh, maybe it's not. Uh, anyway, so there are your efic efficiency gap scores and the mean median scores. And again, this all three plans were um, declared to be a par partisan gerrymanders. Um, so these are the kinds of scores that got the plans in trouble. Now, this again looks at the actual election results. But for comparison's sake, I took the existing or current plan and I analyzed them using the composite score index that we're using. And this is what I found. So the current plan would yield the following seats vote ratio. You can see it's 52.3. Now, again, this is a statewide vote, I think that uh, John and I talked to you about this. This is a composite score. It will be the same across the state, 52.3. Um, in Congress, that produced 35.7% of the seats. In the state Senate, 44.7. And in the state House, this picture's blocking it. Oops. 45-something, uh, rather. Let's see. 45.5%. Uh, Efficiency gap. Um, 21.2 in Congress, 10.9 in the State Senate, 11.6 in the State House. The mean median difference, 5.5, 5.1, 6.1. I should say all of these are in favor of the Republicans. In fact, every score that I've given you so far has been in favor of the Republicans. So I didn't put pluses and minuses, it just meant the difference favored the Republicans. And the lopsided margins, we had 13.1 in Congress, 8.6 in state Senate and 10.1 in the House. And then I just have one more slide where I'm going to talk about what some of the authors of or developers of these scores have said. So Stephanopoulos and McGee who produced the efficiency gap argued that um, any, they pointed to an 8% threshold and they said any efficiency gap 8% or above should be considered presumptively unconstitutional. Now, I don't believe that the Wisconsin court where this was argued accepted this argument, but that's what they argued. Simon Jackman, a expert who does these kinds of cases and in fact showed up in all of the cases that I just described to you, argue that 7% should be considered legally significant. And the reason was that his research showed him if you started out the decade with 7%, you would control all of the seats no matter what happened in terms of the votes for the rest of the decade. So that's how he came up with 7%. So this is what I've just pulled together very, very quickly, but I, I wanted to give you some idea of what might be too high because I didn't do that when I was there before. And I guess you might be struggling with that. And so um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, if I could. 
All right, let me look around the room here. Thank you, Dr. Hanley. Uh, Commissioner Orton. Well, I just really appreciate this information. It does help know what we're looking at when we're trying to figure out where we should be. So I can't remember the exact numbers of our plans that we went over, but they're better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, for, General Counsel. For, for the benefit of, of Dr. Handley, who I know was uh, engaged in other meetings today, uh, first, thank you for your time and the information and the clarifications. Um, but also to, to let Dr. Handley know that none of the, none of the plans that the MICRC has put through um, have come close to those numbers, right. whether they were the Benson, <laughs> Benson numbers that we had in the state or, or the um, outstate numbers that, that uh, provide additional clarity. So that is very good news uh, for the commission indeed. Any additional comments, questions? Uh, Commissioner Eid, I see you. Um, Commissioner Eid, can you also identify where you are uh, dialing in remote from? Yes, hello, I've returned. I am remotely attending from Detroit, Michigan. Go ahead with your question, Mr. Eid. This is kind of a, a legal question or about a more of an interpretation of the law question. And pl please let me know if it's hard to hear me. My mouth is a little uh, numbed up right now. So if it is, let me know. Um, did any of these states where these cases happen have like a rule on the book that says there shouldn't be a, a disproportional advantage uh, like how we do here now in Michigan? Several of them do now, <laughs> but they don't. Ohio did not at the time. I know that for a fact. Wisconsin did not. Uh, they used the state constitution, but they used grounds um, like equal protection. Uh, and I think the lawyers are going to have to expand on that. But um, I don't believe that any of them had anything akin to what you have now. But I think that at least one of them and maybe two of them now do. Go ahead, General Counsel. I think so. So I, I'm. I, first of all, I agree with Dr. Hanley. I don't recall either that. Um, I know. I know Ohio for sure does now as well. Uh, but I don't believe even the disproportionate advantage language. What what the numbers that are being presented demonstrate? It, they're demonstrating what is considered a a partisan gerrymander. And again, we've had Supreme Court cases since that time um, that, uh, again, indicate that the federal courts will, will not entertain these types of cases. But I think that these numbers are still extremely useful benchmarks um, for the commission. And really, the, the disproportionate advantage um, speaks more to, in contrast with the competitive criteria or the proportionality criteria of, of how the balance is, is evaluated. And, and so I think what we're looking at here speaks a little bit differently um, to those. So I'm not sure, even, even if one of these states had the disproportionate advantage that based on the way the cases would, would be brought, we would use the information any differently. Commissioner Rothhorn. Lisa, I'm thinking about the lopsided margins. I don't think we got any sort of numbers for lopsided. That's okay. I just want to make sure that there is no sort of target area in particular for lopsided. We just have for the mean median efficiency gap and the seats votes. That's correct. The, they were, the issue came up indirectly in at least two of the cases, but they didn't actually produce a um, different score. They did look at the difference in the winning margins, but didn't produce an actual score. So it is something that's considered relevant by the courts, but I'm afraid I couldn't give you any measures. And it's a little bit complicated because of the, um, the need if voting is polarized as it is in many places in Michigan to draw um, districts uh, that will provide minorities with an opportunity to elect candidates of choice. Those tend to be heavier democratic districts than um, that might otherwise be the case. 
Thank you. So should we also um, just consider primarily the mean median efficiency and seats votes? Is that also what I'm hearing you say that like, because we have a target area, we should focus on those or can you help us understand if, if we should use a lopsided margin? I know that it, I know why we have it in our mix. I'm just wondering if you can help us sort of understand how we might continue to use it or potentially just have it lesser of the priority, so to speak. So the lopsided margin is half of the efficiency gap, right? So the efficiency gap looks at how many wasted votes there are, that is how many votes in surplus of what it takes to win and how many votes you lose by. So it's essentially half of the efficiency gap and it helps you identify areas where you have um, uh, packed Democrats. Um, uh, and again, you uh, it, to me, it's an easy place to start, but there's always the caveat of the minority opportunity districts. But the reason that um, I suggested we put it in there was number one, the cases did all, at least two of them did refer to them just in a different sort of way. Um, and it's a easy place to start. Thank you, that's helpful. Commissioner, does Commissioner Lang or Commissioner Wagner have any comments? Can you see? Ms. Reinhardt, because I can't see them. I just want to make sure they don't have their hands raised. I'm good, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, are there any additional questions for Dr. Hanley? All right, if not, thank you very much for this presentation, Dr. Hanley. I would very much appreciate it if you could send it to our executive director so that she can circulate it out to everybody so that we have it. Um, I know I, we're all frantically scribbling while you're talking, but it'd be helpful to have a hard copy. Um, all right, thank you very much for taking the time and popping in. I know you, you're very busy today, so we really do appreciate you taking the time to work on this for us. Great. Very good. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> have a good night. All right, so um, at this point, I think we're gonna go back to the mapping that we were doing and we left off with- Okay. Um, we left off with Commissioner Orton, is that correct? And so we were now going to MC. All right. And I, um, I think we were trying to figure out, uh, I think we're gonna go with, uh, look at the maps and we're staying with the VRA compliance mm -hmm. and we are looking in uh, north of Detroit area in the Saginaw area, where, where you've landed us. Thank you, John. So um, Flint area, 27, 26. Let's look at the, black voting age population in those two. So we're, in this, uh, this is the Saginaw. So we want to be at 40 to 45 percent black voting age population. So we are low. Commissioner Orton. I seem to remember when we were working on this, we tried really hard, even down to the block level, to get the percentages as high as possible. That's my memory too. And so what I'm looking for, and with this compliance review at this point, is saying, okay, you've got to scrap it because. It's, it can't be that low, right? Because there is no opportunity to elect or yes, it's possible and somehow we'll figure it, yeah. Well, I would take the latter. I mean, I always take the expansive view that things are possible. And I think one of the things we talked about in, in Flint, having lived in Flint and having had occasion to um, return to Flint many times over the years, this is true not just for Flint, but for other cities, is look at the suburbs, look at the townships outside of the downtown area or the north side of Flint, because there may be a dilutive effect. I don't know that without uh, getting right. into it, but I think that that often happens in communities where the total population is not two, three, 400,000. So it's more in the 100,000, 50 to 100,000 range that it's easier for that population to be diluted potentially okay. by surrounding communities. All right, so John, can you put up the African-American theme, please? Thank you. 
And then I'm going to try to underpopulate at this point because I do, as, as Commissioner Orton suggested, right, we did do a, a pretty good job. So I'm going to take out. So, and what I'm going to try to do is add to 51. I know that's actually overpopulated already, but so 2047 in the bottom right or the south. Oh, sorry, Mr. Morgan. Um, before you do this, did you, I thought you wanted to look at the election results if I heard that. Oh, um, we can. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. I feel like we've, we've done that and, and we've run the initial analysis and I feel like it was, it's okay, but it's, but we have to, right. Cause it's just too low a percentage. Well, that, I, Commissioner Rutherford, I agree. My recollection is that the election results here look, look good, but just as we discussed in the Detroit area, this, the population is below Dr. Hanley's recommendation. So I'm certainly more comfortable in meeting her benchmark, meeting her, her threshold. Okay. What was the threshold again for gen for this area? Is for this, this Genesee? Is this Saginaw? Genesee. Is this Genesee? Genesee County or yeah, Saginaw? Flint is Genesee County. Genesee. Flint is Genesee, then I was wrong. It's 35 to 40%. So 35 we're, to 40. we're not that far off. I thought we were. So yeah. just to give you some numbers to consider. So the population of Flint by itself is 56% African American if you take the whole city. So we definitely have the population there to create at least one VRA district. We just have to rebalance things a little bit. And right now we're 27, we're at um, 26. So do we wanna look at the election results? Uh, Mr. Adelson, my, I, I, what I heard you say was we, we wanna look at the VRA. Well, I would suggest that since it, it seems that that uh, there will be some adjustments here. Why don't we hold off on that for Flint until we see where you go? But my recollection is there weren't election results that were immediately um, problematic. So my suggestion is let's wait and see what the adjustments bring. Okay. So District 26, we're at 34.9% and 27, we're at 36. 0.95. So I'll let's say 26 is, is, excuse me, 27 is good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to underpopulate 26 a little bit. So I'm going to work on 26 and I'm going to look for yeah areas where we can add to 51. And I think I see in that just Southern, the Grand Blank area. So just to clarify, I'm sorry, 26 Please. is good and 27 is high or was 20? 27 is good. So 26 is low. 26 is a little low. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to add to 51. So if you take that, that district there, John, 51, and just put that into 51. Excuse me, may I make an observation? Please. Yes. Okay, I think that as I, as I recall in when we, we looked at this before, I think there may be um, places to look to the north, the north side of Flint or more into the downtown that will give greater population that will have a, a, a clearer ameliorative benefit because many of these suburbs, and I remember John explaining the size of the dots the size of the dots is like, John, could you click on the dot in green? Uh, yeah, please? so, uh, and this dot means it's less than 10%. So this this was a predominantly white uh, voting district. This one is, whoops, just a moment. I was not on the pointer. So if it has no dot, it means it's less than 10%. So for example, this one is, less than 10% African-American. Could you go to the right where it says 1929, just below the words grand blank, and just click on what the percentage is there? 16.5. So that's why my suggestion is go to the north. The right. population concentration is different, and I think that that's where you can find. Let me take this one out, though, because what I'm trying to do is take out the white population from 26. Okay to increase the black voting age population. So let me just try this. All right, so now we're, up, now we're on it. Yeah, that just moving that one uh, brought you up to 35. So I think we're done. Can we just call it good? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, one move. It was He's difficult. Got He's got mad skills. <laughs> I think we're good. So 26 and 27 are within the range, albeit a lower, lower threshold. But Reg, yeah. Could you go up, please? I'm not seeing 26. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the uh, Genesee County range, as, 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 as was discussed, is 35 to 40 percent. I think the Saginaw County range is 40 to 45. So I think that to get to the sweet spot for Flint, so I would recommend again going north and adding some um, black population, particularly in the, these are as historic parts of Flint and that the black community has longstanding mm -hmm. uh, ties to this area. So I would go north a little bit. We don't need that much change, but I think you're going to, it's likelier to get- To reach, to get closer to 40%, is that what you're saying? Yeah, to get closer to 40%. And that's just okay. Genesee County. That's, we're not talking about Saginaw County. Right, right, okay. So then I think what we're gonna have to do is within 26, what I'd like you to do, John, is, is zoom in and then we're gonna start adding, you know, taking, um, adding to 26 from 27, please. So that one precinct right there, 1104 right on the top mm -hmm. is, I think pretty close to 90% African-American. If you can, if you wanna grab there, that would be a great spot to grab. Let's do it. Yeah, 95%, yeah. And the one next to it, 11889, is pretty darn close to that, too. Okay, let's do that, please, John. So now we're pushing down 27, though. That's the trade off. Right. And, and I think what Mr. Adelson is suggesting is that we're going to find more population north. Um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I'm just not sure that that's true, Mr. Adelson. The theme, the theme is not showing that. 20, 20, Saginaw is north of, of yeah, we're, in, sorry, we're, we're in Flint. We're in Genesee right, County, right, Flint. Right. Mm -hmm. So with grabbing that population and also looking at the townships to the east and the west, mm -hmm. where there is the a minority population is not as large. Mm -hmm. The minority population is not as large. We are over 35%. To push 40% is going to be a real challenge with either of those districts. So that's what I mean, Commissioner Orton. Yeah, I think we spent a lot of time on this before. And I think we decided in order to get 40%, we'd have to have one. And then the other one's going to be a lot lower. So we kind of discussed, is it better to have two right just under or one higher and one lower? And I honestly would take off that second one I had you add because then they're both closer to 36. So a little higher. Yes, thank you, John. I'm just going to back it up one. So Mr. Adelson, I think our choice here is to say we, we can't have it this low. And so we'll just have yeah. one district that is 40% or we have two districts that are at the lower th of the threshold. Well, to your point, I think that that may be the explanation slash justification then why don't we look at the election okay let's go there so let's start with the bellwether please okay so district 26 is 72 for biden 28 for trump for clinton it's 73 trump 27 obama 79 romney 21 peters 20 sorry 73 james 27 stabenow 75 james 25 Peters 82, Land 18, 
uh, Stabana is sorry. I, I'm I was going the whole range. Um, 83. Hookstra is 17. Whitmer is 77. Shooty's 23. Shower is 77. Snyder's 23. Nestle's 73. Leonard is 27. Totten is 73. Shooty is 26. Benson 77. Lang 23. Dillard 75. Johnson 25. El Saeed 25. Thenadar 28. Whitmer 46. Thank you. So the. And that was District oh, 26. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then District 27 is um, just for the truncated races is 68 Biden, 32 Trump. It's uh, 78 Obama, 22 Romney, 70 for Peters, 30 for James. For um, U.S. Senate in 2018 is 72 and uh, 28 for James. Whitmer is 74, Shooty 26, Dillard 74, and Johnson 25 or 26. So bellwether elections prove out two to three times the margin. So it's so, worth it's worth the risk to try it in two districts. Is that what I'm hearing? And I would take out the word risk. Let's let's remove the word risk. <laughs> and I would say it's worth it's worth it's a worth good, trying. A, an educated try and shot because the election results prove out, and that is the metric. Okay. In addition to population, so I think that those two, for now, they look okay. Okay, Commissioner Orton. Um, I can't. <laughs> Can you scroll up just a little bit on the active matrix, John, so we can see 27 as well? I think they're both right around the right population. Oh, 27 is a little under, but we could underpopulate 26 and perhaps 27 just slightly more if we want to. I think that's the only way to help. I, I agree. John? Uh, yeah, I thought that's what you were originally doing, and then you stopped doing that because it looked like it was the way you wanted it to be. Yes. Um, so let's. So I think what we can do is underpopulate in the 26. Now we'll stay in the northwest area around Flushing. We'll just take out one one district there and add to 52 because 52 is under. So let's go to the northeast. I said northwest, but that, because 52 is underpopulated, let's go to the um, Geneva. Or no, it's Genesee. That's in Genesee. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right there. Add it to 52, please. Yep. And um, 51 is over already. Yes. Yeah, so we let's add it to 52. So 27 got a bump and 36 is still better. So we can underpopulate 20. I don't know if we can do the same thing with 26. Was there a sort of a natural place to remove from 26? And again, 51 is pretty overpopulated already. 55 is also. 56 has room. Let's try that. Yeah, what's that? What's the, can you see what the, uh, yeah, the, the uh, African American population is at a, that's 21%. Let's try that. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what uh, sorry, John, you looked at, you hovered over 31, 30, 14 also. Uh, yeah, that, that's a little lower, but it's also higher population. Not contiguous. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the 1301, please. Let's try that and add it. We're adding it to, 56, we said, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so 56 is in population deviation. And 26 got a little bump. Did it? I can't tell, John. Sorry. 26 left the major. Oh, there it is. So it's 36.5. Okay. And they're both slightly underpopulated. That may be, yeah, so we're at 37% instead of 35 and 36. Okay, we got some improvement. All right. Um, 
so I think so the voting rights. So we where should we go next, Mr. Adelson? We want to again, I'm trying to be methodical, right? And systematic. So we finished finish the Detroit area. Now we've moved to the Genesee area. Should we go to Saginaw? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So yeah, what do we remember from this one? Richard, other commissioners, does anybody remember how we drew this one? Or Commissioner Orton, do you have a memory? I think we did the same thing. I think we have chosen all the precincts with the highest um, African-American population and we couldn't seem to get it any higher. Right, and so we're at 32%, which is well below the 40%, which was sort of required for a candidate to elect a candidate of choice. Yeah, and we're still, un and we're underpopulated also. Yeah, the, the election results. Let's try the election results and see. I think, yeah, that's probably the best we can do. John, will you pull up that for 30? Sure, please? thank for you. For District 30 on the uh, truncated election results, it's 68 for Biden, 32 for Trump, 71 for Obama, 29 for Romney, Peters, 68, James, 32, Stabenow, 68, James, 32, Whitmer, 70, Shooty, 30, Dillard 66, Johnson 34. So they're electing it double still. Yeah, so it might work, but we, yeah. It, it might. And I think that one thing that may be clarifying when we get this, the voting pattern analysis, because if you notice the, there's a 11% Hispanic uh, VAP here. Right. So if we infer that Hispanics and, and black voters cohere, coalesce, that that might uh, be part of an explanation, but that's just supposition for now. When we get the analysis, that this that may be particularly helpful here. Okay. Commissioner Orton? We're getting very late in the process. When are we going to get the voting pattern analysis and how are we going to get that? General Counsel, do you have a help with that? I, did you see I just perked right up? I, yep. Uh, so it's my understanding um, that the, the voting pattern analysis would uh, be something that you would not have Commissioner Orton before the second round of public hearings, that this is something that, that would be provided, or let me reword that, not in time to be considered for uh, the public published maps for, for the second round of public hearing. It would be something, again, with the additional data that you'll be receiving from the public comment from the hearings, from the portal. There'll be additional um, data from Dr. Hanley, including the voting pattern analysis, voting uh, pattern analysis. Um, Mr. Adelson will have additional information for the commission uh, based on the second round of public hearings. So uh, again, it's the continuum of information and the building of information that the commission will have. And I don't, if you had something to add to that, okay. Is that responsive, Commissioner Orton? Yeah, but I don't really understand. It seems like we, it, it seems like we should have all the information before we get the maps the way we think they should be for the second round of public hearings. So I just don't, I just don't understand. Uh, I, to, to, to that point and, um, One of the things that we're able to do is we're make, able to make some informed inferences based on experience in redistricting and based on general knowledge of voting patterns. The inference here, for example, that Hispanic voters may be may have cohesive voting patterns with black voters, I think is a reasonable one for now. By the time the commission is at the final deliberation stage after the second public hearings and we have additional information, then the additional analysis will be particularly helpful because the final maps are, of course, the final maps. We do have a little leeway here. And I would also mention that in Arizona, for example, we made significant changes between the second round of public hearings and the final maps based on additional analysis and additional public comments, the deviation went up almost four percentage points, but that was in response to comments and additional analysis. So I think that the what we're seeing now with the voting rights analysis is all good. All the election results 
are proving out. There aren't any warning signs. There will be more information later, which will be, as uh, General Counsel Petula indicated, very important before a decision is made on final maps. All right, then I think we're, yeah, we've done the best we can. So we've, I think we've um, successfully completed Detroit, the Genesee County and the Saginaw County now. And um, we're ready to move to the West, Western District. Oh yeah, or Mr. Adelson, was that? Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say exactly right. That's what I would say. Okay. And um, yeah, do we, was it the Grand, Grand Rapids? Okay. Yeah, Grand Rapids and Kentwood. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. So um, Commissioner Vallette, I'm just aware that I'm, my turn I think is nearing an end or is done. Are you ready to take over? Um, if you don't mind, I'd rather you just kept on. You're doing such a good job. Are you okay? All right. I didn't think so, did it? Did, no. Right. I'm not getting off the hook. All right, I will continue <laughs> then. Thank you for the permission. So, um, so Mr. Adelson, 78. Yeah, we're looking at 25 and we are in an area that was not, we did not have VRA um, right analysis from Dr. Hanley. Right, let, Commissioner Roth, let me provide a little context here. Please, this, yes. is, this area is a great example of the population changes reflected in the census. These were areas when we began months ago, when Dr. Hanley, when we first talked to Dr. Hanley, there was really no thought that there might be some VRA implications here because historically the population has not been as high as it seems to be now. So one of the, that's uh, a lot in large part why there was no uh, analysis done here, but we are looking to have additional analysis that focuses on this area. Now, one of the points, if I may make about with district 78, so the, uh, this is a majority minority district as written. It's 59% minority. This is a coalition district. These are, there is no one single minority that makes up a majority. So you have primarily a, a black population and Hispanic population. Now, as, as you know, we don't yet have voting cohesion analysis. So I'm uh, reluctant for purposes of now to make significant changes. But one of the things that I would mention, it's really not related to this district again, but it's, it's similar to other things we've talked about. When you have concentrated population, minority population, and that's combined with areas where the population is different, that may have a dilutive impact. Uh, I'm not suggesting that's happening here because of the, the high minority voting age population and also the lack of analysis to guide us. So what might be instructive here, I don't recall that, that we did this. If we looked at the uh, bellwether election results here, I, I just don't remember if we did that I, before. I'm, let's do it. Yeah, okay. So 78, uh, let's look at the bellwether elections, please. Okay, so 77 for Biden, 23 for Trump, 70 for Obama, 30 for Romney, Peter 73, James 27, 72 for Stabenow, uh, 28 for James, Whitmer is 75, and Shudi is 25, and Dillard is 57, and Johnson is 43. Right, so what's interesting, the election results have varying ranges. They're somewhat different than we've seen in the eastern part of the state. But the bellwether election results do also prove out that uh, the uh, can, uh, candidates who have been identified as candidates of choice prevail. So this district, based on the information we have now, seems to be a newly created um, ability to elect district. I don't recall if whether it's a neighboring district or uh, I would have to be, I guess, a neighboring district. If there's another district in this area with a plurality minority population, I just don't remember that. I, I also don't remember, but I am just recognizing that John is high highlighting a, a, a relatively large um, African-American population in that, yep, that where you were, John. And it looks like 86 can stand to lose some and 84. 
78 could stand to, yeah, so if we could add 78 and just see what that does to our um, non -span the, the black voting age population. Yes, that one there. So it did increase and we're still within range. So yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that that may be a, a good choice for the moment. Um, and uh, back to you, um, Mr. Adelson, what you were suggesting is are there, you were asking whether we knew of any other on the Western edge. And we do know that there is a large Hispanic population on the Western shore, Lake Michigan shore, but we understand it is pretty diverse or excuse me, dispersed. Um, and um, do we just wanna get the Hispanic population? Uh, well, in, in this area here, you're asking, these are the areas right around Grand Rapids. So the districts on the screen are 75, 76, 78 and 79. And then here are the demographics of those. So 75 is 7% African-American, 76 is 6% African-American. Uh, we looked at 78, which is uh, Grand Rapids and Kentwood, and then 79 is 7% African-American. Commissioner Wages. So could you make the argument then that the African-American population is packed into one district around Grand Rapids. Shouldn't it be a more of an even split? I think that given the size of the house districts, that may not, I mean, that may not be possible. It, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say necessarily that they're packed since they do form the core of 78. So whether or not there is, whether it's in um, an adjoining district or not, whether there's a, a possibility of, of having a, a minority influence or opportunity to elect district, that's, it's hard to, to know just from, from, these, uh, from the dots because the, this new district in 78, where we're relying on Hispanic population in part, we just don't have the, the same uh, polarized voting analysis that we did to the east. So we have, it would be very speculative. I don't know if there's enough population in 76 or we're just looking at the, at the numbers. The only district among 75, 76, 79, 79 is the only district that has, as it stands, a sizable minority district. So if there were some, opportunity to create an additional district by taking population, whether it's from um, the Northwestern part of, of 96, the, is, is that area, John, where the cursor is? That's 78, right? Uh, that's, it's 78 and then a little bit as 86. Oh, so 86 is the lighter color. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, that may answer your question, Commissioner, which is that there may be population in on that western edge of 86 that could be joined with 79 is 79 is the only current district that had other than 78 that has a sizable minority population unless I, and i don't think i'm missing anything well let me let me acknowledge right that minority right because we do have a significant I, I shouldn't say significant but there's 18 almost 19 percent hispanic right where john is yep in 78, 79, and 82. We don't see 82 on the screen. Oh, yes, we do. It's that what lighter color under 77. Yeah, okay. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going towards the lake shore. So when you say minority, you're, you're it's the black and Hispanic and Asian, right? When you say min minority, is that right. accurate? Right, okay. and, and I, would, I would think from what you had said before, Commissioner Rothhorn, that the minority population is not either compact enough or sizable enough if you went west to easily create the district. Because remember the, the issue of compactness when you're looking at minority populations is more salient than just compactness in general. That's the whole robot arm argument. But here at below 78, that part of district 86 and the Eastern part of 79, that is a generally compact area of minority population. Okay. All right. 
and this is the area that we're aware of. So this is the western part of the state where we are familiar with maybe a potential VRA district. Um, and again, thinking of our sort of checklist, I think we're we're through uh, with uh, looking at the VRA compliance and looking at the data that we have to establish that we are more in compliant. Is that accurate? From a VRA standpoint, yes. And I would um, leave this thought in as far as what the justification explanation would be. Going forward a little bit from what Commissioner Widget said, if the commission seeing where the minority population is in 79 and in 86, if the commission attempts to create an additional coalition district, or if the commission does not, then either way, there would need to be some type of justification for that. Okay, so seven, so we're gonna put in a, a, make a note here, set between. Well, the, do you mean the election results or the, sure, we could definitely do that. So the, the, yeah, the offer was, let's look at the election results for um, District 79, please. Okay, so it's 51 for Biden, 49 for Trump, 44 for Obama, 56 for Romney. Uh, it's 49 for Peters, 51 for James, Stabenoff 48, 52 for James. It's 50 for Whitmer and 50 for Schutte. And it's uh, 33 for Dillard and 67 for Johnson. Thank you. So clearly the results are mixed. Now, the, that could mean that there's racially polarized voting, which Dr. Handley establishes is true statewide. That could be that there's some dilutive impact. That could be that the minority population isn't large enough. So the all of those factors may be in in play here. Right, and and so I'm what I'm I'm going to offer. What I'm hearing is that it's worth. Oop, do you need us? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, um, so what I'm thinking about, um, Mr. Adelson, is, is to sort of to to try. It sounds like we have. To, it's worth trying. And since we're at that point, yeah. So, um, Commissioner Lett. No, I disagree. Looking at the uh, voting results, if you take 78 has the ability and the uh, record to elect uh, their candidates of choice. If you take them out of there and put them in 79, which clearly is moving towards the, what I would call normal Grand Rapids election results, um, you're going to decrease 78's ability to elect a, a candidate of choice. I think that's a wrong move. And I agree. I, I think that since we don't have um, voting pattern analysis, I agree taking population out of 79 is something I would not recommend. But I do recommend looking at bringing population from, I'm sorry, John, could you put up the demographic dots again, please? And I, and I think Commissioner that it wasn't, it was actually 79 and 86, not touching 78. It was 79, or I guess, yeah, in 86. It was trying to figure out, is there a way to shift it? Not touching 78. Not touching 78. Okay. And then, um, and then it looks like 96 is also the same color <laughs> as 86. So that might be useful to just sort of help us see where the border between 96 and 86 are. are Okay. And it's possible that that's true, but in, in just seeing where the, the, the right. dots are, this is the area of concentration and the minority population is compact seemingly in this area, unlike some other parts of the Western side of the state that we've seen. And of course, as, as we've talked about before, this may not be possible. But I think that it's important not only to try, but that also helps you with your justification explanation. Because if if it doesn't work out, just as we have seen elsewhere, that's a pretty good justification. 
Right. So what I'm going to offer, because it is six o'clock and maybe it's just because we're on Tuesday and it's six o'clock um, that, yeah, we mean, yeah. So what I think, <laughs> what I'm thinking about is um, try, uh, you know, it's, it's worth trying for me anyways, I'll, I'll try to just play with it at home and see if I can come up with something. Cause I think that may be where we, yeah. Commissioner Witches. Um, kind of get where you're trying to go here with all that. Uh, but I, I would want to potentially see the partisan fairness measures on this map before we leave. Today. Yeah, no, you got it. That's what I was going to try to do is say, if we can now agree that there's a place that we have as the VRA, like there's one last little thing to sort of check off before we complete a VRA, let's say compliance analysis. That's so we're going to come back to that tomorrow. But let's move on to partisan. Is it partisan fairness? Is that the next one? Let's see if we can continue with that. Run the report on this. We're in the house map, right? Um, yeah. And one, excuse me, one other point is in keeping the, the, excuse me, the note about the VRA and with partisan fairness, and then also adding to that the population deviation is 9.43. So that's also something to to look at the population deviation is 9.4 across the plan that's on the upper right okay thank you and that's that has to do with uh, oh, I yeah we have is that yeah well we have time tomorrow because i think we're doing pretty well we're on tuesday and we're on the house plans already so we're doing all right but um yeah so i think partisan fairness is next right that's what we're looking at John, can you, I just, John, can you help us run the partisan fairness scores, please? Yeah, and okay, um, so this is 10 5, 21, version one. So that's today's house plan. We carried forward the information from previous house plans with adjustments today. Thank you for that review. Okay, so um, let's, yeah, let's, so thank you. We've got the lopsided margin at, eight, oh, so, um, oh, scroll down, sorry, because we have a number of districts. So we're looking at the lopsided margins. We're looking for the number of, is that what, you, is that what we needed? Okay. Um, so let's move on to the mean median, please. All right, we're still in favor of Republicans, 4.8 efficiency gap. 10.7, we can do better. And seats votes, ratio is 50 to 60. Also leaning Republican, okay. Commissioner Eden. Um, you know, something that I think would certainly help these numbers, um, uh, there is already an overlay of it. And I think it's something we might want to look at. If you, we can look at it today or tomorrow, it doesn't matter. But I'm quite confident um, that it, you know, it would probably help these numbers based on the public comment that we got in Benton Harbor was that Lakeshore District that I originally had added into this collaborative process, but was scrapped at, at some point. Um, and it also wouldn't mess with any of our VRA stuff. It only really messes with the southwest corner of the state. So I just wanted to put it out there. Thank you. Um, is do you can you um, can we work on that? So I, it's six o'clock. Um, can you identify for us the number that you know, tomorrow when we come in? Will you just have that for us so that we can up, upload the overlay? 
Um, yeah, John, John has it. And I, I don't know which collaborative version it was, but it, it was in between like 81 and 87 here. Um, okay. But yeah, we could certainly look at it tomorrow. Okay, thank you. So the last one um, is, do we need to do the compactness? Because that's also a quick and easy one. We we'll just run the compactness score for this house map. Okay, I'm running the compactness score, and then I'll just save it as a uh, PDF. Thank you. Okay, so again, this is 110 districts. So each district will have a score. So out of the 110 districts, um, again, this is the Polsby Popper. So the most compact district is 0.74. The least compact is 0.12, which is district eight. Okay. Thank you. So commissioners at this point, um, I know we're tired. Um, we do have to finish up just, I think one set of minutes and we wanna look at our, um, uh, I think we have some uh, scheduling to look at for next week. Oh, excuse me, for the remainder of this week. Commissioner, uh, sorry, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, um, so I just wanna point out that I think of all the plans that you've looked at, this is the lowest score of any of the three, five or six plans that you've looked at, 0.12. Thank you. Commissioner Witches. It's just me. I mean, I, I feel like <laughs> I don't want to be careful how I word this. The, uh, the compactness scores on the house, I have a feeling, could potentially be lower, not by us doing it purposely, just because of how skinny they are and how we have to reach for, for things. And it's not as big of a landmass. So I think we should keep that in the back of our, our minds and try not to chase a, uh, a poltergeist that we probably not be able to uh, fix. So my my thought. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Witches. Commissioner E, you had your hand, but you brought it down. Are you okay? Can we, can we... I, was just, I was just gonna say the same thing. I think that's because okay. of what we have for VRA reasons in Metro Detroit. Excellent. Thanks y'all. So we have um, some a little bit of work to do on this house map when we get back tomorrow, but for the moment, let's um, wrap up our unfinished business, which is mapping and move on to um, uh, approval of minutes, which I believe is um, num item number seven on our agenda. So without objection, we will proceed to the approval of minutes from September 22nd. Are there any proposed edits to the draft minutes that have been provided? Seeing none, um, May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the commission meeting held in East Lansing, Michigan on September 22nd? So moved. Commissioner okay. Witches, thank you. Commissioner Eid is the second. All in favor of any, any debate? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the commission minutes for September 22nd, 2021, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by raising your hand and saying nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. Um, there are no staff reports at this time. Without objection, I will ask Sarah Reinhardt from the Michigan Department of State if she has a report. Hearing no objection, please proceed, Ms. Reinhardt. Hi, I do have a report, actually. Please proceed. Okay, hi, everyone. Okay, so um, I thought it might be helpful um, for me to share my screen really briefly and just go over um, one more time the deliberation process. So um, this is part of the mapping process that is posted on our website. Um, so step one, research and review. Um, step two, additional um, 
Oops, sorry, we're, in, we're here. <laughs> okay, so step one is mapping adjustments. And it might not surprise you all that that's exactly where you are all at right now. Um, going through and adjusting your maps to make sure that they're in compliance based on feedback from your consultants. Um, so the next step in the process, once you all are done adjusting your maps, um, is to determine the number of collaborative draft proposed maps that you wanna take through to the hearings. Um, so as we've experienced, you have a couple different ones. You can take them all, you can limit it. It's totally up to you guys. Um, and then step three is that piece that I was alluding to earlier today, which is where all of the drafts are presented. So your chair and vice chair will present the collaborative maps um, and any commissioner who has an individual map that they would like to submit for public hearings can present it at that time. Um, and then if you all did decide to limit the number of collaborative maps, we would proceed to voting for which maps would make it through to the public hearings. Um, but you don't have to vote if you just decide to put them all through to the public hearings, which is also acceptable. Um, so one more thing that I really wanted to share is this document that um, your staff um, and I have collaborated on briefly, um, which is compliance analysis tracking. And I believe this all was previously shared with you. Um, so if you are a commissioner who is working on your own independent map, your alternate draft that you would like to submit for public hearings, um, you will need this document. Um, your maps, as you all know, you voted on, are due to be submitted prior to Monday's meeting. So you can send it in Monday morning, you can send it in Sunday night, you can send it in now if you wanted. Um, but we did ask your, your general counsel in an email sent to you, ask that you complete this form for your alternate draft. Um, and that does mean that you'll have to reach out to your consultants to get scores on various things um, prior to submitting it Monday morning. So you can see here, uh, you can fill in your information on your partisan fairness scores, compactness scores, um, different considerations. And then down here, there is a table for filling in information on each district. Um, don't worry if you don't want to fill in every single thing on this table. You can just print off the attachments that run the scores and send it in as like an attachment in the email. Um, but if you do want to fill in the table, that's fine too. Some people like Excel. So um, that's it. Uh, if you haven't um, already started working on ind your independent draft, if you do plan on submitting one, um, I would encourage you to start on that and reach out to consultants as soon as possible to make sure that um, you want to make or that you're able to make all the changes that you want to make um, to have the most awesome draft that you can prior to submitting it Monday morning. Um, so that's all I have. Any questions on that? I think Commissioner Witches. Um, okay. When the maps that we're taking on the road with us for a second round of public hearings, mm -hmm. are they going to be professionally printed or is this going to be displayed on a wall somewhere on a, the projector? Because that could potentially limit how many we want to bring. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's one that I would defer to your staff on. Um, I know that uh, your staff are currently considering what options are available. Um, so I'll defer to your executive director, Sue Hammersmith, on that. Ms. Reinhardt, I think we have two more questions. I think Commissioner Lang and then Commissioner Ede. Commissioner Lang, please proceed. I just wanna know with what our schedule currently is for doing our collaborative maps, I, I know a lot of people planned on working on these this weekend when we actually had time to do so. Um, how are we supposed to get these this sheet done by our consultants if our maps aren't done till the weekend? Um, so I would encourage commissioners to uh, reach out to your consultants um, to try to coordinate scheduling for that. Um, and again, if, if you have all the information on this sheet and other documents and it's easier for you to just attach that to an email and send it along, you don't need to fill out every individual table as long as the information's there for your presentations. And I see that your general counsel had her speaker light on too. General counsel, did you have a response for Commissioner Lang? I did. Um, thank you for the question, Commissioner Lang. Uh, I can I can only speak for your legal team that we work through the whole weekend. Uh, I, I wouldn't be 
presumptive and speak for, for the Matt drawing team. I don't know if <laughs> executive director Hammersmith is, is laughing and nodding her head. Yes. As, as well as, as the mappers that are here. So, so the, your, your entire team works through the whole weekend and are available to the commissioners, uh, commissioner Lang. But if there's not time to get this completed, you're telling me that this is now a requirement in order to have the public look at our maps. I guess that's pretty much my question because now I'm being told by staff that this is a requirement. Obviously, we would try and get them as close to compliance as possible, but. General Counsel. Thank you so much. No, Commissioner Lang, it's 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 not a requirement from staff. What the tracking sheet does is it tracks the constitutional criteria. If um, Ms. Reinhardt could scroll down a little bit, the only question on the form that is not related to the constitutional criteria is consideration number three, was this draft proposed map formally considered for publication? Uh, if yes, vote the vote date and results. So what this form does is, is help the commissioners as well as the full commission have an at a glance view at the at the data that would speak to the com constitutional criteria. And as Ms. Reinhardt stated, much of this can be generated and, and saved as a PDF from the EDS software. So think think of it as as a tool to assist you in in your drawing work and in your drawing whether you need to make adjustments like we've seen throughout the day today, where it's good and the commission through its work made it better uh that that is that is how it would be how it would be presented and again staff is staff is available to assist the consultants are available to assist whatever uh the commissioners need individually or as a full body commissioner Richards, do you have a response to commissioner lang yeah i was going to say just just if this helps you um commissioner lang all, all the numbers that the form is asking for are able to be printed with like two or three mouse clicks from within the actual software itself. Um, that doesn't really need to, I don't think we need to really email our vendors or staff to get the information um, as long as we know how to potentially do it. Cause I mean, you can run the, you can run the reports for compactness with the, like two or three mouse clicks. You can run the reports for, partisan fairness with two or three mouse clicks and a slew of other reports if you want to potentially go that far and see what the software can do but right. everything that i see on this particular screen for this particular form um those reports we can get ourselves out of the software when we're working and and commissioner lang just to reiterate what your general counsel said um i wouldn't i wouldn't consider this necessarily a requirement for you to submit your own individual plan but more like a helpful tool or resource guide um, for for commissioners who are creating their own plan um, to make sure that uh, you've considered all of the compliance and criteria, um, but also for those who will be viewing the plan um, during presentations to just have it in a consistent way um, from plan to plan, but um, certainly not, not a um, written in stone requirement, but more just a useful guideline tool. Commissioner Lang, okay. Um, Commissioner Eid. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to staff and Ms. Reinhardt for putting this together. I think it has, is actually quite helpful as a tool to keep us organized. I think we should probably use it uh, for the collaborative maps too, when we you know, put those to publication for the public hearing, kind of to make it easy to you know, look at them side by side. Uh, but I think this is really helpful. Thank you. You are a mind reader, Commissioner Eid. Um, these are actually uh, planned to be used for collaborative maps as well. Um, so that way, uh, members of the public and, and members of the commission are able to, at a glance, um, see uh, the various scores um, and criteria from map to map in a consistent and organized way. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Um, any, anything else on, and Commissioner Eid, your hand is still raised. Do you have something else? Okay, so thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Anything else? Nope, that is it. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I do have uh, no reports from the um, our staff, but I did want to recognize that we did have a second page on our agenda that did have some significant parts to our um, for future commission meetings. So maybe it's just sort of a 
heads up, maybe it's not something that we need to highlight with the staff, or do you want to address that, Commissioner, excuse me, uh, Director Hammersmith? I'm only a director, yes. Yes, Director Hammersmith. <laughs> Um, this is actually the second page for tomorrow's um, agenda that has all the future dates on it. So I just want everyone to be aware that we'll be at MSU Union Hall the rest of this week and Monday and Tuesday next week. And then after the public hearings, we also have this facility booked. And the reason we're booked here is because we can stay later if we need to stay later. Um, the only day we cannot have here is election day, that's November 2nd, and we will be at the graduate and one of their conference rooms that day. So that will work out well for us. And then um, we will start the first deliberation day at 1 p.m. because we're coming from Flint. So there'll be some travel time in the morning there for everybody um, to come this way. Um, we're also proposing um, bi-weekly meetings during the 45 days of public comment. We felt there may be some commission business that we would want to attend to. Um, we can gather and talk also about the types of comments we're getting, look at those. Um, but mostly I think it's just to stay in contact with each other and to plan and be ready for the final vote that will take place on December 30th or should the timeline become earlier along the way, a few days, it could happen a, a couple of days earlier too. Excellent, thank you, Director Hammersmith. Any questions? Yes, Commissioner Clark. So, so I, as I look at the schedule next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are not meeting? At the present time, we do not plan to meet. That is the time that will be needed for CSS and yep. EDS to get everything ready okay. and published to be public prior to the public hearings. Thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Oh, Commissioner Eden. And then just moving a little up. Uh, after the public hearings, so starting on the 20, would it be the 25th to November 5th, where we would deliberate on, you know, the maps on the, and, and the comments the that we get at the uh, public hearings? On the schedule, Commissioner Eat, it says Wednesday, October 27th through Friday, October 29th um, is the beginning of deliberations and then uh, into the following Monday through Friday, November 1st through the 5th. Does that help? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. That's perfect. Okay. All right, then um, a correspondence. Um, we have we re have received correspondence in advance of our meeting today, and it was provided along with written public comments to the commission in our meeting materials. It is my understanding that there are no future agenda items to share at this time. Are there any announcements? As the items on the agenda are completed and the commission has no further business, a motion to adjourn is in order. May so I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a first. I have a second from Commissioner Weiss, first from Commissioner Riches. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye, please. Aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. Bye. The ayes prevail. The meeting is adjourned. Nice work, y'all.